Hi, welcome back guys. This is your sensei, back with another fanfiction. This is the first part of, What if Berserker Naruto got Harim? Now before starting, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. Now let's get into the fanfic. It was a good life. I have no regrets, none worth mentioning at any rate. I had a good time, won the war, saved my friend, got married, became Hawkage, started a family, raised plenty of kids. I outlived them all in the end, but still, I died happy. I got to see my grandchildren grow up and have kids of their own. That's the vaunted Yuzumaki vitality for you. If you don't die in battle, you're going to get older. Nope, it wasn't a bad life. Not by any stretch of the imagination. Because of that I was able to see the world grow into a peaceful utopia. No more madmen. No risk of war breaking out. I can rest easy now. Maybe I should just do that. Leave it to the younger generations. There's a few young upstarts in that lot of course so they're always air but I have faith that cooler heads will prevail. Yeah, I've done enough. Everyone's waiting for me. Still is it wrong that I don't want to rest? These old bones of mine don't want to lay down just yet. I may be the only left of my generation but going out like this just feels wrong somehow. Ha why the long face it's not like me to just die quietly. You know I may be old but I'm not that old. I don't want to die in my sleep like the others. No, I want to go out with a bang. With laughter in my ears and a smile on my face. One last hurrah. What? Another adventure. I wouldn't mind that at all. Not like I got anything better to do. At last. Jean Rum watched the circle before her burned scarlet and felt her heart burn with pride. At last. Success. Her preparations had been excruciating, her timing painstakingly precise. She'd acted at the exact moment the winds were at their highest, when her magic stood at its peak. All her calculations were precise. She didn't care which class she summoned if she managed to avoid the unpredictable berserker stigma so long as she whose talents complemented hers, that was all that mattered. A servant with a wind affinity would be perfect, given the nature of her abilities. Yes, that would suit her expectations indeed. Arise she finished her lengthy incantation with a triumphant shout, guardian of the heavenly scales. Sparked by her command, the wind picked up, blasting her hair backward. Such phenomena was within Jean's expected calculations, of course. A moment of silence passed as she waited with bated breath. Then came the explosion. A pillar of golden crimson radiance erupted from the circle all at once, throwing Jean on her rear and dashing her glasses from her face. What in the world? If the mere summoning of her servant could create a storm of this magnitude, then she'd truly chosen very well indeed. Most would have balked as the skies darkened overhead others would cringed as the mighty gale spawned a towering tornado that sundered nearby trees and plunged the clearing into darkness. Jean did not fear the shadows, nor the storm. She had seen far worse in her career as a magi. The darkness in humanity's heart put any form of nature to shame. Still, there was a certain savage beauty to be seen in the storm. A distant, detached part of her wondered if it would consume her. Even now she felt her feet dragging, threatening to lift her into the air at any moment. And then, as abruptly as the storm had come, so too did it fade. Stealing her very soul, Jean awaited a response. Bleary eyes trained into the thick smoke. Slowly, something stirred within. These next few moments were crucial for Jean not only would they determine the nature of her relationship with her servant, but they may well affect her chances of success in the battles to come. This holy grail war would be most unlike the others after all perhaps the first and last of its kind if Igmillennia had their way. Trifas was a large place indeed and she'd have to work with others magi at that. Although the idea of mutual cooperation toward a goal rankled Jean somewhat, she knew that it must be put aside until the black faction was dealt with. Then, perhaps, there would be time for her wish. Doubtless they would all turn on one another in time once the goal was within their grasp. Still, the association had its expectations of her and she aimed to fulfill them. She was being paid handsomely for this endeavor after all. No doubt her efforts would prove fruitful. For now, it was critical that she'd summoned a strong contender for the war to come. For now, she would hold her tongue, await a response, and try not to look like an utter idiot in the face of her new companion. Yes, companion. Anyone who viewed such a fantastical being as a familiar was a fool in her eyes. Ahoy. Uh -huh. Movement. A blurred figure in bright colors stepped out of the haze and shifted into her field of vision. Well, now a loud, boyish voice exclaimed. What do we have here? Jean's face flushed with a thousand shades of shame. If only she had her glasses to see them. Perhaps her servant could. Here, the newcomer rumbled abruptly. I'm guessing these are yours. Thus, it came as something of a surprise when her lost spectacles were inexplicably returned to her. As she looked, still squinting against the dust and grit in her eyes, the figure extended an arm and pressed her lost frames onto her face. Rough, calloused fingers brushed her face. Jean's mind blanked to white. She no longer had it in her to move in that moment. With infinite gentleness her servant adjusted her glasses in swift yet deft movements and then, apparently satisfied with their work, stepped back with a satisfied grunt. Almost immediately, their own visage swam into crystal clear clarity. There, he bobbed his head. That should do, master. Iwa. The sound reactivated Jean's frazzled psyche and she hastened to correct the battered rims as best she could. Frantic, the magus scrambled back to her feet. Dirtied hands palmed her dress with needless haste, desperate to focus on anything. Anything, anything but that surreal experience she'd just endured. She almost couldn't bear to look at the being who was clearly her servant. 
How, how could he? She'd never been touched like that before ever by anyone. It might seem strange for an accomplished magus and killer to be flustered so, but therein lay the truth. Jean Rum was embarrassed, right and proper. More so when she finally mustered up the resolve to look at him. With a jaw-popping yawn, her servant stretched his arms to the heavens. Ah, oh, much better feels good to be young again. Bright blue eyes the color of endless skies gazed back at her, framed by whiskered cheeks, wild saffron hair and a smile like sunshine. A cloak the color of dark honey hung over their shoulders, sheltering the dark crimson and black vestments worn beneath it. Upon his back lay a giant scroll of unknown origin, secured by a single strap to his shoulders. Jean felt her hopes plummet at the sight of him. Her first thought was that she'd made a mistake and summoned assassin rather than one of the top-tier classes. Oh, this was just the worst she silently prayed she was wrong. If it's about your wish, don't worry I've got the gist of it THNGS to the throne. He hummed, folding both arms behind his head before she could speak up. I don't really have a wish of my own. I'm just in this for fun. That didn't reassure Jean. Not at all. Not. One. Bit. And your she managed through clenched teeth. Hey oh, you mean me. Right, right. Sorry, this is still kinda new to me. He grinned, knuckling his forehead like a churlish child. Let's see what were the words aha there they are. Ahem, uh -huh. laughing, he coughed into a fist to clear his voice. I'm Uzumaki Naruto class, berserker. At your service. I ask of you, are you my master? Damn. His simple remark innocent smelly as well as those words knife straight through Jean's heart. That look, that smile, that expression of absolute trust it was more deadly than a poison knife. Too good too pure but he was a berserker this was the worst possible matchup for her just how young was he he barely looked to be out of his teens was he even she wanted to laugh. She wanted to cry. She wanted to shake him and all but demand her catalyst back. Of course, she could do none of these, so she was left with only one option. In the end, slumped. Urk. She managed eloquently. Really, it was all she could think to do. Did you not hear me? Master Naruto blinked, confused. I said my name is. No, no. She groaned. I heard you. It's just you don't look like one. Naruto's right eye twitched at her offhand remark, ever so slightly. Ha, ah, what's the you mean I don't look like a berserker? No, Jean exploded. You don't not a bit, not at all. Well, excuse me, princess. Adelana felt her ears twitch. From her perch in the trees, she sensed Berserker's approach long before she saw him heard him crashing through the undergrowth toward her position. One had but to listen. It had to be Berserker, or Saber at the very least. No other class exuded that kind of raw power. No one else could light up the night merely by being summoned to this plane of existence. With her superior senses, she didn't need to search for them. She intrinsically knew that they, whomever they were, would come for her. She wasn't making any effort to hide after all. Part of her was silently grateful. She could have easily been summoned as Berserker herself thanks to her phantasm Agrius metamorphosis bore of divine punishment, yet she'd lucked out and manifested as Archer instead. Perhaps it was just her own wayward curiosity, but she wanted to see who had been inflicted with such a cruel fate. Trifa certainly didn't lack for vantage points in that regard. The trees provided perfect cover, allowing her to see. A bolt of gold shot past, shattering her reverie. Found you a triumphant voice cried from just behind her flank. I thought I sent someone lurking about out here. Years of honed instinct had her knocking an arrow in the voice's direction on couldn't be sure if this was a servant of black after all but in the end, she needn't have bothered. A young man with wild blue eyes and a mop of messy golden hair lay crouched on the branch beside her a red cloak thrown over his orangey and black vestments. A scroll of massive proportions hung over his shoulders. As she looked on in quiet disbelief, he struck up a pose, rolled his head in a full circle, and thrust one hand forward. Had she been familiar with the hijinks of a certain perverted sage, she would have recognized the absurd stance and skewered him full of arrows. Thankfully, she did not. Berserker of Red, Yuzumaki Naruto, at your service the young man declared boisterously, grinning at her. Judging by your bow, I'm guessing you're Archer no, you're definitely Archer, right. What was this strange eagerness of his? It was like talking to a puppy. Straightening from her crouch, Archer frowned. You would abandon your master so easily, Berserker. Rest assured, my adorable little Magus is sound asleep, so I decided to step out and investigate. His smile didn't lessen in the slightest, if anything it seemed to burn even brighter at her pointed remark. Trust me, she's perfectly safe. So now that I've shown you mine, how about you show me yours, eh? It wasn't as if the oaf was being terribly subtle about it. In the end, she replied, Archer of Red, Atalanta. Nice to meet you, Naruto beamed. She didn't expect him to leap over to her, much less to extend a hand to her in friendship. Why take me at my word so easily warily, she eyed the offered limb. I could be lying. It's not like me to be so suspicious of people. Pearly white teeth flashed in a roguish grin, exposing sharpened canine teeth. There's really only one person I'm suspicious of, and you're nothing like him. So if you claim to be Archer of Red, then you must be Archer of Red. And if by some chance you're actually lying to me, I'll kill you. Problem solved. For a fleeting moment, the peerless huntress saw a beast stir in those blue eyes. Or were they red she blinked in like an errant shadow fleeing before the dawn, that brief glimmer of darkness vanished. Despite that faint glimpse of madness she'd experienced, Atalanta felt no fear. There could be little room for confusion in such a way of being. Indeed, part of her respected his line of thinking. What a simple way to live. What's your wish? Again, that sudden line of questioning. 
I wish the huntress turned her head to regard the unlikely berserker. Don't you have one of your own? Nope, not at all the blonde grinned. I'm just happy to have a second chance at life after losing mine. You could even say that simply behind here is my wish. And yours. This time, the follower of Artemis didn't hesitate. I wish for the salvation of all children. Seeing his baffled expression, she sighed and banished her bow, forsaking combat in her haste to explain her dream. That is to say, for them to be loved. That they might never know the pans of loneliness. For them to never to hungry. To be loved and cherished. If the Grail can grant this, then I would have no regrets. Naruto actually blinked at that. Save them all, huh? Yes, the intensity of her response and expression nearly floored him. What's wrong with that? Sighing, the berserker scratched at his metal headband with finger. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, buff. A sad smile adorned those whiskered cheeks. It'll be difficult, you know. Even so, I must. Hmm. There hadn't been so much as a glimmer of hesitation in her response indeed. How could there be for her to state something so unreasonable might sound childish to most. But for one such as Atalanta, there could be no greater calling. If the Grail had the power to grant such a wish, then how could it not it was a pure wish, distorted perhaps, but pure in its intentions nevertheless. She had no desire for fame, wealth, power, or even a second chance at life like him. Her sole desire was to save others, even if it meant being mocked, ridiculed, disdained, abhorred. They weren't so different, she and him. For a boy who'd experienced the hell that was loneliness, he knew better than most. He couldn't save everyone even if they were children one was always suffering, somewhere in this world. Yet here Atalanta was, trying to overturn that very reality with her own hands. Did that make her an idealist or a fool? Was such a wish possible he supposed it might well be? From what he knew of the Holy Grail, it could indeed grant such a wish. Perhaps this was something to fight for. A better goal, a destination, rather than living for the sake of living, or fighting for entertainment. Even if it wasn't something that could be achieved by one or two people, surely an all-powerful wish-granting device could. Regardless, her words lit a fire in him. Atalanta, Archer nearly fell off the bow and tumbled to the forest below, such was the vehemence with which Berserker had spoken. Before she could snap at him in recompense for his temerity, the blonde clamped both hands on her shoulders and drew her into a firm embrace. Squirming in discomforted embarrassment, the huntress could only flail mutely, to no avail. His grip was iron, and she hadn't the strength to break free, let alone escape a firm hold like his. Still, what manner of madness was this why was he shouting and hugging her out of the blue had he lost his mind? Am um, I think I like you. Pulling away, Naruto gave her a gentle shake and laughed. Yash, I've decided that dream of yours I'm going to help you achieve it. Atalanta sputtered in surprise. W, what what nonsense is this just who are you to say such a thing? Who, me the doppelganger grinned. I'm just a clone. Verdant green eyes narrowed. A clone. Oops, shouldn't have said that bye-bye. With a grin, Berserker went up in a plume of smoke, leaving poor Atalanta to ponder what on earth just happened. All right, I give up. What the hell are you taking me to church for, master? It was the first thing he'd said to her all afternoon. Jean staunchly ignored the voice in her head and kept walking resuming her brisk pace toward the building in question. Even in astral form, he continued to rile her. Not with words, but silence. She refused to give him the satisfaction of seeing her eye twitch. The bastard was just trying to get a rise out of her after last night. Yes, that was it. He wouldn't succeed. Jean Rung could be called many things as a magus she was a killer, a bibliomaniac, and secretly a hopeless romantic at heart, but she had her pride. In the war to come, the latter seemed a small, petty thing indeed. Yet Berserker had wounded it all the same. Perhaps it was petty of her to withhold the reason for their presence here but after their little spat, she was feeling a tad bit cross with her servant. Well excuse me, princess. Where did he get off calling her that how dare he? You'll just have to wait and see, Berserker. You're not still mad are you? She turned up her nose. Is that a yes? Oh, for the love off what did I do wrong? A swirl of wild golden dust swam around Jean's shoulders and rapidly assumed the shape of her servant even as he finished speaking. Naruto's manifestation proved so abrupt that she wasn't able to stop in time when he abruptly barred her path she tripped over her own two feet and slammed headlong in his. A dark-sleeved arm shot out and steadied her by the waist, cradling her closer. Far closer than necessary. Aha, there it was. That smile again. An infuriating gleam of white that brooked no trespass and she found her resolve faltering at the sight of it. Will you stop? Batting his hand aside, Jean wriggled out of his grasp and stormed past him. All right, princess, mind telling me what I did to upset you. Stop calling me princess. Hey, but it kinda suits you, you know the young man drawled, trailing after her. Besides, I'm Boo Ward, when are we gonna see some action? If you're that restless, use your noble phantasm and scout out the city. She retorted waspishly, pausing to face her churlish servant fully. I don't need you for this. In truth, she didn't. She only needed to register the two of them as participants in the ward and potentially cooperate with the other masters of the Red Faction. Naruto's presence wasn't needed. He was better suited to combat in that regard. Spirits, she hoped he'd finally give in and listen to her. Instead he grinned and trotted after her with an impish laugh. How do you know I'm not using it no oomph? He grunted as her elbow slammed his gut. Because you're still solid. Laughter greeted her. Geez I felt that. One of his supposed noble phantasms involved the use of duplication, or so he claimed. A technique like that could be used to devastating effect if utilized properly. 
assuming she could ever get him to do so without use of a command spell. Why did she feel as though he was the master and she, the servant Ugg, she wasn't getting anywhere like this? Indeed, it felt as though she were the one losing ground here. Perhaps she ought to give him an order tell him to shut his mouth for the duration of the warno. If things continued at this rate, she risked damaging her relationship with Berserker. To use them on frivolous things would be the height of fallacy. If he turned on her and she didn't have anything to hold him back, the thought sent a small shudder through her. Perhaps reconciliation was best after all. Perhaps that was childish of me. She saw it, shaking her head. You're forgiven. Just be on your best behavior in there. The last thing we want to do is make foes of the church. I have enough enemies already. No tricks from you. No pranks. Nothing. Understand. Naruto blinked. Why the long face he beamed. I'm always on my best behavior, master. Cheeky little. You are aware that I still have three command spells I can use. She held up her marked hand for emphasis. Don't push your luck. Before her eyes, the whiskered warrior's face lost all color. Hey, he took half a step back. Master Masterson Jean wait, you wouldn't really use those on me, would you for such a petty reason? A muscle jumped in Jean's jaw. Berserker, by the power of my command seal, I hereby order you to. Fine. Fine her servant flung up his arms in exasperation as they cleared the path to the church. Kill all the fun. Put the fun in camps why don't you I won't do anything geez. Why did she feel like she'd just kicked an innocent puppy? Although I make no promises for later events. Never mind. She wanted to strangle him. With a groan, the magus pinched the brow of her nose in a vain attempt to stave off an impending migraine. In the same vein she understood Naruto wasn't acting this way towards her out of spite if anything her servant was simply being lively. He didn't seem to understand why she was so angry with him in the first place, let alone hauling him off to church first thing in the morning. It wasn't even the inquiries that had annoyed her in the first place rather, her lot in life. Such misfortune she still couldn't believe she'd summon such an unlikely berserker as her ally in this war. A different one mind yeah with his sanity apparently well in hand and several noble phantasms besides but a berserker still. One with seemingly no end of prana and a mouth to match. After witnessing the sheer, overwhelming presence accompanying his summoning, well, she didn't want to see what set off his madness enhancement. And now she was bringing him into an enclosed space. Oh, this could only end poorly. Oi, master. Hmm, what? A finger thrust past her towards the church. We've got company, you know. Jean followed his gaze. In froze. Now, she was a monster specialized in combat. Someone who removed the opposition without mercy. Yet in the shadow of this individual, this mon an icy shard of fear raced down her spine. A rough and fearsome looking man awaited them near the entrance to the church, and the sight of him momentarily brought Jean up short. His mere presence carried with it a thick stench of and gunpowder emanating from his entire body. Dark sunglasses concealed his eyes. Not so his wild brown hair. It spilled behind him in an unruly mane that he made no attempt to tame. He didn't flinch away from their approach. If anything, the sight of them seemed to intrigue him, and he turned openly to face them. Even if he hadn't, Jean would have recognized the distinctive scar on his visage. This face belonged to one of the few magi she genuinely respected, if not pitied for the strange hand fate had thrown him. One she'd worked with before at that. His was a face you didn't forget. Tyree Sisigu. Yo. The gruff man raised a hand, a small smile plucking at his weathered features. Long time no see, Jean. I heard you were part of the Red Faction too, but... Then his gaze settled upon Naruto. So this is your servant. Jean expected a scene. As such, she found herself almost pleasantly surprised when her normally recalcitrant servant nudged past her. Blue eyes traveled up and down, sizing the formidable necromancer up from head to toe. Whatever he found there must have pleased him because he barked out a laugh. Nice Tom Each of the blonde beamed expressively, extending a hand. The name's Naruto. Why the hell did he just use his true name? Jean's head whipped around with such force that she nearly smacked herself in the face with her own ponytail. Berserker. What the blonde pouted. We're on the same side, aren't we sides? He smells trustworthy. Berserker. Huh. Sisigu actually blinked at that. After a moment's consideration, he accepted Naruto's hand and shook it. Hmm. This is honestly the first time I've had someone call me something like that. Ha a new voice intruded. What do you mean? Master he doesn't look like a berserker to me. A swirl of agitated prana heralded his servant's arrival and releasing Sisigu, Naruto turned to face the newcomer. Ho. Oh, unlike berserker this one stood clad entirely in gleaming silver armor with crimson accents. From head to toe, not a single piece of skin could be seen by the naked eye. A fearsome helmet concealed their face that horned facade regarding them with frightening dispassion. This was Saber, then. It had to be, Jean reasoned. No other class save that could be so magnificently adorned or exude such majesty. Perhaps had she been able to see into her servant's mind, she would have seen the gears turning. Naruto, for one, immediately found himself fascinated by the armored warrior. That blank, featureless helm regarded them with a hint of annoyance. So much so that he momentarily forsook his place by his master's side and approached his fellow warrior. Are you sure you're not assassin? They repeated, deadpanning. You're scrawny looking. Weak. In the corner of Jean's peripherals, Berserker stiffened imperceptibly at the slight. Oi, no. Sisigu sighed. Saber, don't go picking unnecessary fights. Alas, his admonishment proved itself too little too late. But, master. Hukikuku, Naruto laughed suddenly, drawing all eyes to him. 
Indeed, he cackled like an old man, concealing his mouth with a curled hand. Saber, was it that's funny, coming from one such as you? Oh, no. Jean knew that look. That look meant nothing good. Hey, the warrior tilted their head. What's so funny? You say I'm assassin, yet you're the one hiding her face. Naruto retorted, still chuckling. I just find it funny. Are you that afraid of me, Saberchan? Now it was Jean's turn to tilt her head. Chin. Sisigu swore. Shit. Saber twitched, just so. Boy, wanna say that again, bastard. Oh, dear. Berserker replied with an impish grin, thumbing at his nose. Did you not hear me, Sabercha? On he let his syllables drag over the last word. I may be an old man at heart, but my senses are still sharp. To drive the point home, he sniffed once for emphasis. Whomever you are under that helmet of yours, you're definitely a girl. I don't know why you're trying to hide it, really. I've known plenty of strong women in my day and none of them concealed their identities. And yet you've made every effort to hide yours. Which means you have something you don't want anyone to see, yes, something to be ashamed of. Crunch. A muffled grunt heralded Naruto's abrupt departure from Jean's side in the same instant a distant building imploded upon itself. Throughout his little tirade the saber of red had continued to twitch with increasing frequency. Within moments, she'd been outright quivering with rage. No one had seen her move until just now. Quiet suddenly, she'd snapped. That does it. Before Jean's very eyes, Saber's menacing helmet inexplicably folded inward upon itself to reveal her concealed face. Aqua green eyes burned with fury, framed by flaxen hair bound back behind her head, and a full mouth set in a dangerous snarl. Jean had but a moment to behold the young woman's savage beauty before the known masked warrior loosed a bestial snarl, gathered both legs beneath her, and leaped. The subsequent wave of pressure shattered the street and launched Saber forward at near explosive speeds, though admittedly far slower than her last punch had proven. As both masters looked on in silent exasperation, a distant cloud of smoke heralded her own landing near where she'd launched him. Damn, Sisigu muttered. Should have warned him about that. Jean sweat dropped slightly. Warned him about what? Saber isn't very fond of being called a girl. A distant explosion echoed his words. Aren't you going to stop her? Eh? The necromancer shrugged. It'd be a waste of a command seal. She'll calm down soon enough. If your berserker is half the servant I think he is, he'll be fine. For a fleeting sliver of a second, Jean wondered if Saber had actually managed to kill Berserker with that attack. Indeed, she shivered at the thought. Anyone who wielded such power couldn't be called human. Not by any stretch of the imagination. Such was the unknowable existence that was as a servant. A faint crackle of thunder followed by a distant streak of scarlet and gold told otherwise as she looked on, a bolt of light arced across the sky like a thunderbolt thrown by Zeus himself, wild and arcing in its path. Was this a noble phantasm, or... With a faint fur of golden light, Berserker reappeared, his coat slightly singed, but otherwise relatively unharmed. A black eye and a red stain on his shoulder revealed where he'd been struck by Saber, yet even as she looked on, those wounds healed as though time it's left were being undone. Oi, ma, I asked her I'd step back, if I were you he cackled. I'm pretty sure she's right behind Moops. Damn trickster hold still. Scarce had he spoken then Saber crashed down behind him, brandishing her wide blade like a lance. Hey, that last attack tickled Naruto grinned, idly dusting his coat down. Wanna try again? He immediately ducked as she lobbed her blade at his head. Oi say that shit again Mordred snarled. I dare ya. Again. Berserker mimicked darkly. I dare ya. Snarling, the two blondes butted heads. You wanna go for real, whiskers? Bring it on, ponytail. Fine by me. Great. Huh. Naruto was already in motion by the time she struck out again. Careful you'll poke an eye out. Rather than twist out of the blade's path, he grabbed the edge of her weapon and heaved it toward the center of his body mass. A fraction of a second later and Mordred's momentum caught up with her arm, tugging her helplessly along behind it. Aqua eyes narrowed as she realized what he intended. The bastard was pulling her forward by the blade with the intent to slug her in the face, thereby forcing her to either release said hilt and strike out at him, or hold on tight and risk a debilitating blow. Well, she'd show him see how the bastard liked a headbutt when he tried to yank her weapon out of her. Wrong. The Knight of Rebellion had time for a single startled yelp before Naruto ignored her blade completely forsaking defense and allowing the blade to bite deep into his stomach then emerge out his back in a grisly red spray. If Naruto was at all faced by the towering blade jutting from his stomach, he did little to show it. With his free hand he lunged forward past her and seized a fistful of her hair. Blue eyes burned before her vision oh, not blue she realized without mounting disbelief, they'd turned red when she wasn't looking in. Ground. Breath burst out of her lungs as Berserker whipped her face first into the earth by the hair. The sheer force of it ripped the air out of her lungs and she coughed, momentarily winded. Instead of finishing her off however, a booted foot filled her vision, nudged her side, rolled her over. A grunt echoed, punctuated by a wet squelching sound as her opponent tore her blade free. Moments later it clattered to the floor, just out of her reach. Even as she grasped at her blade, Aqua eyes regarded the wound that gaping hole staring down at Mordred in crimson relief. No, not a hole. To her dismay, the wound simply unwound itself, revealing healthy pink skin. Okay, okay, I get the point. Ha point that's rich. Her boot caught him in the end he stumbled back, laughing. What are you? A zombie Mordred snarled. 
How the hell are you still standing, hoy? Ah, just like a lover who's is boiling with passion a stark, cultured voice interjected before he could finish. Yes, yes, yes that's the way fight to your heart's content this will make a fine prologue. All eyes, master and servant alike, turned toward this fesh voice. A horse they cried a horse my kingdom for a horse. Groaning, Mordred clamored wearily upright. In the end, Berserker beat her to it. Who the hell are you? Please, my lord your words break my heart continue as you were. Instead of another warrior, they found themselves staring at a foppishly dressed man. A bearded fellow, clad in extravagant clothes to match. With quill in hand, he hastily scrawled into a book, daunting everything, all that he saw and reproducing it as a grand play. He cared not a whit for the weapons leveled at him indeed, he appeared ignorant to their very existence. In his mind, all that existed was the story, the pen, the play. A true tragedy was even now being slavishly written as all words must be wrought. Mordred's eye twitched. Oi, who the hell gave you permission to write about us, you damned hack? To write nay how can you spout such drivel you wound me the man staggered back as though he'd been physically struck. I am merely recording this grand tale as it unfolds in affront to my works is an affront to myself, Shakespeare. Jean's eye twitched. This is I don't even know how to respond to that. Why are you here? To observe, of course the now-named servant sketched an extravagant bow. Such wit such drama how could I, as caster of red, resist recording such an opportunity please, continue as you where you are k. A brick sailed out of Naruto's hand and collided with the poet's skull. With that, the last of the tension drained out of the street and those inhabiting it. I think that's enough, don't you, Saber Sisigu sighed. He's learned his lesson by now. Oi, Master Whiskers started it. Want me to finish it? Why, you. We're on the same side, the necromancer drawled. Don't go killing your allies. Berserker, the same applies to you, Jean quipped. That's an order. Naruto and Mordred exchanged a terse, angry glance. For a moment, just a moment, Jean worried. Then, to the dismay and disbelief of all parties present, both blonde burst into laughter. Naruto extended a hand and this time, Mordred firmly grasped it. Hauling herself to her feet, the battered knight used his body as a pillar to stand. Upon doing so, she immediately slapped an armored hand against the ninja's unarmed back, staggering him. For his part, the berserker laughed the blow off and returned her blade to her. Saber accepted it gladly, planting it tip first in the street for support. What the hell was that punch back there, whiskers that shit hurt? I could say the same thing about that kick you're crazy. We've gotta do this shit again, later. No holding back. You read my mind name the time and place. At a side, how the hell are you alive? Well, I've got crazy regeneration. No kidding so, about Caster. Berserker offered a grin. Well, we could. As the unlikely allies continued their equally unlikely conversation, both their masters could only gawp. Mere moments ago, Saber and Berserker had, for all intensive purposes, tried to kill one another. That they were now squabbling over the time and place of their rematch as well as trading friendly insults was a tad disconcerting all things considered. An unstoppable force had met an immovable object and in the end, neither had yielded. Indeed, it seemed both parties were better off for their little spar besides. In the end, Sisigu was the one to recover his voice first. Wait did they just become friends? Now. Jean palmed her face in a fit of bleak dismay. He's an unlikely berserker, after all. Sisigu shrugged. Might as well go in together, then. With a grunt the scarred man turned and rested the doors to the church open. The sudden sound of rust and hinges immediately captured their attention. Oi, berserker saber he called. Stop tying up caster. We're going. Wait a minute. Don't get ahead of us. A humble cathedral awaited them within, its candles unlit, its many pews empty. Before the altar a lone man knelt, his head bowed in benediction. Naruto said his tongue softly at the sight. Churches had never sat well with him, nor did the idea of a higher power. He'd fought one goddess already, he didn't relish the idea of charging headlong facing another. Less so the sight of the man clad in dark robes at the foot of the altar. With his back to him, he couldn't see his face, but that crop of unruly white hair still stirred something in him. Anxiety. This is the designated place. Sisigu began roughly. Were you the one who called us? Silently, the kneeling man rose, turned to face them. Greetings. He welcomed them with a small smile. I am the supervisor of this war, Shiro Katamine. Humbly, the priest sketched a small bow towards each of them and shook their hands. Towards one individual above all the others and the rest. It's a pleasure to finally meet you, Berserker of Red. Naruto eyed the extended hand with vague interest. Almost imperceptibly, his gaze narrowed. Looking back, he couldn't say what it was that made him distrust the priest. Perhaps it was his smile. Maybe it had something to do with his eyes. It might even have been the hair. Who knew regardless of the case, he didn't believe the young man. Nor did he trust him. There was just an air about him, a curious aloofness behind his smile that reminded him of an old enemy he'd once fought in the past. This priest radiated the same sensation as that one. Ah, so this was what it felt like to experience fear again. He'd almost forgotten after all these years. In the end, it saved both their lives. Noted. We're leaving, Jean. Oh, wait a second. She had a scent. It had taken her a fair amount of time in the an hour of Vento track, but she'd finally succeeded here, in the late hours of the morning. Credit where it was due, Berserker had done well to elude her for so long. Against any other servant he might have eliminated any and all traces of his presence. But she was above all things a huntress, a tracker without peer. No one could equal her in the art. 
for all his caution he'd failed to take into account the matter of his scent. Even now it lingered in the air, a heady scent of prana leading east, mixed with something she couldn't quite identify. No matter. With her speed, it was only a matter of time now. She supposed it wasn't fair of her to use such a method to find him, yet she had no other recourse. Shards of light burst through the clouds ahead of her and she avoided them, choosing to stay to the shade of the trees. The sanctity of the earth and soil. It was here that she was most at home, not sprinting about in the open or racing headlong through the sky. Unlike a pair of men she knew. For someone who should have been a berserker, Naruto was very good when it came to concealing his presence. At first, she'd nearly followed the second source. Faint to be sure, but also an another clone of his. A challenge. Somehow, the throne gauntlet only made Atalanta all the more determined to succeed. If this were a race, then she wanted to be the one to triumph. To come out on top. To snatch victory, like the victory she had been so cruelly denied so long ago. She would have the final say this time. Regardless of what Ryder said. That damn fool of a man. Who did he think he was butting his nose into matters that didn't concern him the thought irritated her with every leap, each stride only serving to further exasperate the huntress. She wouldn't put it past him to race her there just to annoy her. He'd tease her of course, but this time there had been an edge to it. The two of you are more alike than you know. What did that mean? More than that, Berserker's own words lingered. I want to help you achieve that dream. In the end, she'd set out for the city, towards that stronger, roaring presence. Atalanta had many questions, and she suspected he held the answers. The clone's journey was finally coming to an end. With the incessant heat of the afternoon sun beating relentlessly down on its head, it was almost grateful. It had traveled far across Romania indeed, much further than one might expect it of a simple cage bunchen. Leagues upon leagues spanned its journey, from Trifus to Syasora, then finally Bucharest. Virgin with far more chakra than its lesser brethren, the blonde doppelganger had covered these great distances in a single day, uncaring of what or who saw, all in search of a single goal. Its mission was of paramount importance, and its severity could not be understated. The very outcome of the Holy Grail War might hinge on its actions here tonight. After all, this was the task assigned it by the original. To wander, to search, to see. This world was wonderful and wide and so very new and they knew next to nothing about it. For a ninja, such a crippling lack of intelligence could easily prove fatal. But he wasn't here to gather intel on the enemy though any sliver of information would be gladly welcome at that task fell to another clone. His purpose was far more mundane by comparison, though no less Vita. It was here to record potential fallback points, set up safe houses, observe then report back, and the like. This might be little more than a game for Naruto, but for his master the risks were terribly, horribly real. She only had one life, after all. Any enemies it encountered were to be reasoned with of course you were was the fun and leaping into a fight unprepared but if it came to blows it had been given a very specific set of seals. Seals which would cause the rich chakra, prana in its veins to violently self-destruct and take the enemy with it. One might call it a suicide mission, but the clone was content with that. This was its purpose after all. If it perished in the outing then it would simply return to the original and be recreated again. Its thoughts, its memories, the very essence that made it him would live on in the original. The clone was content with that. At any rate, it had completed its task and surveyed the whole of Romania. Several fallback positions had been marked in case of an emergency. Stockpiles of food and water were safely stored underground or secreted away by hired hands. People were happy to follow orders, so long as they were being paid for their services. What did it matter where the coin came from if it weren't for that damn class penalty? The original would have simply summoned a small army and been done with it, but alas it was not to be. This was the hand they'd been dealt by the throne and they would just have to work around it. Perhaps if they'd been summoned as assassin, they'd be able to use Horatian more reliably. As it stood, his father's infamous jutsu was going to do him precious little good as berserker. Any use he might have gotten out of it was negated by another annoying penalty. A single use would break each of the nine kunai he held, sunder them, beyond all hope of repair. He'd had to be terribly selective about seeding them. One had been planted near the distant road in case of emergencies, but the others. Frankly, it was more than a little annoying. Indeed, the clone was preparing to dispel itself when a spike of prana caught its attention. Help. The word stabbed at him, twisting in his mind. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Did I get spotted or something? Like a sharp knife thrust through its gut, so too did the clone lurch to the side, its back slamming against a nearby wall. Almost painfully close in its proximity, the sudden swell of energy lit up his senses in a blazing storm of light, only to fail and fade just as quickly. As though someone had pulled the plug on an exceptionally powerful spell and left the remnants to gutter out and die. Or they'd been interrupted. Violently. Neither should have been impossible. Improbable, at the very least. The odds of someone summoning less than a block away were impossible. Absurd. And yet, his body didn't hesitate. Uncaring for the scene it made, the clone flung itself out of the alley and into broad daylight. A single leap carried him upward toward one of the taller buildings, bringing him within reach of what he sought. His good hand locked around a weather vane, using the momentum to swing himself upwards to safety, both feet alighting on a rusted fire escape. Ah, uh, this was the place, then. Kicking off the metal rail, he propelled himself forward and through the nearest window he found. 
bits of broken glass and metal lashed at his crossed arms as he crashed through, landing in a pointed crouch. Hem, the room was larger than he thought. A sprawling expanse with a towering bed to match, it reeked of luxury, the kind most would kill to attain in a single lifetime alone, never mind several. Gilded curtains twisted under his boots as he stood, crushing glass underfoot. Someone's workshop, no doubt, and a rather gaudy one at that. Yet something was off. The scent had filled his nose when he inhaled, a coppery tang both everywhere, and yet nowhere. Lives had been taken here, many of them. A tang of despair filled his lungs when he breathed, the bitter grudges of the slain and the departed assaulting his senses. He'd expected to find the enemy waiting for him within, or a magus. Someone or something resembling a threat to his person, at the very least. Not vice. Instead he found wide walls alongside a man missing both his jaw and an arm, as well a woman with her guts torn out. A cursory glance confirmed that the former was still alive, if only just. Alas, the same could not be said for the woman. She'd gone down hard and lay sprawled over what he could only assume was a summoning apparatus of some sort of circle carved using her own as an inscription. Strewn haphazardly over the floor, her innards hung about in grisly relief. Whomever she was, she hadn't died well. Had she managed to maim the other before she died? No, there was something else in here, rather, someone no. This time it wasn't the that made Naruto balk. Just stop, stop, stop avert thine eyes. Curled between them in the fetal position lay a stained wisp of a girl clad in attire entirely too scandalous given her age. Despite all the original had seen and remembered in as many years, this easily exceeded the bounds of reason. Just what in blazes was she wearing what kind of lowly exposition was this sputtering? He hastily wrapped his cloak around her shoulders without a second thought. A tiny, muffled whimper greeted his noble efforts and a small hand felt its way around his. As he looked on, a pair of faded golden eyes peeked out of the tented fabric, framed by a mess mop of ashen hair. Particles of fresh mana wafted from a deep wound in her thin frame and fading relief, vanishing into the air as she gazed up at him. In that instant, he became frightfully aware of what she was. She had no presence. Not at all. None. Assassin. His hackles rose and the fingers of his right hand twisted into top claws at his side, forming an edge harder than steel. A single twitch would drive that hand through her heart and end her life. At least, in theory, maybe someone like Sasu could have done that. Kill the child in cold. Without pause. With no remorse. But Naruto he couldn't and his clone quickly came to the same conclusion. To strike at someone who looked so pitiful, so helpless Omion who'd done nothing to him. Oh, hell no. He muttered. Sorry, boss. I can't do it. I'm not killing a kid. Stirred by his words, the girl blinked up at him blearily. Mommy, irk. In his youth he'd been horribly awkward with children. Now he was an old hand at it. Having great-grandchildren did that to a man. Careful not to expose his flank, he crouched down beside the wide girl, ready to spring away if she attacked. She didn't appear to have any weaponry on her person, but he'd learned that lesson well with Atalanta. Any servant could summon their weapon in an instant. Even a dying one. He wasn't about to take her lightly. Pity her perhaps, and stay by her side until she died, of course, but underestimate her never. He'd seen too many friends nearly die to vindictive enemies on their last legs. If this little one tried anything, anything at all, she'd regret it. But until then, hey, there. He hummed, stroking the small of her back. What's your name, kiddo? Jack. She rasped weakly. I'm cold. I want to go where it's warm. Where it's warm, Naruto blinked. MHMM. Her hands fisted around the lapels of his coat, tugging weakly at first but with surprising strength. Abruptly they pushed inward, seeking the skin beneath. Sharp nails dug into his flesh. Hey wait. Just a second their blue eyes took in their wise surroundings and a ghastly pall of realization dawned on him. Where it's warm a fur of danger warned him of her intent and he batted her questing palms away with firm gentleness. Servant or not, the strength of Jack was many tears below his own and he overpowered her with ease. Something dangerous furred in the wounded servant's eyes and the sight of it made him clamp down hard on her wrists in spite of her struggle. No, no he admonished her, wagging a finger. None of that. I'd like to keep my guts where they are. She tilted her head at him in silent confusion. But I'm cold. Then I'll warm you up another way. Here. With a grunt he scooped the dangerous girl up in his arms and led her to the bed not like that in a series of quick strides. Nimbly evading the worst of the gore, he plopped her down on the mattress and began to bundle her up in the low-hanging sheets. The rest he tore feet to create an impromptu cloak of sorts for the silent servant. All the while, those golden eyes never left him. Berserker suspected she was watching him just as much as he was watching her each waiting for the slightest sign of hostility. If he knew she was a servant, she likely knew the same about him. Jack, how he hummed as he worked, as much to distract himself as her. That sounds kind of familiar. Why don't you feel real, she asked abruptly. The clone tittered softly at her inquiry. Because I'm not. Just a clone. But you berserker. Hem. Her sudden statement elicited a slight pause in him, nothing more. With age came experience after all. He might be somewhat restrained in this form than he'd like, but with his youth restored none of that mattered. With his current level of strength he could fight for days without rest, and his own reserves of chakra were pleasantly topped off by his master's bountiful supply of prana. Even he, a mere clone, could give any enemy a run for their money. In the unlikely even that things devolved into a battle between him and Assassin, he remained confident in his victory. Of course, his pleasant smile reflected absolutely none of the inner machinations of his mind. 
Nope, not at all. That's right, he supplied. I'm Berserker, but you can call me Naruto. And you're Assassin, aren't you? MMM. Her head bobbed in agreement. I'm Jack. Jack the Ripper. This time, the throne supplied the rest. Naruto hissed out of breath. Jack the Ripper. He just struck up a conversation and acquaintance at the very least with one of the most prolific serial killers in history. Might just be easier to let her disappear. Safer, certainly. Clearly something had gone wrong during her summoning and she'd attacked her summoner. The sacrifice he'd used it potentially as a catalyst appeared to have perished during the ritual as well. Recently at that, judging by the warmth of her body, it wouldn't be much of a stretch to assume she was a sacrifice mean to empower the ritual. Clearly, Jack had taken issue with that and maimed her master to the point where he would both be unable to speak or otherwise issue orders to her for the duration of the war. The thought made Naruto shake his head. It was pure chance that he'd even been in the area at all during her summoning. A few seconds later and he would have been gone, dispelled and sent back to the original without so much as a second thought for any of this. The irony wasn't lost on him. Don't suppose you'd be down for a truce he posited, watching her carefully. If she was a servant of black. Sure, you're nice. Her soft reply nearly floored him outright. Are you sure you're not my mommy? Naruto's jaw nearly struck the floor. That was easy. Urk. E.H. I'd prefer big brother, honestly. He admitted, recovering with a small shrug. No matter which was you slice it, definitely not mother material. Okay. Jack hopped off the bed, shaking off the sheets to expose herself. Idly, he noticed her wound was no longer visible. Strange. Did she have independent actin or had she simply healed he was fairly certain she didn't. He knew full well he had a passive healing skill thanks to that mark of his, but did that extend to those he considered allies perhaps it did. Regardless, he didn't have to worry about the girl fading away now. Of course, that still left the matter of her mangled master lying in the corner, slowly bleeding out. He supposed he could tend to the man's injuries and save his life, but regenerating a jaw that would be. We can call you that assassin lilted, commanding his attention, we've never had a big brother before. She touched a finger to her chin, considering the word, rolling it on her tongue. Hmm, brother. She spoke slowly, frowning to herself. Naruto Onichin. The blonde in question bit back a small smile at her childish behavior. Odd. Why was she referring to herself as we strange? That. First time for everything, I suppose. So, we good. A wide, beatific smile blossomed on her face. Yay Onichin. With a startling burst of speed, Jackie slammed into him. The clone tensed, expecting an assault of some sort, only to realize his mistake. She hadn't attacked. Not in the least. She was hugging him crushing her face into his stomach, little arms squeezing his back for all she was worth. An old memory fed through the annals of the clone's mind. Ah, uh, he remembered being embraced like this before, first by his children then grandchildren and great-grandchildren thereafter. Old memories, good memories. A strange, warm feeling blossomed in his. There, there. He sighed, mussing her hair. Good girl. Jack hummed happily and nuzzled her head deeper into his cloak. Presumptuous though it might be for one leading such a fleeting existence as this, the clone decided to take pity on assassin. He knew a lost soul when he saw one in this girl now, it wouldn't be a stretch to say she was several. Countless souls coalesced into one body with one mind, one purpose, one drive. The desire to live. He could understand that. Sympathize with it, even. What was wrong with living it wasn't a sin to be alive, after all. What you did with your life, wealth that determined your worth in life. This one, Jack, he reminded himself, had been denied even that. She didn't need to rest. She needed a purpose. A reason to live. Pity he couldn't think to give her one. Honestly, he almost felt sorry for the poor thing her luck was even worse than his. Here, Onichin. Jack piped up, distracting. You can have these. At first, Naruto cloned it and understand her. Wait a minute, what do you mean? Until his hand roared in pain. What in blazes? He looked down. Oh, hell. In disbelief, he gaped at the crimson mark now staining the back of his hand. Etched in the twisted shape of a dagger, pommel, hilt, and blade. A strange, eldritch tattoo in the shape he'd never seen before yet was terribly familiar with all the same. After all, he'd seen a similar mark on Jean's hand. He knew what it meant, but he didn't understand how. By rights, it should have been impossible. His eyes didn't deceive him. Though he squinted and scrubbed furiously at his face, the same mark remained. The mark, and all the power that came with it. As he looked on it pulsed red. Ordinarily a clone couldn't sustain any sort of real injury, but he had been reinforced with that very idea in mind. He could endure at least three life-threatening blows before the chakra comprising and sustaining his body evaporated. Theoretically, such an act would render him smoke. His experiences and memories would then be transferred to the original. The process of transferring command seals to him hadn't been painful, but at the same time it had put undue stress on his already failing body. Ordinarily, that wouldn't have bothered him, but unfortunately the damn spells had recognized him as a temporary being-being and thus raced right through his link the original and latched on for all they were worth. Sure enough, the clone experienced a beat of incredulous surprise from its creator. Damn it, he hadn't known she could do that. Jack tilted her head. Did I do something bad? The clone palmed his face, groaning. No, no, you didn't do anything wrong. Yes, yes she had terribly bad horribly bad. The original was going to utterly murder him for this. Never had the Shadow Clone been so thankful for his ability to dispel. As far as it was concerned, this wasn't his problem anymore. Nope let him deal with it. 
pivoting to face the petite assassin, the clone sighed and raised his freshly marked hand in command. Right then, Jackson, I need you to listen very carefully to what I'm about to say. By the power of this command spell I order you to. They're not following. Seems like it. Kairi Sisigu risked a wary glance over his shoulder and found himself somewhat relieved to find that his servant had spoken true. Relieved and moderately concerned. Neither that damn priest or his servant had made any attempt to trail them after they'd gone and refused their offer of alliance. But he couldn't say the same of Jean with any certainty. After the grand scene Berserker had made back there, he expected Katamine would likely retaliate against him and his master sometime in the near future. And that just wouldn't do. Sisigu was admittedly rather fond of Jean the woman took absolutely no nonsense from anyone and they'd worked well together in the past. She could be a bit of a recluse at times, but she took great pride in her work ethic and always saw a job through to the end. It just wasn't in her to make rash decisions without thinking things through, it was in part the reason she'd survived where others failed. If someone made the monumental mistake of riling her they faced long, exacting vengeance. A bibliophile though she might be, the woman packed a mean punch. She was going to get herself killed in this war if she wasn't careful. Berserker seemed skilled to be sure, but if that woman was who he thought she washed be in for a bad time. Still, Mordred had told him the truth, after all. Of course she had. Saber wasn't the sort to lie. It wasn't that she lacked the moral fiber to do so rather, she was simply too proud to ever consider a deception. Even now her rough voice echoed through their bond, words buzzing about in his head like a swarm of irritated hornets as he left the church behind and entered Alley. They haven't left the church. Even an assassin would have to materialize to attack. She growled, I'm too good to let that happen. And that berserker guy doesn't seem the type. Fair enough, he relented. Master, why wouldn't you work with them? You didn't want to, either. Sisigu pointed out. That was just a gut feeling. Saber retorted petulantly, he could almost see her crossing her arms in a fit of righteous indignation. That Semiramis woman smelled like my mother. Women like that must never be trusted, not ever. Besides that was watching him. Watching who? Ha whiskers, of course. Sisigu nearly missed a step. This was a trap. Yes, definitely a trap. A landmine he absolutely refused to step on. To suggest otherwise meant doom. To even imply that Saber was fond of the blonde or experiencing such sentiment was just asking for a knuckle sandwich. No, he might even lose his life if his tongue slipped right now. Wisely, he chose to ignore her brief bout of jealousy and press on as if nothing had happened. Yes, ignorance was the key he'd seen what she had done to Shakespeare and that poor bastard was still alive. So long as he pretended nothing had transpired between the two of them, he would keep his head maybe. Then it was the right decision. He amended. I trust your intuition. A beat of awkward silence passed between master and servant. Well, thanks. I'm glad my master's not some booting sucker. Ah, but not too glad. Medium Gladaha. Mordred manifested beside him in a swirl of mana, her abrupt arrival momentarily taking him back. As did her crazed grin. Without pause or preamble nor an explanation, Knight of Rebellion bounded straight past him and rounded the nearest corner at near impossible speed. Then she hit something. Or perhaps someone hit her. Tackled, more like. A startled grunt greeted Sisigu's ears, punctuated by a brief struggle as someone flung a rough curse and crashed into a wall. The ruckus almost made the old necromancers smile. Mordred must have bitten off more than she could chew because she started squawking immediately. Oi don't pull my hair, Berserker I'm sorry I jumped you, alright. Ah, but your ponytail's just so fluffy a familiar voice cooed. I can't resist and yet you get so mad when anyone calls you a. Mordred growled. I will gut you. Berserker was waiting for Sisigu when he finally found them. Indeed, he was treated to an almost comical sight. Somehow the whiskered warrior had managed to pin Saber against the ground, trapping both arms behind her back, and was now batting at her hair with his good hand while the other held her down. Probably best that he'd intervened. Mordred looked like she was about to bring the entire block down on their heads if he didn't get off her suo. Wait. As he approached Berserker grinned and clambered off the enraged knight, nimbly leaping onto an adjacent rooftop out of her reach before her blade found something tender. Hey leave my bits alone, Saber I need those, you know. Unfortunately, this wasn't enough to stop Mordred. Get down here and I'll chop him, bastard. Berserker's body wriggled playfully. Ah, uh, scary I don't wanna. Why you little? Saber. Mordred didn't quite flinch when Sisigu barked at her, but she did growl. For a fleeting moment, Sisigu wondered if she'd disobey. Berserker certainly excelled at getting under her skin. Tenuous friendship or no, she was looking more than a little irked. Oi, master that's not fair he started it. So did you by sneaking up on him. The necromancer admonished her. Let it go. You can stick him full of holes if he does it again. Mordred managed a murderous mule. Promise. A berserker squawked from his precarious perch. Where are you, a sadist I'm not a mortal that'll kill me. To ch. Saber folded both arms across her plate. Fine, spoil sport. On one condition. I want clothes. Clothes. Naruto and Sisigu blinked as one. Hug. Huh. Don't give me that look it's not my fault I just can't stand walking around in my armor all day it doesn't feel comfortable so Mordred sulked, stomping a booted foot against the ground for emphasis. Either man up and buy me something else to wear or I'll make a use of command seal. The knight threatened. Your choice, master. He really did have a troublesome servant. Fine, fine. Just put your sword away before someone sees. With a please hum, the warrior knight did as she'd been commanded. 
Right, you can come down now, zombie I promise I won't murder ye it. Always nice to see cooler heads prevail. Berserker snarked down at them, snapping off a faux salute before dropping back down off the roof to slide down the wall. I'm glad you made it out of that place in one piece. Sisigu heaved a silent sigh of relief. These two they just might be the most dangerous servants in the entire war. If they ever fought seriously, their surroundings as well as anyone unlucky enough to be caught in the crossfire would be utterly annihilated in the blink of an eye. In that aspect alone, it was critical to keep them from fighting in a populated area. Should they unleash their noble phantasms in broad daylight for everyone to see well, that wasn't something the association would be able to sweep under the rug easily. Yes, it was absolutely imperative he kept the peace between these two, even if it threatened to tear him apart. So why'd you run out of there like the anyway Mordred muttered, flushing? Were you scared or something? No, a sour look flashed across his face, I just don't trust that shitty priest. He reminds me of Uchiha Madara, so I got my master the hell out of there. Mordred tilted her head, a questing note in her tone. Madara, a eh, someone who died a long time ago. No one you need to concern yourself with. Anyhow grinning, the blonde berserker smacked a clenched fist into an open palm. As much as I'd like to finish what we started back there, I'm here on official business this time around. Ahem. A pause followed as he coughed into a fist and shifted his weight to his right leg, allowing the true weight of his words to sink in. To put it bluntly, my master would like to request an alliance. With the two of you, frankly, I'm all for it. His hand rose, palm offered in friendship. What do you say? A beat of silence passed between the three of them. She probably wants information, considering you dragged her out of there in a huff before she learned anything. Sisigu amended with a small smile. Regretting that now, aren't you? The blonde's expression turned sheepish. He made a pinching motion. Just a little. Huh. Mordred growled aloud, suddenly peering the blonde's outstretched intensely. When the blonde didn't reply she seized his outstretched limb and hauled him close. For his part Berserker didn't resist, only uttering a soft noise of confusion when his fellow blonde hauled off and grabbed him. Those aqua orbs weren't focused on his face. Indeed, it didn't exist to her in that moment. Her fierce gaze was focused firmly upon his extended hand with a laser-like intensity, ignoring all else. Sisigu followed his gaze and felt his heart still. He knew those markings. Oi, frowning, Saber drew him closer still. Since when did you have friggin' command seals on your hand those weren't there back at the church? Naruto sighed. Bit of a story, there are it. If we're going to be allies, we shouldn't keep secrets. Turning his head to a vacant rooftop, he snapped his fingers. Jigs up, Jack come out, come out, wherever you are. A faint breeze registered behind Sisigu's flank. And then, quite suddenly, she was there. Mordred's loud squawk spoke for him. Where'd the chibai come from? So that's the long and short of it. Say hello, Jackie. Hello, assassin waved happily. Naruto drooped like a kicked puppy as Jean leveled a dark glower on his back. One didn't need telepathy to know she was put out with her servant. Of course, she had every right to be. He'd gone off and done something incredibly foolish. Rather, his clone had. It could have easily backfired and wiped him out. That it hadn't was something of a miracle. He knew he should argue. Put up a fight at the very least. After all, he wasn't at fault here. Jack had been the one to transfer her command seals to him. Such a feat should have been impossible, and it would have been had her master lived. Yet that didn't change the outcome. Besides, he simply didn't have the will to try and argue semantics with his allies. That was neither here nor there. Actions have consequences. One of those consequences was currently squeezing his hand for all she was worth. Which was rather considerable, know that he thought about it. Oni Ichin, she whispered, I'm really hungry. And don't you have enough mana? Golden eyes gazed up at him. But I'm hungry. As if to punctuate that statement, her stomach growled. Ah, uh, don't worry, I'll get you some hamburger or something before we head out, okay. Say, having relocated to a more secluded location, they were relatively safe from prying eyes. Berserker didn't mind that. If they were going to have a gathering at all then it was best done in secret, away from the prying eyes of the black faction or those of a certain priest. With only one entrance, this location was relatively well guarded and had the added benefit of restoring their mana at a healthy rate. This was all well and good, considering he burned a fair bit of mana merely by supporting Jack's existence, and that was handicap enough on its own. Multiple bounded fields also prevented anyone from ambushing them. But did it have to be a crypt? If there was one weakness he still hadn't parted with from his youth, it was his fear of ghosts. Graveyards just didn't sit well with him. Judging by Mordred's sullen expression, she felt the same. In regards to the alliance, Jean made of a show of adjusting her glasses, do we have an accord? I don't see why not. Sisigu shrugged. You've been up front with us so far. A fur of torchlight momentarily rendered her glasses opaque. And the grail she pressed. Jay, scary woman. We'll burn that bridge when we come to it. So we're in agreement that the zombie did the right thing Warder chimed. Naruto's head whipped around with such force that those nearby felt his neck crack by proximity alone. A beat of silence passed between the two servants, followed by another. The another still. Another. Just when Saber was beginning to wonder if she ought to take back those words her fellow blonde blitzed her. Not an attack, she realized too late. Seizing her in a crushing embrace, Berserker sighed in contentment and roughly nuzzled her face like a happy cat. 
a crimson flush all but crawled up the knight's neck, rapidly rising in her cheeks and flooding her face. His scent filled her nose when she breathed and for a moment, just a moment, she was taken back. Mordred he wailed I knew I liked you you're all right. His words reactivated her in a rush. Bebaka get off of me now. With a demented smile, the rejuvenated blonde spun away and hid behind his master. For her part, Jean silently palmed her face and weathered Saber's glower as a flush burned her ears. This, this was her servant, the one she was supposed to entrust her well-being to. Why had the gods forsaken her? Berserker, behave yourself. Now, Sisigu, what's this about the ruler class? Grateful for the distraction, the necromancer stood at attention. I'm afraid I don't know much about her beyond what I already mentioned, he explained, shaking his head. If you're thinking of cultivating her as an ally, I wouldn't. She likely won't be around for long. Naruto perked up. What makes you say that? Call it a feeling. That priest strikes me as the sort to meddle. Naruto nodded slowly, absently thumbing his chin in quiet agreement. Noted. A fifteenth servant. Uh, so when do we attack? He inquired, drawing several startled looks. Night night sounds good. We've stolen a servant from the black faction and now you want to assault their base of operations, Sisigu sighed. Won't that be like poking a hornet's nest? I wouldn't call it an assault. Oi, what are you doing? As they looked on the blonde simply sat down and tucked his legs beneath him, settling into a peaceful meditative crouch. If he was at all annoyed by the sudden scrutiny he did little to show it. He merely closed his eyes and gave a deep sigh a long-suffering one as Jack immediately plopped down beside him and claimed the vacant space between his legs for herself. Well, this was somewhat awkward. How was a man to focus when you had someone like her clinging to you as exasperation was only sharpened by the quiet and tensions he felt radiating from her. Poor thing just wanted to be close to him. If only Ichin's going, she puffed out her cheeks, so am I. The whiskered warrior shrugged in defeat, never once opening his eyes. See, just think of it as aggressive expansion. Mordred's smile bloomed. How oh, I like it. We don't know if the rest of the Reds can be trusted. Naruto pointed out, turning his still-closed gaze from his crouch to peer at an equally excited Mordred. I can vouch for at least one other person, but I don't have a reliable method of contacting her. And since my clone saw fit to use a command spell to summon Jack here, we have three servants instead of two. Saber, Berserker, Assassin. He fed a finger to each of them, including himself, in turn. All things considered, we're lucky. We have two frontline fighters and a rear guard. Jean and Sisigu will stay here and provide support via command seals. It might be best if we had one more, but for a first assault I think the three of us will do. Jack bristled in his lap. 4. All eyes save those of a certain blonde turn toward the entrance. Toward the faint sound of approaching footfalls. Saber's blade snarled to life. Naruto inhaled quietly. Uh huh. Even with his eyes screwed firmly shut concentrated on drawing the surprisingly resistant energy of this world Naruto felt a small smile tug at his cheeks. Well seemed as a luck was finally taking a turn for the better at long last. Hell, he felt like grinning he'd been hoping to contact her again, but he simply hadn't possessed a reliable means of doing so, beyond running her down. For her to willingly seek him out meant she either had an annoying large bone to pick with them, or her intentions were more noble. From what he knew of her legend he doubted it was the former. Likely the latter then. Through his sixth sense, she blazed like a beacon of light. Inflicted perhaps, yet also decisive. Fascinating. Scary, scary. He hummed, tilting his head in her direction. I didn't even sense you coming until just now. Remind me never to piss you off. Slowly, she stepped into the light. Atalanta. Mortar didn't lower her blade. The hell is she? Archer of Red. Naruto chimed. Ran into her a little while ago. Didn't think she'd actually come after me, though. Atalanta's ears twitched. In the end, she acknowledged none of them neither master nor servant. Her head turned, taking in the dim surroundings of the crypt and the crude table they'd erected between the four of them. Emerald eyes narrowed upon the worm parchment there, reading the map at a glance only to dismiss it as well. Finally, her piercing eyes locked onto him, pinning him with the single-mindedness of a hunter seeking their prey. There was fire in her eyes, hot yet tempered by restraint. Instead of the anger he'd expected there was on the confusion. Berserker, and the blonde stirred from his meditative crouch, a gold eye finally creaking open. Need something. Curiously he felt her gaze settle not on him, but rather, Jack. When next she spoke, her voice almost faltered. How who is that child in your lap? Everything set into place. I'm Jack. Who are you? Perhaps pleased to be acknowledged by someone other than her precious person, Jack rose from the blonde's legs to bar the huntress's path. At least, he assumed she was pleased. Her once expressive face had shut down, replaced by a steely look he'd not seen from her before. In that instant Jack didn't exist. She became Jack the Ripper. No, not pleased, he realized. Wary, alert, cautious, ready to slice up into Atalanta if she so much as twitched the wrong way. Surely Atalanta must have sensed that she was a servant too, yet she made no move to defend herself, even as the petite girl conjured a dagger. Instead, Archer's visage was a riot of emotion. Disbelief, confusion, joy, and a hint of fear. All these furring feelings and more danced across her face, there one moment and gone the next. Naruto read them all like an open book. As if she couldn't decide whether to unleash her bow disastrous as such a close quarters battle would bay her turn tail and run. Something had her spooked, and he suspected he knew what it was. Still, he held his silence. If he spoke now he might easily send the volatile archer over the edge and who knew where that would lead. 
You are the assassin of Black. Tell me, why are you with Berserker? She inquired bluntly, staring at her. What is he to you? Boy, Mortar growled. Just what the hell do you think you're doing ignoring the rest of? Without so much as a glance, Atlanta loosed three arrows into the wall opposite her. Be silent, Saber. She replied in a dead voice. This doesn't involve you. Once those harrowing orbs found Jack the Ripper. This time, Jack gave her reply gladly. Oniachin saved me. She answered, beaming with all the innocence and guilelessness such as only a broken child could possess. He heard my voice when no one else would. He wrapped me in blankets when I was cold and told me I was safe. He promised to feed me and take care of me. I is important. It was like flipping a switch. Ah. Atlanta's hand descended for a second time not to attack, but to ruffle assassin's ashen hair. This time, there could be no mistake the blissful expression on the girl's face. Beaming, she leaned into the outstretched palm and hummed softly. Then Archer was past her, nimbly skirting the small servant in favor of her master. Naruto made no effort to rise indeed, he remained right where he was, meditating in spite of the danger. If attacked in this position he risked suffering a fatal wound before he could defend himself. Even then he didn't move. Had he known her thoughts, he might have. Through this single act alone, he'd unknowingly endeared himself to the nimble huntress more than any mortal before him. Beyond that, his actions warmed her heart. Not enough for her to consider breaking that sacred vow, but enough to thaw the ice between them. Closer than before. In this alone, this simple act of kindness would become a catalyst that led to something extraordinary. A miracle beyond miracles, that act of defiance in which one turned their back on the heavens and another forsook the gods themselves. But for now, neither knew. May I join you? Naruto merely sighed. Eh, hey, sure. Plenty of room. After a moment's consideration, Archer claimed the space beside him. I take it you have a plan to assault the Black Faction's stronghold she posited after a long moment. Naruto frowned. Well, we do, but... Then I shall join you. It wasn't a question, but a command. A beat of uneasy silence passed between the uneasy party. Jean and Sisigu had held their tongues until this moment, fearing the worst and trusting the servants to handle it. Now that they had diffused the tension, they found themselves at something of an impasse. For another servant to simply waltz in and join forces with another out of the blue it was unheard of. That Atalanta of the Red Faction had just done so without her master utterly baffled them. Jack, for her part, was content to stay silent so long as her own itching continued patting her head like that. And Mordred well, did you seriously just? Saber opened her mouth to argue. A crackle of awareness interrupted her. Of course one of the damn knives goes off now. Change of plans, guys. I'll be going on ahead. See in Trifus. With a laugh Naruto vanished, leaving a broken kunai behind in his wake. The last he heard of them was an exasperated growl belonging to said Huntress. Not again. Then they were gone the world lurching and twisting around him in a swirling vortex flashes of gold and red interposing with silver as he surrendered to the pull of the technique. In this form it was very much a one-way jutsu, allowing for him to travel great distances at speed, but at the cost of not being able to return so lightly. This kunai in particular had been the one he'd planted near the highway. That it had triggered meant one of two things someone had either attempted to remove it, or it had detected a threat against a third party. It was the latter that worried him. He'd never mastered Horatian, and in this limited capacity it was very much a double-edged sword. If there was a ruler in this war, and if she'd been attacked. Unfortunately, he neglected a vital component in this. The nine kunai could be moved, flung or thrown, such as an explosion rendering it airborne. And now, by that very definition him, reality rushed back with a dull roar, and a world's worth of momentum came with it fire furred in his vision, forcing him to squint even as he plummeted to the earth. By the time his vision cleared he beheld a startled face that he hoped prayed wasn't the ruler class servant. By then it was already too late. He couldn't have stopped even if he wanted to. Not that it mattered anymore. Whomever had drawn nearest to that cunny was in for a world of hurt and several broken bones besides. He could make them pay for disturbing him, at the very least. Even as he fell he saw them fighting. Two figures waged war like never before, one a burning man, the other a woman with striking gold hair. That was all the information provided by his heightened senses at this distance. Judging by the woman's efforts, she was the one forced on the defensive, yet still she fought on despite her opponent's lanceuate. Lance yes, there was definitely a lance of some sort, which made the other one ruler. Ah, uh, good. Well, that was easy. D-Y-N-A-M-I-C-E-N-T-R-Y-D-A-T-T-E-B-A-Y-O. -E -E a pale face flashed before his vision. This was all answer of Red Herd had time to see. That brief, searing flash as something fell out of the sky. A rigid leg, straight as an arrow that booted foot swooping towards him in a searing hurricane. Then a cackling berserker drilled him headlong into the earth as though he'd been struck by the hand of an angry god. T-H-W-O-O-M. An R-G-H. Frankenstein felt the explosion long before she saw it. Like a distant rumble from far shores, so too did she feel the earth tremble beneath her feet as she picked a fresh bouquet of flowers. It was a very nice explosion a small animistic part of her brain mused the blast was very large, very loud, and more aptly very bright. Even at this great distance one could see the mushroom rising out of what had once been the highway. A few moments later, a fresh burst of fire lit up the night. Oh, pretty. The berserker spared the distant battle a moment more of her attention before doggedly returning to her task at hand. In her eyes, the fight didn't matter. 
all the servants of Black Bar one missing assassin were already assembled here at the castle, which meant the battle raging outside of the castle limits was of no consequence to her. If the Red Faction wanted to fight amongst themselves that badly it suited her just fine. Regardless of the victor, they would come sooner or later, and when they did, a hand settled on her head, mussing her hair. Whatcha do why in? R-R-R-N-G-H. Berserker bolted to her feet and flailed her arms in spectacular fashion, the motion scattering the flowers in her hands and launching them into the air. An enemy here to her credit, her brief moment of panic endured all of an instant before sense reasserted itself. Then she spun around and putting the full weight of her body into a single swing, slammed her mace into her attacker's visage with all of her considerable might. At least, that had been her intention. White teeth flashed out at her in the dark. Now, now, that wasn't very nice can't of you dispelling me just yet. Imagine her surprise then, when a muffled grunt reached her ears and she found her assault stalled against an open palm. A lone crimson eye blazed back at her from the gloom, the other hidden behind the unwieldy bulk of her weapon. Clawed fingertips closed around the business end of the hefty mace and squeezed, buckling the hardened metal of her favorite tool. Trap had caught in midswing a fur of surprise flitted across her expressionless visage. One of the weaker servants she might well be, but she still possessed superhuman strength more than render anyone she disliked into little more than stain. The enemy had just stopped the very strike. With one hand, servant, desperate thoughts skittered through her broken mind as she struggled against the intruder, to no avail. For all her might Frankenstein found herself forced back one step, then another, and another, yet another still. Though the other remained concealed behind his back, though sparks skittered from her weapon and into his flesh, though she strained against him with all her might, her opponent remained utterly unfazed. No, if Priscilla had to give voice to his response though she was loath to do so say he looked almost happy, right, then, let's move this thing so I can talk. Shunting her weapon down and to the right, the blonde slammed a booted foot against the mace, trapping it with his foot against the soil. In disbelief she tugged at it, struggling to free her cherished tool to no avail. As though it had well and truly become one with the garden, so too did she find it impossible to move her mace. What sorcery was this he couldn't possibly be this strong could he frantic. A fresh surge of current coursed through her weapon and into the iron-shod shoe holding her at bay. Instinct ground against her. Destroy. Crush. Kill. Her opponent merely laughed. Sorry, I'm practically immune to lightning after all those spars with Sasuke back in the day leaning over her entrapped weapon, he flashed her a sunny smile. Anyhow nice to finally meet you, fellow berserker he grinned at her with half-lidded eyes, extending his no freed hand in what she could only assume to be a gesture of peace. I'm berserker wait, no. The blonde paused thumbing his chin. They came out wrong. I mean, I am berserker this time around but you're clearly also berserker and Ogat this is gonna be confusing in it. A wordless hiss was her sole response. Oi, don't give me the silent treatment. Her attacker groused. I know you can talk, Frankenstein. A muscle jumped in her jaw and she saw red. Berserker. A finger thrust itself in her face eye brazen defiance of her rage. Aha knew it I rest my case, madam. She nipped at the outstretched digit until he withdrew it. Okay, okay Berserker. I know you can talk a little despite the madness enhancement, so why? Kill you. Shit that's we D.O.W. and girl. A low growl rose in her throat as the redhead tugged on her mace ain't again, for all the good it did her. She may as well have been a child beating her fists against a boulder. When her weapon still refused to be dislodged, she channeled nearly all the prana she had remaining into her mace. Under most circumstances, this wouldn't have availed her much. But in her fit of rage, she made the mistake of overcharging her treasured tool in a frantic attempt to dislodge him. With a deafening roar, blasted tree howled to life beneath his boot, its perpetual engine threatening to engulf them both. For the first time since they'd met, Naruto's pleasant what face lost its lazy smile. Hey whoa, whoa, whoa stop you cast in the pale glow of her ultimate attack, Berserker of Red flung up his hands. Don't waste your noble phantasm on me you'll wipe yourself out I'm just a clone I'm here to scout, not fight besides, I come bearing gifts. H-R-R-N-G-H. Fran tilted her head. The wrathful aura abated somewhat. Sheesh, what is with servants in this war her? Stabbing a hand behind his back, the blonde muttered crossly to himself as he unfurled the heavy scroll between his shoulders. Much to Fran's chagrin, he showed none of the fear he'd displayed earlier rather he appeared wholly intent on withdrawing an item hidden within the strange material. His hidden hand shot out, presenting her a bouquet of immaculately picketed a tad crumpled by the ordeal flowers in full view of her hidden gaze. A slow blink followed as she beheld them, long and ponderous. After a tense moment Fran reluctantly accepted them. Bringing them to her face, she inhaled. Sweet. Almost cloyingly so. H-M-P-H. With that he removed his foot from her mace and skipped back half a step. See Naruto chirped, watching her heft her mace. I'm harmless. Really, I just came her to scout and lay the occasional prank butt when I saw ya. I couldn't help myself. You look lonely, hence the flowers. So, tucking his knees beneath him, the blonde dropped to the floor and sat. Wanna talk? Oddly enough, Frankenstein found herself reminded of a large dog she'd once glimpsed in her the early days of her life. For all its bark, at the end of the day it had been a simple creature, happy and eager to please. Had the blonde possessed a tail, she suspected it would have been wagging much like that loyal mutt, though a part of her bristled at the idea, the rest of her longed for companionship. 
Master meant well, of course, but he couldn't truly understand the aching pang of loneliness that encompassed her existence and accompanied her every waking moment. More importantly, he wasn't here, and she couldn't fault him for that. He, at least, knew the release of sleep. She did not. Thus, surely a little chat wouldn't be so bad. After a moment's consideration, Berserker sat beside him, the act causing her wedding dress to bloom around her like a white lily. Talk. She ground out through gritted teeth. I believe the lady should go first. H-R-R-N-G-H. Or not. He placated, raising his hands. Naruto must have understood that much, for a chuckle followed. So he inquired. What do you want from this war gotta be something, right you wouldn't have answered the summoning otherwise. Frankenstein returned her gaze to the picked flowers in her hands, absently squeezing them. Too personal sorry, shouldn't have asked ya. Partner. She struggled with the word. Oh I get it. That's not a bad wish. A low grunt answered him. Knew one and no much to her chagrin, the whiskered warrior didn't fault her decision. It would have been easier if he had. I like to think there's somebody for everybody, you know take my master for instance. Thumbing his chin, he cast the scattered field of flowers a nostalgic glance. She reminds me of my wife in my last life. Sure, she's soft-spoken and gentle to those that know here, but I know she'd sock me if I ever did something stupid in this war. Part of the reason why I intend to win it for her. I'm curious to see what she'll ask the grail. What you think of yours you like him? The stilted silence proved deafening. Let me guess, that answer involves spoilers. Frankenstein leveled a flat, withering glare upon him. Geez, you really aren't going to give up the goose on that, are you? A slow shake of the head told him all he needed to know about that particular subject. She did, however, point a finger at him. Hum, I wish don't have one again those pearly whites flashed out at her, this time in a genuinely boyish smile that had her heart skipping a beat. I get to live again, and in a younger body to boot to start over set out on a grand adventure meet new people it's a regular man's romance what more could I ask for? Fran's expression didn't waver indeed, her baffled scowl only intensified. If looks could kill, the blonde would be a smoldering pile of ash. You wound me, madam I'm not lying. RRGH. You know, I could do something about that speech problem of yours. Her fellow berserker flashed his marked palm at her. Madness enhancement isn't easy to servant, but it can be done if you have the right tools. Helps if you're mad yourself. Sure enough, the strange shape on his palm seemed to writhe and twist before her eyes as she looked on. Here, hold still. Bizizity. A small pulse struck her throat before she could protest, earning him a dark look. Relax, it doesn't last long it might cost me a bit of energy to make it permanent, but I'm sure my master wouldn't mind too much. Why her voice emerged, harsh and grating to her own ears. Naruto snorted. Let me ask you this, why not he replied, resting his chin on a palm. I like helping people. Kinda my thing if you hadn't noticed. It's in my legend and everything. She hated it. But I didn't ask. Didn't want to speak to him. Words threatened to burst out of her, and with them, all the pain of her past. Don't talk. Don't speak. She hated it. Feared the own sound of her words. Somewhere in the back of her mind a key turned, and for a fleeting handful of seconds, her mind opened and she found herself able to think coherently. Icy fingers of dread trailed down her spine and with an effort, she mastered both them and her sudden sense of self. Ugh. If this was what it meant to be sane she'd happily sink back into blissful madness. Fran chewed her lip and shook her head, tucking her knees into her. I can't. Please don't don't leave me like this. Hey, you don't have to decide now. The scout soothed, patting her shoulder. Like I said, it's only temporary. Just know the offer's on the table if you ever change your mind. Those piercing blue eyes seemed to regard her for a long moment, silently taking her measure before coming to a decision. Ah, it. He decided at last, what would you say to a ceasefire I don't attack you, you don't attack me. Sound good. Fran at her head, her bangs swaying just so to reveal a golden iris. What? Well, you seem like an upstanding person, and you actually listen to me. Naruto pointed out. Caster and Archer tried to skewer me before I even saw them in the castle, so they can write off. Lancer seems like a stuck-up bugger. Haven't seen Ryder or Saber yet, but I doubt they'll listen to reason unless I tie them down, and that'd take way too much energy. Ergo. A finger poked her horn. You're it. Murphicully, when she opened her mouth, wordless gibberish emerged. Whatever fleeting remedy he'd inflicted upon her had run its course. Even then, Berserker of Red ferreted out her intent and bobbed his head in agreement. What? You want to know that how did I get up here he posited, holding up a finger. Well, I had to sneak into the castle the old-fashioned way, scale the wall and everything. Even had to knock out a few homunculus on the way. I'm pretty sure I tripped all manner of alarms. Also, I may have nailed your lancer with a stink bomb a few minutes before I ran into you, so he's gonna be. There you are, fiend. As if to punctuate that very statement, a hail of stakes descended from on high and skewered the doppelganger from head to toe. The act was so sharp and sudden that Frankenstein found herself jerking backwards out of shock. But rather than bleed, the doppelganger merely boomed out a laugh. Though his body now resembled little more than a human pincushion, the clone still retained the wherewithal to face the battlements and snap off a smart, one-fingered salute towards his would-be killer. Nice try, Lancer better luck next time see you later, Fran. 
the clone flashed her a thumbs up and vanished in a plume of smoke, leaving the gleaming horde of memories that had accumulated to return to the original. Jean Dark had bore witness to many strange phenomena in her day. Saint of Orleans though she may well be, she was no stranger to war and its trappings indeed, one might call her a veteran of such an affair. She'd long since learned to harden her heart both in and out of combat to accept wounding others as a necessary if painful level of battle. Sometimes conflict could not be avoided there were times when words failed and swords had to be drawn. As the impartial mediator between the two factions and the representative for the Great Holy Grail War, she knew she'd have to defend herself sooner or later, likely from other servants, some of whom might even assault her outright. Finding herself under attack straight out the gate let alone by Lancer of Red wasn't something Jean had predicted per se. But it was well within the range of her calculations. Yet would follow it that was new. Dynamic entry. Like a thunderclap from on high, a bolt of crimson tore through the clouds, momentarily giving light to the night. It was with a terrible foreboding that Ruler turned her gaze skyward, just in time to see someone or something grok it out of the sky and deliver a blazing dropkick to Lancer's unprepared gut. Caught unawares, the servant scarcely had time to grunt before his attacker's momentum caught up with them. A deafening explosion followed hot on the heels of the new arrival's landing the sheer scope of which forced her to leap back just to escape the blast zone alone. Ruler wondered if she'd finally lost her mind. Yes, she reasoned surely she must have. Nothing else made sense. For someone even a servant to simply fall out of the sky itself and crash headlong into her opponent was so absurd as to border on madness. She knew for a fact that she didn't possess the X-rank luck the likelihood of a warrior commencing an orbital drop on someone was so ludicrous as to be non-existent. He'd appeared so suddenly that she nearly checked her command seals out of habit just to make certain she hadn't utilized one by mistake and yes, they were still there. Although she retained the ability to summon a servant of either faction to her side using such a seal, she certainly hadn't. So, where, or more aptly, who, had just come to her rescue? And he sticks the landing a boisterous voice split the night, booming with a poignant cackle. Thank you, thank you, baby, thank I over much I'll be here all week, folks. Despite her gentle nature, Ruler could feel the sweat drop upon the back of her head. Huh. Now, that was a dynamic entry the newcomer declared emphatically, still unseen. Guy would have been proud. As Jean looked on in quiet consternation, a cloaked silhouette rose from the fog and smoke, gradually giving way to a brightly clad figure. A broad back emerged, bearing a crimson cloak and hefty scroll over its shoulders. Belatedly she realized the newcomer was facing in the opposite direction. Her disbelief intensified once she realized he'd actually had the gall to strike up a pose of all things. One fist jutted skyward, a lone thumb fed upward in approval as if he were awaiting a photograph. Blue eyes emerged, framed by whiskered cheeks and wild blonde hair, a crazed smile that had seen all the evils of the world and returned unscathed. Oh, I see, no. That explained it. She'd been saved by a hopeless idiot. Because this was most emphatically a servant. Still the question remained was this one friend or foe? Wait, this was no time for such unbecoming thoughts shaking herself mightily, ruler seized her flag, mustered up the faltering scraps of her sanity and straightened her back. Untimely though the rescue might have been, she had no way of knowing if this individual would attack her on sight as Lancer had. At a glance he didn't appear to possess a weapon of any kind, but then again, the lack of an armament could hardly be cause for relief. He could be this war saber for all she knew. Speaking of classes, she found it strange that she couldn't identify him. Whomever he was, mana leaked from him like a broken sieve. No, that wasn't quite it. It wasn't that he leaked prana, but rather, he couldn't seem to contain it. The mere act of breathing radiated energy as though he were only just keeping himself in check. For all his laughter, she suspected the smile was little more than active facade put on to deter others. Her unique position in this war and the information she'd been afforded from the Grail were suddenly of no service to her. Rather than recognizing the newcomer, she experienced a strange sense of unease. Doubly on guard then. Clearly the servants of this war weren't afraid to attack her outright. Alas, her curiosity won the day in the end. Um, excuse me, but who are? V-Whip. The stranger moved with such speed that Jean could have sworn he teleported. There one moment and gone the next, she didn't notice him until he appeared before her. Strong hands clasped around her own and held fast, drawing a soft squeak of surprise from the Maiden of Orleans. Not just the inhuman strength behind his grasp, but at the blazing blue eyes suddenly inches from her own. A fleeting heartbeat passed between the two blondes, broken only by the distant sound of rubble tumbling out of the crater that the latter had created. Red or black, to beg your pardon. Jean blinked, a tad alarmed. His expression hardened. Red, or, black, and neither she sputtered out before he could attack. A glimmer of understanding dawned in that her stopping gaze. Oh, is that so in that case? I'm Yuzumaki Naruto, berserker of red, at your service and you are. Oh heavens, where were her manners? I am the judge of the Grail War, Jean Dark. She hedged, sketching a faint nod. I thank thee for your assistance, berserker. The blonde blinked, and the tension drained out of him. Oh so your ruler, then few sorry about that back there at her petulant expression, he clapped his hands together in affirmation and awkwardly scratched the back of his head. You have no idea what a relief it is to hear that. Seriously, would have been awkward if I saved someone from the black faction. 
In any case, you should probably step back because that bastard's probably going to get right back up any second now, and when he does he'll be pissed to all hello HJ easy. A roaring burst of napalm barreled into the blonde's back and catapulted him forward into the mud. That was a powerful shot. The low voice growled as the blonde kicked himself upright. You actually knocked me out for a second, there. It won't happen again. Er, blondie mind telling me who he is, then. For a moment, Jean nearly decided to hold her tongue. In the end, she thought better of it. Mad or not, Berserker had come to her rescue, and he'd proven himself a pleasant enough sort. She wouldn't fight for him against Lancifer that would violate her duties as mediator, but she wasn't opposed to obliging him that much at the very least. That, she began, turning her gaze towards the pale warrior climbing over the lip of the crater, would be Lancer of Red. The hero god Karna, son of the sun god Surya. Hey, as she looked on, the blonde's exuberant expression turned ashen. Wait, that's Karna the actual Karna his face soured, as though he'd taken a bite out of something incredibly foul. Well bugger me, I wasn't expecting to fight another deity right off the bat Kaguya was bad enough you're telling me I drop kicked him. You did. I, I don't suppose you'd be willing to help me. Despite her best efforts, the ghost of a smile plucked at Jean's lips. I will not, she declared. It is my duty to remain neutral in this war, not to bind you. The cry burst out of her despite her best best attempts to stifle it. A harsh clang caught the whiskered warrior's attention and his arm snapped up a heartbeat later to ward off what would have been a mortal blow. Wincing at his charred sleeve, those wild eyes shot northward. Oi, oi, oi easy there, hothead don't suppose we could talk about this. Rather than attack, Karna regarded him inquisitively. Do you mean to face me unarmed? Naruto's grin darkened. Unfortunately, I'm in a bit of a reduced state thanks to the circumstances of my summoning. To ch. The blonde shrugged eloquently, shaking himself like a wet dog. Damn shame, too. I would have loved to tussle with you at my peak. Our battle would have been one for the ages. But for now I don't have time to deal with you, so I'm gonna have to send you flying. Oh, Karna divined, tilting his head. You say that as if you possess enough power to hurt me. Something like that. I may not be the same class as you, but I've beaten a god before. The low resonating laugh that followed chilled ruler to her bones and beyond. Inhaling calmly, Berserker closed his eyes and began to draw power. Right then, gotta pull as much sage chakra as I can and... The world screamed at him. Kill you. As though a frozen hand forged from the very ice of hell had pierced his and gripped his heart, so too did Naruto feel himself freeze. The sudden rush of power he'd gathered slipped through his fingers like an unruly eel, leaving him on his knees and gasping for breath. In its place the furious voice of the world shrieked at him, clawing his thoughts to peace his own that required all his willpower just to silence. Severing his tether with nature, he wiped a thick bead of sweat from his brow. Well, shit. Wonder what changed a JCK. With a yelp, he ducked under Karna's lance and kicked up with his heel. Lancer's weapon descended in kind, roaring down on him with a low roar of flames. Steel met flesh and neither yielded rather, she realized. Berserker had somehow managed to catch Karna's golden weapon before it could tear him limb from limb. Impossible as it might seem, he stood his ground. Even now the taller of the two remained rooted, gripping that gleaming of polished metal with a determined grimace. Ruler observed the struggle with a mildly concerned gaze, unyielding as the two warriors grappled with one another, neither gaining the advantage, though the two titans struggled. Are you a servant of black? Then Karna inquired, bearing down on the blonde berserker. In which case, you two must be after Ruler. Sorry to disappoint you, Naruto grunted. But I'm berserker of red, not black. A fur of confusion gleamed in Lancer's steely gaze, quickly stifled. I see. Might I ask your name then, Berserker of Red? Crimson eyes blazed up at him teeming with rage. Yuzumaki Naruto now, grit your teeth. Grit my. Using Lancer's weapon as leverage, Naruto reeled him in like a hooked fish. R.A.S.E. and G.A.N. To Lancer's credit, he beheld the spiraling sphere and narrowly evaded it by wrenching his body to the side at the last. Berserker's arm shot past, the outstretched fingers clenching into a fist around the sphere. Not a heartbeat later found the limb severed neatly at the elbow until quite suddenly, it didn't. Lancer's great weapon phased through an empty afterimage and immediately found itself in trap a second time. A harsh squeeze stifled the snarling orb and arced upward, the limb bending at an impossible angle. Of course, Jean realized. It only stood to reason Berserker would have another ace up his sleeve. She simply hadn't expected it to be so simple. Oare oare oare. Clenched knuckles thundered into Karna's unsuspecting visage from all angles as Jean looked on a pounding percussion akin to the drums of a great hunt out for. Once, twice, thrice, three successive blows hammered upright into the startled servant's visage before he had the chance to recover, the fourth taking him hard on the chin and wrenching the pale warrior upright. Momentarily stunned by the strike, the deity nevertheless maintained his ironclad hold upon his weapon for all the good it did him only to find himself hauled in yet again. Perhaps, had he simply let go, he might have escaped what followed. Alas, he did not. Instead he chose to stand his ground. To her dismay, comprehension dawned in those pale eyes. I see. So that's one of your noble phantasm. Is it peerless physical speed and endurance very well then I shall retaliate in kind Brahmastra Kunda. See, that's the great thing about being a berserker Naruto's voice interjected as flames split the heavens. Grinning, he had his arm back, eyes blazing red. 
We don't fight fair, but more importantly, Crimson Light enshrouded his outstretched arm, sheathing it in a strange scarlet tether not unlike that of some great bestial claw. No, more than that. A lariat, she realized, the word springing to her mind unbidden. Whatever it was, it leaped forward and crunched against Karna's half-prepared attack, barreling through it with ease. Thar Ruby arm crunched against Karna's face, bodily catapulting him into the sky. Wichit, rather than waste any more of his strength in a pointless struggle for control of the lance, Berserker forsook defense Alto Xerthes of course freed his dominant hand and flung himself onto the offensive. With a roar the whiskered warrior snapped both arms back, wrapping them in that telltale crimson aura once more. Then he unleashed a torrent of blows upon his unprepared foe hammering a series of rousing roundhouses into Lancer's side, solar plexus, lungs, throat, every open space he could find that wasn't protected by armor, and some that were. Still Lancer didn't fall. In time the warrior of sun regained his lost ground and struck back. As the sun rose, his spear became little more than a fur of golden radiance, striking at impossible angles, seeming to bend and twist to lunge at Berserker's head. A strike to the arm, followed by an overhead smash, a lunging thrust piercing Naruto's side, all went unanswered. No, Jean realized. It wasn't that Berserker didn't retaliate, but rather, he couldn't. Though his blows shook the earth and his toxic aura lashed out with just as much ferocity, he continued to fall back, as if something were physically limiting, preventing him from utilizing his full might. What his true noble phantasm sealed somehow. As such, it came as something of a surprise when the blonde blurred and alighted on a ruined portion of the highway. A harsh stomp upturned still more of the ravaged road, upturning it to create a temporary pillar. Do you flee? Berserker Lancer challenged. Pretty much the blonde shrugged back from his impromptu perch, look, I can't fight you properly as I am now something I'm sure you've noticed. But I'm not all that keen on leaving you to attack ruler either. Mind if we put this fight on hold until tomorrow he grinned. I'll have permission by then and I'll gladly give you the fight of your life. To his credit, Karna almost seemed to consider Naruto's proposal. In the end, however, he shook his head. My master's orders are absolute. As ruler looked on, the pale warrior almost seemed to sag. Out of respect, I will not give chase should you flee, but I have been commanded to take ruler's head. Ah, that's a pity. Naruto sighed. Well, then I have only one retort to that effect. A fur of movement danced in Lancer's peripherals. Bite me. Jean started. Again came that short, sharp, explosive burst of speed this time rendering the pillar little more than crumbled asphalt. Had her eyes betrayed her, or did he glow just before he disappeared? Sure it must have been her imagination oh. When it faded she found Berserker had finally reached Lancer. A long hand thrust itself forward and slapped against Karna's exposed. Uncaring of the spear thrust clean through his stomach, Naruto flashed an impish grin up at his foe, laughed even, as that strange symbol blossomed against Lancer's visible skin. Have a nice flight. In a subdued fur of golden light, Lancer vanished, leaving Berserker behind with that gaping souvenir. Not even a lasting one at that to ruler's disbelief, the ragged gash in his back mended effortlessly sucking that strange crimson aura back into Naruto's body from whence it came. Just what kind of body was that? Hey, ah, what did you just do? Ah, heedless of her confusion, the blonde belted out a happy cry, collapsing onto his haunches in a fit of laughter. Let's see how he likes that I had to break another damn kunai just to send him away. Good thing, too. I can't use that trick easily. A small snicker fled from his lips as he covered his mouth with a scorched hand. Ah, I wish I could see the look on his face it'd be one for the scrapbook. Jean felt, rather than saw herself collapse. All the tension had been drained away in an instant, leaving naught but hollow echoes behind. No worries. Naruto reassured her, climbing to his feet. He's halfway across Trifas now. Should take him some time to come back unless his master wants to waste a command seal. In any case, I think we're out of danger for the time being. Oh, I see. She tried to muster some semblance of propriety, only for her knees to buckle spectacularly. Ah, oh, she'd nearly forgotten about her own battle and the exhaustion that came with it. Quick as you please, Berserker flitted back right to her side like a pale shade. Sure enough that piercing gaze found her right calf, where the armor had been scorched clean through. The flames of the sun were nothing to scoff Aethon as she registered them. The pain came roaring back in a red tide, eliciting a wince from the holy maiden. Shit, you banged up your leg pretty badly. Naruto breathed, inspecting her wound. Despite herself, she colored at his concern. It's nothing, really. Nothing my ass, the warrior scoffed. That's a bad burn. Rest assured, this will not impede my goodness. A yelp burst out of her as he made her sit. Wordlessly he tore off his right sleeve. Just hold still, will ya? A moment of awkward silence passed between the two blondes broken only by the sound of fine cloth being wound into place. If Berserker had anything more to say, he did precious little to show it. Even as Jean looked on those crystal blue eyes never wavered from her injury. It was such a stark contrast from the crazed warrior she'd seen before that she didn't know what to make of it. She'd already said she wouldn't help him so why go to such lengths for a mere injury as this she couldn't turn into her astral form to be sure, but the wound would mend if left well enough alone. Madness. Utter madness. Jean shook her head. I do not understand you. Nothing to understand, Missy. She frowned over her shoulder at him. Why are you like this? Hey, why am I like what Naruto posited cheekily? You'll have to make more sense. Now, hold still. You have an old soul, yet a young body. Her frown deepened into a wince as he patiently continued wrapping her wound. 
though she admonished him when he bound the cloth a touch too tight. Not so tight, please. In any case, you claim to be a berserker class, yet your sanity clearly remains. This should not be possible. You're an aberration. You shouldn't be here. So I ask you, why? The young man shrugged. Just lucky, I suppose. I got a second chance to enjoy life. He paused, hands grazing her leg as he inspected his work. I don't really know why and frankly I don't care. There doesn't have to be a reason for everything, you know. Look at you. He laughed, thumbing his nose. You're alive again, same as me. I'd say that's a cause for celebration, right? Perhaps you speak the truth. Yet even so, I have a duty tome. Her words trailed off in surprise as he ate her forehead. A cheeky smile greeted her blank, stunned silence. Then came the blush, creeping up her neck. WWW whatever was that for? Blue eyes twinkled merrily at her. You need to loosen up. With a grunt, he stood. You said you had business with the Red Faction, right care to join us. Jean's world spun in a maelstrom, a ship caught in a storm-tossed sea. It was only with the utmost of efforts that she managed to right herself. Berserker Naruto, she reminded herself wasn't at all off-putting. He simply dragged others into his pace without any care for what they thought of him. If she didn't know better, she might have called it charisma, but she doubted the whiskered warrior was even aware he retained the skill. Lord above, if he'd possessed this kind of willpower now, what he must have been like when he was alive. Oi, zombie. She'd never been more grateful for an interruption in all of her second life. Across the ruined road, a distant plume of dust burst into being on the horizon. Both blondes turned to regard it, one with confusion, the other consternation. Gradually it resolved itself into gleaming shape of a warrior clad in full platith as it couldn't possibly be Karna running at them full sprint, charging even. Judging by Naruto's startled croak, he recognized them. Indeed, Jean found it almost amusing how quickly Berserker's once hale and healthy visage rendered itself a ghastly shade of white as she looked on. If she didn't know better, she'd say the whiskered warrior was. Spirits, she's gonna kill me for leaving her out of this fight. Naruto groaned into his palms. Desperate, he rounded on her. Oi, ruler hide me. Ah, too little, too late. You had a fight and didn't tell me. Look, there's a reason I ran off, Saberak. Mortar landed with sound and fury, her descent all but splintering the ground underfoot. In a blink she had Berserker dead to rights as much as gravity, seizing by the scruff of the neck as she began to jostle him wildly to and fro. As he'd said, and much to Jean's surprise, that terrifying helm folded back to reveal not the face of a man, but a woman instead. Said woman looked all of an instant from tearing Naruto's reason and his head from his shoulders, justified or not. Willie Ostapit he cried I'm getting dizzy. She shook him furiously instead. Why'd you run off? It didn't mean to Naruto groaned, laughed out between shakes. Mercy, him lord. TCH that makes me want to shake you even harder, zombie. Looking back on this, Jean couldn't help but wonder. What on earth had she gotten herself into? It would prove to be a long morning. Semiramis awoke. That was somewhat concerning, given she didn't remember dozing off to begin with. As a high-class servant, sleep was a mere triviality for one such as her. A comfort perhaps, but unnecessary. Yet she'd still fallen into slumber all the same. Why her last coherent memory consisted of preparing her hanging gardens then nothing. Long lashes fluttered open and shut in a vain attempt to blink the cobwebs away, only to squint against pale light from some unknown source. Her first inkling that something had gone terribly, horribly wrong came in the form of an alarming stiffness in her limbs. Irked by what she viewed as foolishness on her part, she attempted to rise. Only then did she become aware of the gag thrust into her mouth. What madness is this? With a snarl assassin bolted upright, rather, she would have, were it not for the razor wires that bound her limbs. An alarming gap in her memory caused her to ponder when night had turned to day and back again, but it provided little solace, her mind found itself swaddled in cotton. Instead she found her world flung askew, strands of ebony wafting across her vision as she hung like a strung-up turkey. Someone or something had gone to great pangs to hang her such, to leave her deity from the rafters by her feet, trussed up like a madwoman. Groggy golden eyes flitted wildly about her surroundings, seeking escape, but found only four slate walls to greet her. No, not quite, she realized. Tethered by brass tacks to those ugly edifices, a series of thick candles provided a faint form of illumination to view her captivity, what she saw there only served to heighten her confusion. Framed in their furring light, assassin grit her teeth. Beyond the candles those walls were indeed bare as she'd initially surmised, but the room was not. Consisting of little more than a small room its layout was devoid of most amenities of an exit bar a single sleeping roll and a wooden table. Strewn atop its plain surface in careless disarray the curious glint of plastic caught her eye. At first she didn't rightly understand what she was looking at. The various foodstuffs sprawled across said table resembled little more than common junk food, instant ramen, bags of chips and the like. Craning her neck, the blackette hissed softly as the wires bit into her sides, drawing beneath her dress. It seemed her captors didn't care what she thought of them. Needless to say, she was not amused. Please excuse the mess. A rough voice chimed. Didn't have time to tidy the place up. She was even less enthused by the sudden wind that swarmed the room, setting her wounds stinging. In a heartbeat the candles found themselves snuffed out and shadows swallowed the world, sending Semiramis plunging into the black. When it finally returned she found herself face to face with pair of blazing blue orbs framed by a mangled mop of blonde hair. 
With a flourish, the owner of that visage tore the gag free from her mouth. Whiskered cheeks dimpled in a small, sly smile. Mere inches from her own, that cheery visage dangled there, awaiting her response. A muscle jumped in her jaw, pulsing wildly as that jester's grin gazed back at her. As she looked on a lazy hand rose, feigning a salute. Yo, did you sleep well, O oh deadly queen of Assyria? Indeed, she recognized her captor immediately, though she'd only glimpsed him once from afar. Berserker of Red. His tattered crimson cloak seemed to shimmer in the ghastly light as gazed up at her, the otherworldly pulsing and thrumming as though it had a life of its own. There was a wild light to those eyes of his, a strange frenetic energy that set her nerves on edge. Pearly white teeth flashed in the gloom, exposing sharpened canine teeth. It is said that two warriors or killers can recognize one another at a glance if they have nothing to hide, In that instant Semiramis read the entirety history of his being. They tore it. Berserker, some fell instinct bid Semiramis to rear back and bash her head against his with all her might. Thus, she did. The result was satisfactory, all things considered. Given her close proximity she had a prime view of the blonde startled expression mere moments before her forehead crunched into his nose, rendering the orifice a fresh gout of in the air. An annoyed grunt greeted her ears even as her prison dug a fresh latticework of wide lines against her pale skin, but in her fit of pique she paid her injuries no mind. Satisfaction spurred a spiteful smile to her lips. Heavens me that looks painful. I'd expected better from someone known as Berserker. Recoiling in pain, the warrior clutched at his face and hissed softly. Oh, oh, oh what the hell was that for, assassin? I should be asking you the same thing. A low rumble answered her. What's so funny? Everything. I suppose rather than whimper and curse her vitriol, the cloaked servant rewarded her with a laugh muffled against his palms. Honestly, I never get tired of this trick. As she looked on his shoulders shook with silent mirth as he straightened before her, no longer doubling over in pain. I'll grant you this, I probably deserve the headbutt in the grand schemes of things, even if it was kinda pointless in the end. But if it's any consolation, dear assassin. With a flourish, the young man took a wide hand from his face, exposing hale and hearty skin in place of his onserine nose. That hurt like hell. Too late, she realized her mistake. Instantaneous regeneration in such a short time how did he? In a mottled blur of golden crimson he was upon her, seizing her by the face, forcing her to meet his gaze. Cold eyes the color of dried regarded her between the slits of his fingers. In that moment she was suddenly all too aware of the strength behind those clenched digits. Lana thrummed in the air between them, poison violet vying against tainted crimson. Still the pain intensified, biting down against her flesh with painful clarity, like an iron trap slowly grinding shut across her fine features. For a terrifying instant she feared Berserker would simply increase the pressure and render her face a pulpy mess before she could skewer him with her chains. By some twist of fate, he abstained and released her of his own accord. Hey, don't make that face those devilish eyes seem to shimmer in the low light, boring into her very soul. I didn't bring you here to kill you. Besides, I wouldn't be much of a Berserker if I let something like this keep me down. Now, I'm going to have to ask you to refrain from doing that again, so don't bother using your magic. He amended sternly. One more stunt like that without my say-so and those wires will cut you to pieces. Of course, a hint of that eerie amusement from earlier slipped back into his smile as he plucked at a nearby wire. I could just let you down if you promised to behave. Not as though you could teleport out of here without my say-so anyway. Although despite the pain snarling its way down her spine, Semiramis felt a smile touch her lips. You are aware I could kill you without raising a finger, no. You'll find I'm quite resistant to poison these days. His smile didn't waver in the least as she leered at him. I invite you to try. Why, aren't you bold? Berserker didn't respond. Instead he snapped his fingers. With a sibilant hiss the wires retracted from Assassin's body all at once, that deadly razor wire snapping like fine spider silk. A heartbeat of confusion slowed her thoughts, but only just. Bereft of her bonds, the blackhead briefly stumbled before catching herself upon one bent knee. A small smile tugged at her full lips but again Berserker didn't react to her suspiciously awkward landing, nor did he move to assist her. Even had he engaged in such foolish chivalry so he would have proven too slow. In the time it took for him to realize her intentions she'd already encircled him in chains and struck out at him, thrusting a spiked palm into the young man's stoic facade. You're full of openings. It was a clean stab through and through, one Semiramis was rather proud of. By rights she'd given him no time to move, much less react. By all rights, it ought to have been a fatal one. Her attack had pierced his eye and struck the sensitive gray matter lurking behind it. With his arms and legs bound, he had no way of retaliating. Surely she must have inflicted critical damage, such that it would leave him writhing on the ground at her feet shortly. Foolish boy, thinking he stood a chance against one such as her. F. Thus it came as a something of a surprise when the blonde raised two fingers and poked her in the forehead. Startled by the force behind the seemingly benign gesture Semiramis found herself unprepared for the aftershock that followed. What should have been a simple prod against her skull instead slammed her back against the nearest wall, cratering the thick mortar with sound and aplomb. Breath burst from her lungs and once more she found herself slumped forward against her will, struggling for air that wouldn't come. Through ringing ears a distant peal of laughter reached her. Hey, I actually felt that when he croaked. Almost against her will, Semiramis dared to look up. Looking back, the queen of Assyria sorely wished she hadn't done so. 
Berserker gazed back at her, uncaring of the gaping hole she'd ripped in his head. A lopsided grin stretched across his ruined face as he rolled his shoulders, shattering the metal links binding his torso into harmless shards of fractured mana, seemingly ignorant of the visceral tear penetrating his right eye and the skull beyond. What little ran from the wound soon found itself staunched, as though someone had simply closed a pump somewhere in his body, ceasing the flow altogether. Well, she swallowed thickly. That's not fair at all. Rather than shrink, that dirge of a grin only grew ever wider. Pardon the pun, but I don't give on oh, that line's been done to death, hasn't it you can't kill what you don't understand. The words emerged him as a soft hum and as she looked on, that same blue orb wound its way back into existence with a hiss of steam alongside the rest of his head. Saber learned that lesson the hard way. Now, I've given you two free hits, so are you quite done? This wasn't working. No, one might even call it a disaster. She needed to escape this prison, to flee. But in order to withdraw safely she'd require time, time to contact Shiru, time to find an opening in this ugly cage her enemy had crafted, time she simply didn't and wouldn't have if she tried to attack Berserker again. Very well, then. If playing his game would avail her of the resources she needed to entertain this fool of a jester. For now, just do you want from me? See we can be civil the young man Shiru happily, flashing a Cheshire grin as he pulled a chair out of the shadows for her. As for what I want, well, that's simple. My apologies for the accommodations, but I wanted to meet you under a more controlled setting. One that didn't involve your master looking over my shoulder eyeing my every move. A silent shudder shook his shoulders. Seriously, right creepy bastard there. What do you see in him? Assassin's first instinct was to lash out at Berserker for the slight, to offer a waspish retort. After a moment's consideration she reluctantly chose to hold withhold her barbed reply and claim her seat opposite him. No, anger would not serve her here, it would only hasten her death knell. In close combat Berserker eclipsed anything she could throw at him. Speed, strength, durability, he clearly exceeded her in all these and more. Oh, she remained confident she could kill him given proper time and preparation, but not in these confined quarters. He would well landing a mortal blow before she finished him. There would be a reckoning for this, so she swore. Once she finished her hanging gardens this upstart would be in for a rude awakening indeed, but until that moment came. Tact yet remained her greatest weapon here in this cage, one that must used with care. Perhaps in doing so she'd somehow learn enough to use against her captor. If that meant playing to his ego, then it was a role she knew well. HMMPH. Fool. She'd have him wrapped around her finger. Stifling a sly smirk, she leaned back in her chair. Is there some bad between you? Bad no, not at all. Berserker supplied with an frigid smile, momentarily startling her with this sudden change in intensity. Quite the contrary. I've never met Shiro Katamine until I saw him in that church. Not once. He simply reminds me of someone I'd rather forget. Yes, someone who caused a great deal of trouble for my world and those I loved. A mad look danced in her peripherals as he ground a clawed fist into an open palm. Someone I have to grind into dust. An anomaly I need to eradicate. Forgive me for being blunt, but I will kill your master if he's anything like that man. I feel inclined to tell you that now before we continue our discussion. A beat of awkward silence passed between the two servants. I see. She replied bluntly. You're insane. Insane me no, no, no I prefer the term enlightened. You learn a few things when you've lived as long as I have. Just like that, this brief spark of anger was extinguished by the blonde's enigmatic smile. Now then laughing, he brought his hands together in a sharp that caused her sensitive ears to vibrate painfully. On to business, see, I thought it was high time we had a chat. You and Ryder were the only other servants of Red that I hadn't met, so I thought it best to start with you. I suspect the latter's going to wander in through my door eventually. So, where were we? Pulling up a battered chair of his own from Spirit's new wear, her fellow servant flopped down and leaned across the back. A beat of silence passed between the two killers, broken only by the sound of their own own breathing. The inquiry, when it came, nearly floored Semiramis outright. Your master sent Lancer after Ruler last night. Why? Deny it. He grasps at straws. He can't prove anything. He seeks to drive a wedge between the two of you. Semiramis nearly rebuffed him out of habit, but something in those ice-blue eyes told her such a response would be received poorly. Nothing in his posture suggested Naruto was prepared to attack should she disavow any knowledge of her master's action but still that glacial gaze pierced her and stilled her tongue. It was true that on some level she knew Shiru had sent Karna to take Ruler's head, just as she knew said attempt had been thwarted by someone. She hadn't given the matter much thought. Until now. Ah, uh, of course. It made sense. Berserker must have intervened. His bravery would have been admirable if it weren't so misguided. In war, fools fell first. Her expression must have been telling however, for his own remained set in stone. Likely to remove her from the war. The words escaped her before she could think to drag them back. Why does this concern you? Hem. So the shitty priest has something against her after all. Thought as much. Doesn't matter now, just wanted to confirm it. That shit stops now. With that, the whiskered warrior sighed and palmed his face. After all, if we're going to play, I can't have you stabbing a potential ally in the back. Speaking of stabbing, we'll be assaulting the black faction later tonight. He informed her primly, laying his chin cross folded arms. Since we're technically on the same team, I thought it best to tell you. 
coordination, and all that. A delicate brow rose. We, yes, we. His expression didn't waver. I've made a few friends. Exacerbating this less than subtle threat, the young man shifted his dominant arm into the light thereby revealing his hand. Her gaze flitted there into her dismay, beheld the marked symbols etched into his flesh. A series of seals that had no business existing upon the hand of anyone who wasn't a master in the war. Yet there they stood, almost daring her to defy them for what they were. She felt the power emanating from that mark and knew it to be true. An ember of uncertainty kindled itself in her heart and try as she might she couldn't grind it out. Did those seals belong to a servant of the Red Faction? No, surely not. She would have known, would have noticed. The Black Faction, then. But who went more aptly, how? Regardless of whom he'd stolen, this changed things. Not only did Berserker have an ace up his sleeve but it rendered made any sort of betrayal on her part absolutely moot. A single seal would be more than sufficient to bring this erstwhile ally to his side. Even if they proved uncooperative he possessed another seal to compel their obedience. Depending on whom he'd rested away he now posed a significant threat. But who her mind flitted like a wild dove, beating its wings in vain as that stoic mask gazed back at her. Caster Saber Assassin. She had no way of knowing. Worse, with his master squirreled away out of sight, they had no way of tapping this potential resource without bringing him into the fold, something he'd gone to great lengths to resist. The other masters would be brought to heel eventually of course, yet if this continued, they risked a third faction rising within their own ranks. They had no way of knowing how the Grail might react to that would yet another set of servants be summoned. The thought almost made her shiver. Clever. She mused, laying her chin upon a curled fist. So to send among both parties and reap the rewards. Not the way I would have done it, but still. Perhaps there is some merit in dealing with him after all. Her opinion of him inched higher. Slightly. You've taken control of a servant for yourself. It was not a question on her part, but rather a statement. Fascinating. I hadn't thought it was possible for one such as you. Blue eyes narrowed to azure slits. Uo, caught onto that quick, didn't you you're a scary one. The whiskered warrior whistled aloud. Sharp, too. Maybe I should just kill you now and save myself the hassle na? Who am I kidding? A hand rose, palming the unruly mane that served as his hair. I just don't have that kind of mean streak in me. Even in this incarnation. Still, every fiber of her being twitched at the perceived slight. Don't say it. Grinning, Berserker walked right into that minefield. Frankly I'm amazed I got the drop on you. He remarked coyly as she began to squirm in her seat, savoring every moment of her discomfort. Let's face it, I am the least stealthy servant out there. Yet here we are. So before you find a way to maim, murder, or otherwise mangle me beyond repair, I'm going to make you an offer. However the blonde interjected over himself, thrusting an imperious digit into her face, before I do, I'd appreciate some manner of civility. Really we're not savages, you and I if anything I think we can understand one another. Don't you? Really, she couldn't be blamed for what followed. No, not in the least. She bit down. Hard. Rather than yelp or recoil in pain of the sudden injury, Berserker of Red merely sighed. Eyeing the faint drop of rising from the no-swollen digit, he favored her with a decidedly lazy look. Really he deadpanned. We've fallen to biting me now. Take back your words this instant or so help me. I had a son, once. Did you know that rather than acquiesce to her demands the blonde surprised her by launching into a tangent of his own? His name was Baruto. Smart kid, if a bit stubborn. Don't get me wrong, I had nothing but love and respect for him, but he could also be a spoiled little shit at times. PFFT a scarred arm rose in dramatic flourish as he belabored his point. You should have seen him proud, arrogant, willing to do whatever it took to win. Nothing like me at all it took him a while, but eventually he learned his lesson, took a few knocks, and came around. Sure, I outlived him and those who came after him, but it was nice reminder of things. Semiramis bit her lip, stifling a retort. Is there a point to this ceaseless babble of yours she hissed. It was exactly the wrong thing to say and Semiramis realized it far too late. Quick as a flash those wild bestial eyes found hers again, pinning her where she stood. The point that I'm trying to make here, your majesty, is a simple one. People can change in a single sharp motion the warrior burst out of his chair and kicked backwards like an angry mule, rendering the rickety frame little more than driftwood against the nearest wall. We don't have to be enemies I'd like to think that queen act of yours is just that, an act. And if it is, great. We can work together. For a fraction of a second the wild light in his eyes dimmed and she almost thought he would kneel before her. Then he seized her by the hand and all that fire came roaring back with a wide vengeance. But I'm not going to waste my time if you're going to be an absolute about all this and ignore everything I've just said don't you get it I'm asking for your help. Eyes of poison gold flitted southward, regarding the rough palm now clutching hers. In that moment something shifted in her heart. It was a strange thing indeed for someone else to seek her aid once again, unlike Shiru, this request had a different ring to it. To be approached on equal terms proved something of a novel experience for her. From one ruler to another, she knew enough of Berserker's legend warp though it might be by time and remorse to comprehend that much. Truth be told, it was not an unpleasant feeling. For all his insanity Berserker had proven himself profoundly durable, if nothing else. Quirks aside, he might prove a useful meat shield in the battles to come. If manipulated properly, he would be a powerful tool for her own agenda. Perhaps she might even think it was of his own accord. And yet she couldn't bring herself to do it. Try as she might, the words wouldn't come. Unable to meet that earnest gaze over long, she turned her own away. 
Why ask me this? The words tumbled out of her in a rush. Much to the queen's dismay, Naruto didn't release her. Let's be honest here, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. The hero confided in her with a helpless shrug. I'm not the fastest, strongest, or even the most charming figure in this war. I've accepted it and come to terms with it. Red or black, Saber would probably demolish me in a straight-up fight, let alone if they use their noble phantasm. Same could be said for our lancer. But they won't. Why, you ask again those blue eyes glinted a tainted shade of crimson at her, surveying Semiramis with those strange Y slits. Because I possess a very unique set of skills, skills that are a nightmare for people like you and your master. Chief among them turning enemies into allies. It'll be that one that'll see our side through to the end of this war. Our side. Semiramis blinked. Did you seriously just? A harsh bark of laughter greeted her. Sorry, Grail's thrown a lot of data at me. A marked hand rose, idly knocking his skull with a clenched fist. Got a lot of pop culture references rattling around in here. I like to use what I can. That's just a don't you see flinging up his arms toward the wide ceiling. He released her hand and belted out a fresh cackle. We're alive, you and I our time was long ago. But now we're back and the world has changed while we were gone. It's incredible there's so much to see, so much to do rock and roll. Baby don't you want to see what's out there aren't you even a little curious? No, she dare not admit that. He'd become absolutely insufferable if she did. I'm not going to dignify that with a response. Good, because I won't give you one came the lilting reply. Now, that noble phantasm of yours is nearly ready, I trust it's taking quite a bit of time to prepare. When she didn't rise to the bait, the ghost of a smile inched its way across his whiskered visage. I imagine the hanging gardens of Babylon will be quite the sight. Thread coiled its frigid fingers around her throat and strangled all sense. Hard. He knows. How did you learn about? The faint whisper of wind was her only warning. In the next instant she found his head thrust against hers, that crazed smile mere inches from her own. Semiramis, I know a great many things. Warm breath brushed her face, bring with it the promise of madness. Something that distorts reality itself isn't going to escape my notice. That, and your appearance narrowed down your identity considerably. Not many servants like you, not these days. There was again, that vague sensation of conversing with something else entirely. In that moment the facade of the fool finally slipped and she glimpsed the warrior lurking behind that merry mask. The sight of it stilled the waspish retort on her tongue. Who are you really? She whispered. In that moment something shifted in her heart. Let's answer your question with another question. What do you want from this war? You first. Me no one special. Just a man with a dream. I fought with gods not once, not twice, but thrice and lived to tell the tale. Make of that what you will. Brushing past her, he sidled up to that same dust-looking table she'd spied earlier. After a moment's consideration he plucked a package of dried ramen from its surface and pried a pair of chopsticks from the wrapper before discarding the former. Right, he murmured, I didn't install a microwave or a sink, did I this is useless then. Just my luck. Such misfortune knew I should have got some cheese. Nectar of the gods, that what were we talking about again? Shaking his head the blonde turned that harrowing gaze back on her. In any case, what little I don't know has been provided in a broad spectrum by the grail. He continued, Now, just in case you've taken it into your head to play me like a fiddle and cast me aside, I'll give you one last warning. Thunk. With a solid thud those seemingly benign wooden instruments slammed into the wall opposite Semiramis, opening a thin rent across her left cheek as they hurtled past. A thin line of crimson sluiced down her cheek. Momentarily baffled by the sudden display and more than a touch perturbed that she'd failed to notice it in the first place, Blaquette raised a finely manicured hand to her injured face. The harsh crunch to her rear told her all she needed to know. It was only with an effort of supreme willpower that Assassin finally found it within herself to turn her gaze and follow the impromptu missile's projected path. Sure enough, she found them wedged against the thick concrete. And throughout it all, Berserker hadn't budged so much as a single inch. The smile that followed looked almost beatific by comparison and chilled her to the bone. Do not. With. Me. Still, a glimmer of defiance kindled itself anew in her. Her body remained relatively intact despite that display but her pride, ah, her pride that had suffered a mortal wound. But beyond that, deeper than she dared admit, lurked another emotion. How dare he? How dare he? Who was he to ask for her help only to turn about and demand her loyalty like some peasant she was not a fickle wench to be swayed by sentiment the strong ruled. The weak perished to think otherwise was anathema, to yield to another something she'd sworn never to do again. A dark miasma coiled around her shoulders. Yeah, you're not sane. You're mad. Have you no reason? Figure that out yourself, did you Naruto beamed. What gave me away was it the cheese. Enough. He'd pushed her well past the limits of her patience. That light, lilting laugh threatened to take the fraying leash of her self-control and snap it entirely. No, it wasn't that. He held absolutely no fear for her. Though she could skewer him, flood his body with poison to rot his very bones, he still dared to defy her. To mock her, the gall, make a fool of her, would he she'd tear him limb from limb, rip out his heart, and feed it to her dove see if he came back from that. Rising ponderously from her chair, the queen summoned a wicked length of chain. You have precisely three seconds to correct yourself before you choke and die on your own bile. Cool your tits, assassin can't you take a joke it's not like I was actively trying to kill you back there. Oh a small part of her bridled against such a term, bristling at the very insinuation that he could triumph against her. And if I refuse, reality trying my patience here. 
Naruto exhaled softly. On the surface it seemed little more than a sigh. Nothing more, nothing less. A lesser solo not assigned the dual roles of caster and assassin would have failed to notice the sudden surge of prana stemming from his core. They might have missed the abrupt rigidity of his shoulders, the way in which he arched his back just so, turning enough to present a smaller profile while still keeping her within arm's reach. The lack of life in those once vibrant eyes instantly set her on edge. Oi, master. When he finally spoke into the dread silence, it wasn't to her. You there. Assassin blinked. Wait, what are you? SHH, you're not involved in this anymore. Naruto snapped. A muscle jumped in her jaw. I'm feeling pretty damn involved, you ignorant little. Quiet, semi. The adults are talking. Even she sputtered in disbelief at this fresh slight, Berserker forsook her entirely. Rather than turn and acknowledge the threat she presented, the blonde turned his back on her. Twin azure orbs drifted shut as he pressed two fingers against his forehead. I think negotiations just broke down. Permission to cut loose for a second what he paused, risking a brief glance in her direction. Yeah, she's right in front of me. Sure, I'll make it quick. I know, I know, I'll behave. After a beat of silence he must have received an answer in the affirmative, for that black gaze swung back to her anew. Do you know why I was summoned as a berserker class in this war he inquired softly. I suppose it has something to do with complete and utter lack of sanity. Semiramis retorted with acid venom. Close. We all have our own problems, our own issues, our own demons. Mine he has a name. A face. Trust me you don't want to see him. When she refused to rise to the bait, he plowed onward, gesturing elaborately. I'm well aware that my master doesn't possess the reserves to sustain me. Not when we've got a second servant along for the ride, at any rate. So I've taken to finding alternative means of sustenance. No one seems to miss criminals these days. There's not shortage of them in this country. I'm not proud of it, but needs must, I suppose. See, this is what happens when rumors warp your legend. Guess I know how Lancer of Black feels. Is this act meant to frighten me, Berserker, because, I assure you, it doesn't. She sniffed. Rolling his shoulders, the younger warrior shed his coat with a sharp thud. It should, assassin. You're going to be screaming in a second. Have we resorted to threats now how quaint? Fine, you asked for it. Death. In that moment the candles inexplicably darkened. Could light be black she wondered about that. Because in that instant Yuzumaki Naruto, berserker of red, ceased to be. His back hunched as he bent double, a low roar tearing itself out of his throat. Crimson flooded the room, punctuated by the stench of singed skin. Cloth shredded itself to pieces, flesh peeled away to reveal boiling beneath, revealing round orbs of ghastly white sheath and hardened bone. Hands hardened into feral claws sharper than any blade as though the fetters of humanity had been stripped away at long last, revealing the monster beneath. Shadows writhed and twisted upon the walls like a thing alive, six tails threshing with the wails of the damned rising in her ears. The beast saw her then, and it sneered. Food. No. Too late, Semiramis realized her fate. This Mimantha's absolute sociopath meant to eat her. Quick as a flash the beast gathered itself and pounced upon the startled assassin, obliterating the magic barrier she frantically tried to erect between them with the merest effort. Unbreakable claws clenched around her throat and squeezed as the sheer weight of its body drove her to the floor, stifling a second spell before it could leave her lips. Though the floor cratered beneath her, the blackette fought back, to no avail. She clawed at its face with poison nails striking at any opening she could find, desperately gouging at its eyes when that horrifying face loomed large before her. The beast white with fury, she raged against him. Release me at once, do you hear me? And possibly, its slavering maw creaked open and against all logic, it spoke. Eyes, lungs, pancreas, so many snacks, so little time. I am not Agak. Scalding hand seared the exposed flesh of her throat, causing her to cry out and struggle all the more. Shards of shattered prana splintered in every direction, links of broken chains skittering off the creature's impenetrable hide as it pressed down. Had it taken place in her hanging gardens, the battle might well have turned in favor of Semiramis. She could have simply flooded the room with poison, summoned one of her phantasmal beasts, or simply teleported herself away from this raving monstrosity. Not here. Here, cut off from all allies, with no territory and the raw power it possessed she found herself as helpless as a newborn. For all her struggles that gaping maw seemed to loom closer with each passing moment, threatening to engulf her head, to rip her very face from her shoulders. As quickly as it had come, the terror passed. The weight suddenly fled from her all at once, replaced by a cool numbness. Still she struggled against a foe that was simply no longer there. It wasn't until that icy sensation found her throat allowing her to speak againt that she realized her opponent had withdrawn and left her to her wounds. Sure enough, her spotty vision registered his crimson coat on the peripherals of her vision, accompanied by that shock of blonde hair. By the end, his noble phantasm couldn't have lasted more than thirty seconds. No more than half a minute, yet the sight of it had been enough to render her ice in its veins. Berserker indeed. Gasping, clutching at her a chingit now healed windpipe, she dared to rise. For the record, Berserker's rough voice intruded upon her solace, I wasn't really going to eat you. I'm not that bad. Just wanted to make my point. He didn't flinch when Semiramis spat in his direction. Consider it made. She croaked out. With a supreme effort the blackette propped herself up on the points of her elbows and fixed her captor with the most menacing glower she could muster. No, she told herself, she wasn't trembling. Not at all. She refused to show fear. 
To reveal weakness in the face of an adversary would only further destabilize her position. She would stand tall and proud until she finally escaped this place, then and only then would she pause to her wounds. Then she'd repay this indignity tenfold. If he ever set foot on her territory. Of course, the madman wasn't having any of it. Geez, I really banged you up, didn't I? Sorry, that noble phantasm isn't one I can control easily. Here, hold still. When the gentle green glow of healing mana blossomed against her throat again, Assassin nearly slapped his hand away outright. To her dismay, she lacked the strength to do even that in her frazzled state. Instead she once more found herself forced to submit to the whims of her captor as he tended her wounds. For all her struggles he simply ignored her diatribe and continued his work. Within moments she found herself able to breathe without flinching, minutes after that the pain had receded to little more than a dull ache, though the memory remained painfully sharp. No, she wouldn't be letting her guard down again. Better. Fool you should have killed me. When he strayed too close for her liking Semirami saw her opportunity to strike at him in the only way she could, seizing his cheeks she pulled hard, wrenching his whiskered visage with what little strength remained. You won't get a second chance. Next time we meet I'll. Whoops, you've got a bit of there. Are you even listening to me? She fumed as he dabbed at her nose. Much to her chagrin, that damnable smile of his chose that very moment to return. Of course I'm listening. Does that make us allies or enemies? Then his demand left no room for negotiation. Which'll it be? Left with little recourse, the Queen of Assyria took the only road left to her. She laughed. Hi, Akko Hanui. His smile thinned into a barely concealed deadpan. Laughter. I wasn't expecting that. Semirami scarcely heard him as she doubled over to clutch at her stomach. Even had she done so, she would have continued to laugh despite his disbelief. Not a mad cackle of anger or despair as one might expect, but a high-pitched shriek of disbelief to mourn the loss of her sanity. How close she'd come to death just now she'd glimpsed her end in those jaws. No matter how much Berserker might deny it, there had been a moment where she'd felt the cold touch of the Reaper. There would be a reckoning for this. Whether said reckoning ended with heads on a spike or hands intertwined. That was anyone's game, wasn't it? At this point she could no longer bring herself to care. No, she'd come to accept that Berserker of Red simply couldn't be understood. Stop, see, she cried through fits of mad giggling, flinging up her hands, I yield, I yield you at my word. What just like that for the first time since they'd met Semiramis found herself treat to a rare sight, Berserker at a loss for words. Why the sudden change of heart? HMMPH drawing herself up to her full, towering height, the oldest poisoner wiped away a mirthful tear and favored him with a demure look. You'll have to figure that out yourself, dear. Do try not overheat your brain. You won't be of any use to me if your head explodes. That was a backhanded compliment so, truce. Rather than debate the turn of phrase, the blonde reluctantly helped her upright. Semiramis never took her eyes off him, not for a moment. Now that she knew he could become that thing at will, she wasn't going to let him out of her sight. Still, it came as something of a surprise when he actually extended his hand to her in friendship. Spirits, he was actually serious about this. It almost made her feel guilty for what she was about to do. Almost. No, she wouldn't be satisfied with just killing him after this. She wanted to break him and make him hers to see that confidence shatter once she was finally able to bring her true power to bear. If he thought he could change her, he was more than welcome to try. She wouldn't let him sway her, and then, at the final moment, she'd show him utter despair. How sweet it would be. But for now, patience before poison. After a moment's hesitation she seized his hand in hers and shook. Very well. I promise not to kill Yawit. Though I cannot speak for Lancer or Ryder. Suppose that's the best I can get. The blonde demurred with a shrug. Looking forward to working with you. And I you for however long you're of use to me. What Naruto lacked in the art of Warfareth that is to say his complete and utter lack of anything resembling a sound strategy more than made up for with sheer charisma. She witnessed that firsthand. Adversaries became allies, seemingly overnight. And through it all, that smile shone through. But were one to become his enemy perchance if they refused his overtures of peace then they would be eradicated without mercy. This was the mindset of a noble ruler, a man who'd led others to victory and ground his foes underfoot. She understood that, respected it even. Rulers were tyrants, beholden to no one but themselves. That made him dangerous. Just what had led his legend to become so warped. Great now I hate to do this, but I'm gonna have to knock you out again. Naruto informed her primly, narrowly startling her out of her reverie. Need to keep the secret base secret and all, and no can of your master tracking me down and making trouble. I'll be in touch. Semiramis paled to the very roots of her hair. No, 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 she hissed, shrinking back from him. Berserker, don't you dare. SHH, SHH. A finger pressed against her mouth. No tears, only dreams now. Through the haze that enveloped her, Assassin managed one final curse. Then the sweet embrace of slumber drew her into waiting arms. You did what? Sorry, I was just curious. And I'm curious how far my boot will go up your ass. You'll never take me alive. Saber can't kill what it can't catch. Hey, some of us are trying to sleep down here, put a sock in it. When the hell did you sneak off again, zombie I told you that was bad news. Will the two of you shut up already just get a room and bang for Chris' sakes. On that less than pleasant note, Ruler finally opened her eyes and surrendered to the light of day. 
Her body responded sluggishly at first such were the pangs of possessing Letitia's physical form rather than a true spirit one and at first her hands furtively clamped down around her pillow, trying in vain to shut out the argument that had suddenly roared to life with Berserker's early return. Try as she might, the sweet song of slumber eluded her. Truth be told she hadn't realized he'd slipped out again while she slept. Had she truly been that weary or perhaps? C-L-A-R-E-N-T. Do not you'll bring the damn crypt down on our heads. Times like these, Jean almost wished she could dematerialize like the others. A curious crunch of mortar meeting metal finally forced her to give up on that pipe dream. This crypt in question was a touch crampant especially when considered it played host to four servants and two masters but this. Theirs was a strange alliance, one formed by loose kinship and camaraderie rather than any real need for cooperation on their part. Heartening, yet concerning all the same. Should Berserker be removed from the scenario she suspected their little pact would soon fall to ruin. The man certainly had an air about him, if not a way for words. A presence that drew one in, almost like. Incoming. Hunkered down against her bedroll she nearly missed the abrupt implosion of a nearby wall, punctuated by the scarlet-clad form of Berserker tumbling through it onto his back. Dappled with dust and debris he uttered a soft groan, but the moment he laid eyes upon her said morphed into a brimful laugh. Once more she had the strangest impression of a dog just waiting to be petted. Oh, there you are, ruler. Much to her chagrin, the whiskered warrior snapped off a faux salute from where he lay. Sleep well, how's your leg? His words brought a fresh surge of heat to her cheeks for all the wrong reasons. Of course her eyes chose that moment to betray her, those aqua orbs idly drifting towards his lips. The same lips that had laid on her forehead only hours before Gustav bad girl down, Jean, down. I have recovered adequately, thank you. Coughing to hide her blush, she turned her face aside. I take it your excursion wasn't well received by your allies. Something like that. He grinned sheepishly in spite of the nod out rushing to his head. If my master hadn't given the go-ahead, I wouldn't have bothered. Still, it all worked out in the end, anyway. Turns out that damn priest was the one who sent Lancer your way. Those keen eyes didn't miss the stiffening of her shoulders, but neither did they acknowledge it. At any rate, Assassin of Red may or may not be an ally now, though I can't speak for Karna. Doesn't seem to have his head on straight, that one. Speaking of which, you're upside down, you know. This time, Ruler was unable to hide her smile. No, you're laying on your back. The blonde blinked rapidly. Huh, so I am. Arching his shoulders, Naruto snapped to his feet in a single fluid motion and alighted on the bedroll opposite her. Cocking his head aside, he regarded its still slumbering occupant quietly. A marked hand rose and fell, smoothing silver tresses with infinite care, wary not to stir them from their sleep. Unbidden Jean's gaze followed his, only to stiffen when she realized what lurked in the room with them. The softest sigh graced her ears as the bed's occupant shifted, tucking their compact form against that arm, nuzzling his hand to their cheek. Didn't notice her, did you? He rumbled knowingly. That's presence concealment for you. I don't think she even realizes she's doing it. Something else flitted across Naruto's face and for a fleeting moment Jean caught a glimpse of just a glancey off his intentions. She felt like an intruder witnessing an intimate moment between parent and child. Naked. Vulnerable. Yes, there was still the matter of that child. She hadn't even noticed her. No, not a child. Assassin. An amalgamation of countless souls fused together in one physical body, Jack the Ripper wasn't at all who or what she'd expected when she arrived. Even now some small part of her refused to accept it. Tiny and petite with scarcely any clothes to speak of, the assassin of black seemed more a little less than a hardened killer, a lost lamb in the war to come. Wherever Berserker went, she would follow after him like a lost puppy. When he left she would collapse into herself, as if she couldn't bear to exist without him. Now, with her face softened in sleep one could almost mistake her for a normal girl. Not Jean. She glimpsed her true face and the truth that came with it, this girl was both night and day, killer, yet innocent. Should not those souls be released to the Lord's embrace was it not her duty did they not deserve peace was the entity known as Jack a false existence or a true one she suspected any attempt to save the tormented spirits residing within young Jack would be met with open hostility by the rest of the Red Faction. There would always be some contention on that. Moreover, Atlanta that is to say Archer of Red seemed keen on the little wisp of a girl. Protective, even. Nothing so overt as trailing Jack outright mind, but just enough to make that presence felt despite her absence. No doubt she was somewhere nearby, ready to intervene at a moment's notice. There would be more than tension there if she made any moves toward Jack, of that much Jean remained certain. No, she wouldn't lower her guard. Appearances could be deceiving and this was war after all. One could never tell when or where the tides would turn, whether allies would become enemy or adversaries turn to allies. Even a little girl. Still, Jean could not hold her tongue forever. You seem good with children, Berserker. The words felt forced and stilted coming from one such as her, but they pierced the fog between them nonetheless. Did you have children in your past life? Soft laughter like velvet brushed across her ears. More than I could count. For his part Naruto offered a noncommittal hum as the young assassin nuzzled against his arm. Remind me to tell you about Baruto and him aware sometime. At first I really sucked at being a parent. By now I'm an old hand at this sort of thing. You know what they say, once a father, always a father. On that much they agreed. I have questions. She managed, concerning last night. 
about me or the battle he reposted. Both, I suppose. Fair enough. The blonde's head bobbed in agreement, though his eyes never left Assassin's slumbering face. Not too loudly now. At this he finally relented and took his hand from her head before rising slowly from the bed. Wouldn't want to wake her now, would we Oh, To hell with it. She couldn't bring herself to harm that face. No, we wouldn't. With great care, he claimed the empty space beside her and clasped his hands. Where would you like to start? So she did. Where do you hail from? Jean inquired. Don't suppose you'd heard of the elemental nations. I have not. Just like I haven't heard of France, hey the blonde ribbed, elbowing her in the side. That's to be expected, I suppose. After all, it's not every day you get to converse with a saint. Never thought I'd be shooting the breeze with the maiden of Orleans herself. I'm honored. She most certainly did not utter that undignified squeak just now. No, not at all. How did you know who you were? Naruto countered happily, poking her forehead with his free hand. It's not hard to guess. Few qualify for the ruler class to begin. You'd have to be a saint which, surprise, surprise, you are. The flag was a dead giveaway to begin with, you're a dead ringer for her. Seriously, if you're not Jean Dark I'll eat my boot here and now we, we mademoiselle. That that was a horrible accent. Jean palmed her face and groaned as the bed rocked beneath them. I take back everything I said. You're horrible. I regret nothing. Whiskered cheeks dimpled in a small smile. Anything else you want to ask? There was again, that simple, frank boldness that confounded her so. Did it have something to do with his madness enhancement? You're awfully forthcoming for a heroic spirit. Hmm. A clawed finger rose, idly tracing lazy circles on the sheets. Suppose I am. Wonder why that is maybe being summoned as a berserker lowered my inhibitions this time around or perhaps it just came with living a long life guess I've always been chaotic good. In spite of her best efforts Jean almost found herself returning his smile once more. There was a strange, unorthodox charm to Berserker of Red, it was part of the reason she'd accompanied him here despite her initial protests back at the road. For all his strength and sanity or lack thereof genuinely wasn't interested in doing battle with her. Nor did he seem keen on fighting at all, really. His objective remained a mystery to her, one that seemed to grow more appealing the longer she spent in his presence. So, why? Why couldn't she bring herself to focus around him? She certainly would not fight the black faction for this man, for her role must remain neutral in this war. It was her duty to observe and ensure events were conducted fairly. She had no side, but something was wrong with this war. Though she knew not what, she felt it on an instinctual level. Servants stealing servants, banding together, attacking her out of the blue, even the baffling lack of masters whose presence remained far too faint in a fundamental level some key part of this war had gone amiss. If it meant she could meet the mysterious officiator behind the red faction, the very one who'd tried to silence her for reasons she didn't understand. For that at least, she could be patient. Someone, however, could not. Berserker, to ch. Naruto said his tongue. It didn't take long. It looks like Sisigu sold me out. Whatever do you mean by? Before the Maiden of Orleans could pose a question a familiar armored figure stormed through the breach Naruto had made and locked an arm around his neck from behind. To his credit, the whiskered warrior did little more than squawk in surprise when the owner of said limb clamped down on him. With a series of harsh clanks the knight's helmet disassembled itself and crumpled to their shoulders, revealing the livid visage lurking within. Wild turquoise eyes bored down into his with frightful intensity, her lips parted in a half-snarl as she leaned over her prey. So this is where you were hiding damn sneaky bastard Mordred growled, hauling him closer. What do you have to say for yourself? I plead the fifth he ventured weakly, raising his hands in feeble defense. Denied. Uh, as expected of Saber of Red. No one else possessed lungs of such a high caliber. In another life Jean might have pitied the object of her wrath. As it stood she felt little empathy for the bedraggled blonde at the moment. Why, you ask perhaps it had something to do with the shite-aiding grin currently adorning his whiskered visage as he fled. Anyone capable of enduring Karna's onslaught had little to fear when faced with the Knight of Rebellion herself. Whatever he had done to offend her well, he'd long since made his bed, now he would just have to sleep in it. So are there any way I can convince you not to strangle me? What followed did not quite meet ruler's expectations. Food. Both blinds blinked. Wanna run that by me again Naruto croaked. You are taking me out for food the proud warrior repeated, emphatically jabbing a finger against his collarbone with each word. Close. Two I'm sick of waltzing around in my armor and that damn necromancer won't get out of bed so you're it. Her declaration finally reactivated Naruto, causing him to bat her prying hands aside. Ah growling, the whiskered warrior straightened up, fixing her with a disbelieving look. What the hell, Saber you can do that shit yourself why do you need me I need to draw up plans for the attack with Archer. Just go grab some takeout or something. For a terrifying moment she almost thought the two would come to blows. Once more, her expectations found themselves violently usurped. Mordred's lower lip trembled, just so. And then, quite suddenly, it's boring alone. Huh. To her complete and utter disbelief, Saber actually released Berserker and flung herself to the floor in a heap of flailing limbs. At first Ruler feared an attack, but none came. No sooner had she landed than she began to thrash about the room as an unruly child might, rolling to and fro like a broken top. Jean had never seen a knight throw a tantrum before. Indeed, Mordred showed no signs of stopping. This, this was the legendary knight of rebellion. The great betrayer who had torn the round table apart from the inside and aspired to steal that great throne. 
Under any other circumstance, it would have been downright comical. First time for everything, she supposed. Evidently Naruto felt the same because he flung up his hands and gave a great shout of his own. Fine, fine whatever you say, your majesty I'll take you out just stop. Mordred stiffened. It was like flipping a switch, in a heartbeat the unruly servant of Red surged back to her feet and rammed her forehead against that of Naruto's. Any hint of that recalcitrant girl she'd been mere moments before vanished, replaced by a strange, burning curiosity. She didn't attack, didn't speak, didn't move. Jean wasn't even sure she was breathing beneath all that armor. She'd gone deathly still, quiet as the grave, with no hint as to what had brought on this sudden change in behavior. Was that a blush adorning her cheeks? No, surely she must be imagining it. Pressing herself yet closer to Berserker, the warrior murmured softly, Oi, zombie, what was that bit you shouted at me, there? Just stop Naruto tilted his head, baffled. No, idiot before that she snapped. Ah, your majesty a blink. Say it again. Seriously a blonde brow rose in mild consternation. This have something to do with your wish for the grail, or... With that, whatever strange spell had fallen over the night of rebellion ended as abruptly as it had begun, all at once her tan visage blazed an alarming shade of crimson. Sense reasserted itself to the dirge of the night's own. Tattered emotions. Her mouth worked wordlessly as shame and embarrassment waged a war for her body alongside pride. Eventually the latter won out. Crying out, Mordred reared back and smashed her forehead against his in a devastating headbutt, sending her fellow blonde reeling back half a step. Eyes rolling in his head like mad marbles, Berserker staggered away in a daze. What is it with you people and headbutting me he groaned. It's nothing come on, we're going. But I promised Atalanta. TCH, fine bring her. Sure, just let me tell my ma- Aster his reply ended in a pained yelp when his fellow servant planted a palm against his back and shoved, forcing him away ahead of her. Hey stop pulling what's the rush in no time at all she'd viciously frog marked Berserker back through the hole in the wall with all the mercy of a drill sergeant. Struggling against his fellow blonde, the cloaked warrior managed to dig his heels in and get an arm loose enough to sketch an awkward wave in ruler's direction. What about Jean? Mordred absolutely hissed. So you're calling her Jean, now. In hindsight, Naruto really should have kept his mouth shut. Or denied it, at the very least. He wouldn't of course, Jean knew enough about her fellow blonde by now to know he wouldn't pass up an opportunity to tease someone, least of all an ally. Rather, he couldn't. It was simply in his nature. Now, under any other circumstance, he might have escaped with his hide intact. As it stood, this time, he pushed just a little too far. Perhaps that had been his intent all along. Perhaps not. Regardless of the fact, the results that followed were nothing short of spectacular. Oh, oh is someone jealous? Mordrich and it sounds like UGACH. The cause of the blonde's sudden shout soon became apparent with the twang of a bowstring. Oh dear. Archer of Reds Atalanta, ruler ruthlessly reminded Hersel voice hailed from a nearby passageway. Moments later the servant in question appeared, bow in hand. Weapon aside, that stony gaze would have sent a lesser man shrieking for the hills. I appear to have shot you in the knee by mistake, Berserker. Forgive me, I was aiming for your foot. Th that that was on purpose, damn it said Berserker groaned. What is wrong with you or did you even come from I've done nothing? To deserve this ruler didn't see the second arrow, but Naruto certainly felt it if his yelp was any indication. Did it sound a touch forced perhaps? She witnessed his inhuman endurance for herself, surely something like a few arrows wouldn't cause him any real pain. If Atalanta suspected any such thing, she did precious little to show it. A pointless question. Shall we go then? The archer in question hummed. I believe he made each of us a promise. Jean had never heard Mordred or Anion laugh like that before. Now she never wanted to again. He did, didn't he? She crowed. You're not so bad after all, archer. I try. Now then, Berserker, I hope you'd prepared yourself. Ruler Naruto wailed save me. No, I think not. Jean was almost tempted to argue that point and come to his defense, but with Archer's arrival she simply didn't have it in her to belabor this madness any longer. Remarkably, Assassin had slept through the blonde's tirade somehow, her sleep unscathed despite the chaos that both Saber and Berserker had brought with them. Jean almost envied her that. With that she could sleep like the dead suddenly the idea of going back to bed seemed infinitely more appealing than suffering through the rest of this morning insanity. Assassin or no. She'd thought herself prepared for the chaos of this war. Clearly, she'd been wrong. At the last Jean risked one final glance at the no-captive Naruto to make certain as he was dragged, marched towards his inevitable doom. In that moment the whiskered warrior caught her eye, unbeknownst to his captors. Slowly, almost imperceptibly, he winked. Baffled by this sudden display, the saint could only blink. Realization struck a hammer blow not a heartbeat later. That bastard. He was playing the fool after all, solely for the sake of getting Saber and Archer to bond. It seemed so unlikely that neither would give it any thought, rather they would chalk it up to Berserker simply being his usual foolish self. They'd never realize he had deliberately orated these events solely for the sake of drawing them closer to one another. That that was actually a little frightening now that Ruler truly gave the matter thought. It meant Berserker knew more than she gave him credit for. Far more. Yet again she found herself forced to revise her opinion of what seemed like a harmless jester. Anyone foolish enough to face him head-on in the war to come would be in for a rude awakening. In the end, the Maiden of Orleans' response proved decidedly unsaint-like. While I am not nearly awake enough to deal with this shit. Within moments, she'd buried her head in a pillow.
Sleep found her shortly thereafter. Berserkers trying to kill me. Shiro Takasada Amakusa had experienced many emotions in his heyday. Love, joy, sorrow, and oh yes hatred. Surprise was rarely one of them. A note of incredulity mingled with the fading afternoon sunlight, filtered through windows of stained glass to cast an ominous shadow upon his face. The dawn had come and gone. Night would soon be upon them, with all the chaos that it brought. Yet those mocking words continued to echo through the church, folding endlessly in on themselves like a pair of paper dolls until not remained but silence. Already their owner felt the telltale signs of migraine beginning to bloom in the back of his head, manifesting as a dull throbbing sensation amidst his temples. That one again. His lips pursed into a rare frown. Perhaps I should have killed him when I had the chance. Did I stutter assassin's voice cracked like a whip, reminding him of his audience? Right. He didn't have the liberty of dwelling on his own shortcomings. Gods above, where had Shakespeare wandered off to this time? He sorely hoped the fool wasn't wandering about Trifus. At length, Shiru exhaled and rose from his kneeling position below the altar, stifling an impulse to sigh for what felt like the umpteenth time this hour. It felt as though he'd been doing an awful lot of sighing from the moment he'd laid eyes on that one. Under any other circumstances, he would have greeted his servant with a smile. Improper though those feelings might be, he felt he should foster them. His wish hinged on her cooperation after all, now more than ever considering she'd nearly lost her life to that impudent arrogant upstart of a berserker. For a moment, just a moment, his pleasant facade slipped. And that's quite the face you're making, master. As ever, assassin's expression didn't waver no, wait. He lied. There was an ember of annoyance replacing the usual glowering tenderness she wore when addressing him. A fire that threatened to grow into a roaring blaze at the slightest provocation. Oh, dear. Had berserker gotten to her as well-planted doubts in her might this wouldn't do. He might have to address that. He couldn't afford to have Semiramis doubt him now. Her hanging gardens of Babylon were a critical part of the plan. Without them, retrieving the Greater Grail would prove difficult indeed. Composing his face into a pleasant mask, the irritated priest sketched a humble bow. My apologies, Semiramis. I suppose the stress has been getting to me. Sure enough, Assassin's uncertainty dissolved into a satisfied smirk. So long as you understand. Oh, Shiro understood. He simply hadn't expected a servant to actually be out for his, much less one capable of kidnapping Semiramis. Yes, having cast aside such sentiment long ago, he could view the situation rationally. Or another might have felt fear, anger, or even doubt, he merely experienced mild curiosity. Just how was he outmaneuvering him in this war how had sensed the trap laying in wait for him and his master how did he spirit assassin away without him knowing until this very moment how indeed. Lancer had hinted at such a technique upon returning from his duel, but this only solidified Shearer's prior belief. Claiming a seat in the pew beside her, he willed concern he didn't necessarily feel into his voice. He didn't hurt you, did he? Instead of producing the desired effect of soothing her, Amicusa found himself faced with a dark look. He did. His servant relented, biting her a fingernail in exasperation. Then he healed me. I don't understand him. Can you believe he asked for a truce he even knew my identity? Uh, Shear managed eloquently. It wasn't that he disliked Semiramis. He simply doubted Berserker's ability to kill her. He was far too predictable for his own good. Truce or no, Berserker of Red needed to die. If Semiramis was to be believed, he'd already drawn a number of servants to his side. Under his banner, a portion of the Red faction threatened to break away entirely. Had it simply been Saber and Sisigu, he would not have expended such effort. Even Atlanta alone would have been no great loss in the long run, one easily brought back into the fold upon claiming the command spells of her master, though more preparation was yet required for that. The Berserker and Rum had not only broken ranks, the former had gone out of his way to thwart Karna's assassination of ruler. Any further attempts would likely be met with open hostility. Worse, they'd stolen a servant of Black for themselves. That brought their numbers to five. Rider, Assassin, Caster, Lancer. Including himself they numbered six. Still, his side retained the numerical superiority for now. But who knew when that statistic would change? For now, he would continue to play the game. And he prodded. What do you think of him? Samurai's grit her teeth. A fool. She was hiding something. How unfortunate. I see. Are the hanging gardens finished, then? Semiramis averted her gaze. Nearly so. By tomorrow at the latest, I'd expect. Hem. Shiru murmured absently, his mind already elsewhere. We're nearly ready then. Berserker was a man driven by emotion. Impulse. Sentiment. As such it was almost painfully easy to predict his next move and thus, counter him. Shiru, who had forsaken a heart filled with hatred for the sake of humankind's salvation, could understand that much. After all, he too had once been consumed by emotion. Driven by it dominated by it. Feelings could be treacherous. Precisely why he resolved to discard them in the first place. After all, humanity's future was at stake. If everyone could simply abandon their selfishness and saved others, could not such a world be created a realm where everyone was saved and happy? Some might call such a wish naive, flawed even, but he cared not for their thoughts. This was his wish for the grail. He would not be denied. Not this time. For the sake of that dream he would not hesitate. No, he could not. He would destroy any adversary without hesitation. All obstacles must be eliminated. Those whom he could not kill such as Lancer or Assassin would manipulate into doing his bidding. 
the weaker ones he would crush. And as for Berserkery, did he have this niggling suspicion that he knew him, not on a personal level, but his identity, that whiskered face, the crimson coat, the distinctive way he finished his sentences, that unorthodox way of fighting, and that damned charisma. Something said, he's Yuzumaki Naruto. You know him, the blackhead frowned. I'm peripherally aware of his legend. Thumbing his chin, the priest paused and leaned forward to consider her words. He's a hero from long ago, albeit an obscure one. They say he secured lasting peace in his era for more than 300 years. Someone like that doesn't strike me as a berserker. Frankly, I'm surprised he was summoned as such in this war. It must have something to do with his noble phantasm. A haunted look flashed through the poisoner's gaze. Oh, he caught it immediately. You saw it, didn't you? Silent Semiramis absolutely hissed. I will not speak of it. Clearly, he's a threat. He relented. He'll have to be eliminated. Ruler, too. Assassin actually blinked. I gave him my word that he wouldn't be harmed at it. Left unspoken was the silent threat. That's my kill. Take him from me at your own peril. You didn't give him mine. Shearer pointed out. In any case, it doesn't matter. He's no match for Lancer and Ryder. There was again that brief fur of uncertainty in her eyes. Doubt, poisoned by something he didn't understand. Carelessly, he dismissed it as inconsequential, his thoughts drifting once more to the matter at hand. Semiramis was loyal to him. Surely it would take more than a seed of doubt for her to betray his trust. Perhaps had he not been so fixated on his goal he might have lent the matter more thought. But he did not. Shearer could not be faulted for this. There was no malice held in his heart, only pure, unflinching resolve. You intend to kill him, then? Amicusa favored her with a small smile. Naturally. It's the best course of action, after all. Are you sure that was the best course of action? If she was at all displeased by Sisigu's blunt inquiry, Jean Rum did little to show it. On the contrary, the Gale Wheel seemed quietly satisfied with the plans they'd made. Her bespectacled gaze never wavered from the map before them, her left hand idly diving their servant's route even as the right occupied itself with another matter on the opposite side. There was a telltale gleam in her gaze that the old necromancer knew all too well on that boded ill for whomever found themselves on the receiving end of that stoic glare. He almost pitied them. Almost. Still, the matter needed to be addressed. We're exposed here without our servants. Laying a hand upon the weathered hand upon the table, he fixed the brunette with a measuring look. Surely you understand that. And, a muscle jumped in Kyrie's jaw. We can't count on ruler if it comes to a fight. The necromancer pressed, finally drawing a scathing look from his ally as a dainty sneeze answered from a nearby room. She's sworn herself to neutrality, remember when she didn't challenge him, he bowled on ahead in spite of her silence. And you just let three quarters of our forces walk out the door. Who knows when they'll return if the enemy finds us here we won't be able to retreat. I understand your concerns, but would you kindly calm down? With a tempered sigh born of hardened steel the younger Magus finally raised her icy gaze to meet his. Kyrie nearly balked. Spirits, he'd forgotten just how vicious Jean could be when backed into a corner. After all, she was a monster who specialized in combat, one who removed any and all opposition without mercy. To think otherwise was akin to anathema for him. For all her social awkwardness and odd mannerisms, Jean was nearly his equal when it came to Magus combat. She'd likely gut him with one of her checkrams if he continued his present course of action. Allies they might well be, but he didn't want to push her too far. No need to concern yourself. His fellow Magus reassured him. If worst comes to worst we've still got this one. Slender fingers de-assassin's silver mane, sending the girl into fresh paroxysms of delight at her side. MMHM, that feels nice she purred happily. Keep going. Are you sure we can trust her Kyrie muttered. What's not to trust those dark eyes drifted back to the parchment beneath them, the crystal beneath her fingers slowly trailing its way north. She's bound to Berserker, which means she's also bound to me. Killing me would deprive her of him, which in turn ensures her loyalty to our cause. It's elementary, really. You say that, but she's still part of the Black Faction. Doesn't that concern you? The bibliomaniac arched a thick eyebrow at him in mild consternation. Say, Jackson. She hummed aloud, would you betray us? Round, innocent eyes of spun gold rose up to meet hers. Why would we do that? She blinked. We like you. And why do you like us? Jean prodded. Assassin offered another slow blink at that and tilted her head aside to regard them. So small, so innocent, almost like no. Kyrie felt his heart give an unpleasant lurch in his. The sight stirred up unpleasant memories in the bedrock of his mind, a poignant reminder of his own desperate wish for the Holy Grail. You're like Oniachin. She began to count off her gloved fingers slowly, you keep us safe and warm. You feed us when we're hungry. You gave us clothes. We like that. Why would we give that up? The wind wielder offered Sisigu angelic smile. See no problems. Oi, oi, oi. This woman was troublesome. Of that there could be no doubt. No amount of effort on his part would convince her, no honeyed words could ever hope to sway her thoughts. She was driven by pure purpose, a wild single-minded goal in which she would trample all others to reach. Honestly, she terrified him more than any servant. Berserker and Saber would eventually vanish upon the war's conclusion, but Jean Rum would undoubtedly remain. Not only was she cunning, but ruthless to boot. It would take more than the black faction possessed to do her in. Speaking of said faction, the necromancers coughed harshly in a vain attempt to hide his discomfort. You do realize those Igmillennia bastards aren't going to take this lying down. He warned, following the route she'd divined and the boundary upon which it had come to rest. 
Whether Berserker knows it or not, he's essentially invading their territory. They'll take that as a provocation. The wind wielder's smile turned positively feral. Of course, I'm counting on it. You want them to attack. But of course, steeping her fingers in a tent formation, Jean cast the crystal down onto the map. Rather that tumble madly as one might expect it alighted upon a single point and stood rigid. Moments later it began to pulse a ghastly shade of crimson before finally clearing to reveal an image. Gradually said image resolved into a moving scene of sorts. Behind the tinted shades of his sunglasses, the scarred Magus narrowed his gaze. He recognized the name etched into the map, the very same location they'd scried not long ago. Sciasaur given the frequency of its pulsations, one could only assume that was where the trio had wandered off to. Sure enough, he spied a shock of blonde hair amidst the townsfolk. Wait a minute, are they doing what I think they're? Busekar, Saber, Archer, one by one Jean recited their names, her lips moving slowly around the words, that placid gaze never once leaving the crude crystal nor the scene playing out within. Two frontline fighters coupled with a support, walking about in broad daylight. Fresh fruit, ripe for the picking. The enemy won't be able to resist. From what little we know of them, they're likely to send servants of their own to determine our strength. Two at the least, possibly three. This way, you and I will be safely out of harm's way while we assess their weakness, yet still able to give orders of our own. Then when the time comes, we can join the fray and be prepared for the next battle. Brilliant? No. Still doesn't sit right with me. Suck it up, cupcake. Rumpurred. Ouch. He whistled. Forgot about that sharp tongue of yours. Jean set her teeth at him in light warning. Shall I remind you, then? No, no, I'm good. The scarred Magus raised his right hand to ward off pleasant memories. They'd been more than allies, once in their friendship had endured despite that. Truly, he couldn't have found a better partner in this war. Now, if only he could convince her to let him have his wish. I'm sorry am I interrupting. A distant clamor claimed their attention, punctuated by a soft yawn. Moments later Ruler finally made her presence known to them as she glided into the room. Though her hair was still tousled from sleep suggesting she'd simply opted to take a nap rather than endure Naruto's shenanigans any longer the armored blonde still projected an air of quiet stoicism. Those deep violet eyes remained clouded however, their owner deep in thought. Then she spied Jack and a spark of confusion danced through that lilac gaze. The latter retaliated with a cheery wave. Ah, the sleeping beauty stirs at last. Jean hummed. We were beginning to wonder if you'd ever wake up. Morning assassin chirruped happily. Sleep while Kyrie waggled a thick brow at her. Startled out of her reverie, the blonde offered a rapid blink and bobbed her head. Yes, she murmured hastily. Thank you for your hospitality. Jean smirked. We weren't too loud. Oi, now are you trying to provoke her? A slightest twitch passed through Ruler's serene visage, gone before either Magus could claim it had even existed. My rest was sufficient. She relented with a humble bow. I will be taking my leave shortly. Already Jack whined. I wanted to play. Perhaps next time. There it was again, that strange stiffness in Ruler's shoulders. It wasn't anger or sorrow, Kyrie noted. One might hearken it to confusion, as though Ruler couldn't decide how best to speak to Assassin. It seemed a strange hang-up for one elevated to sainthood. In any case, that was none of his concern. It was as if such a conflicted emotion could possibly tear her apart. This was a servant after all. She was built of sterner stuff than most. Oh, Jack sighed, her shoulder drooping in defeat. Putting her discomfort for Assassin aside, one couldn't help but be at ease around Ruler. Even Sisigu found it something of an effort to keep his guard up. Perhaps it had something to do with her being a saint berserker had been much to Jean's chagrin terribly forthcoming about her identity. A legendary maiden of Orleans herself. What had he said about her? Again something about her being too pure for her own good. She'd even gone out of her way to thank them when she could have easily slipped away without a word. Someone like this could no sooner stab them in the back than she could forsake her own beliefs. Moreover, she was bound by the rules of the grail itself to be impartial. So long as that belief wasn't corroded, they had nothing to fear from her. A low grumbled rose in vicious descent. Well, perhaps her appetite. As the unlikely trio looked on a faint flush crept up across Jean's face. Indeed, the slow flushing of her saintly visage was something Sisigu would take to his grave. It almost made him want to bully her more often. Ah, uh, he'd almost forgotten. Ruler possessed a physical body, didn't she berserker had mentioned that in passing. She likely had to eat to sustain her physical form in this world. Poor thing, she'd really drawn a bad hand in this war. Was it wrong that Kyrie felt sorry for her, now? We've got a bit of breakfast left over. He offered. Want some? I couldn't possibly impugn further on your generosity than I already have. Ruler's stomach offered another plaintive whine of disagreement, far louder than the last. I suppose I can stay a moment more. She averted her gaze, face downcast to hide her silent shame. While I'm here, I wish to inquire about something. About Berserker Jean tilted her head. I confess myself curious, did you summon him intentionally? I know about as much as you do. Rum replied with a small shrug. Probably less, given the eyes he's been making at you. He's surprisingly fickle, that one. It's not like I expected to pull him in any case. She waved her marked hand about airily for emphasis. Frankly I would have preferred the caster class. Easier to control and all that. Still, that bespectacled gaze shifted then, regarding the seals imprinted upon the back of her palm with something dangerously akin to nostalgia. He's been good to me thus far. When I give a bad order he'll tell me so straight to my face. 
He even went so far as to save Jack when he had no need to. I won't give him up without a fight, you know. You'll have to work for it. Jean absolutely sputtered. H-way. Relax, I'm kidding. The Magus laughed and lowered her hand. You're cute when you're flustered. Oh, how did Naruto put you up to this, Jean demanded. He might have. The Magus relented, passing her a pail of dried bacon. Nay, nay, assassin piped up suddenly, drawing all eyes to her. If Naruto owned Ichin's papa. Ruler stiffened. Too late. Kairi realized what was about to transpire before them. Assassin, whatever you're about to say, do not. Those innocent orbs swiveled upon Jean Rum. Does that make you our mama, then? Jean went pale as a fresh sheet. Foolishly, Kairi snickered. Ruler squeaked. Doom. Ho. Oh. An aura of palpable malice radiated from the the gale wheel's shoulders, threatening to smother him if he looked her in the eye. A strange, lilting laugh arose from his companion to set him on edge. No, he couldn't bring himself to look. Rather, he mustn't look. To meet Rum's gaze now would be akin to setting off a nuclear warhead. The only thing that awaited him at the end of that road was a swift demise. Moreover, if he moved now he was almost certain Jean would attack him. He had to be still. A silent stone in the river, unyielding, unmoving, utterly unyielding to anything. Sisigu, Jean purred softly, did you laugh at me, just now? In the end, temptation finally won out and he looked up. In my defense, I wasn't expecting thought to RK. Jean's fist barreled upward into his face. Ruler groaned softly to herself. Lord preserve me. Madness. Absolute madness. Try as he might, Darnak couldn't comprehend what he was looking at. Indeed, to understand the enemy's plan one would have to be insane or exceedingly sentimental. As he was neither of these things or could he ever hope to bet head of the Igmillennia clan found himself at something of an impasse. To say he was displeased would be akin to calling water wet, an understatement in the purest sense of the word. With each passing moment his ire grew, sparking towards an inevitable conclusion. This made no sense. He, Darnick Preston Igmillennia had SCD, slashed and struggled to stand where he stood now. Decades of planning had led to this moment. He'd fought in countless battles, stolen the Holy Grail itself and used it as leverage to break away from the association. It was he who had manipulated the terms of this war, he who had bolstered the ranks of his clan in preparation for the coming battle, and he who stood to gain from it all. Now they stood at a critical juncture, on the cusp of acquiring all the mysteries and miracles of this world. Reaching the root, their long-cherished dream was finally within reach. All that remained was for the enemy to make their move and come to them, as they must. Black versus Red Now, thanks in no small part to Castor's skilled scrying he and a number of the Black faction finally beheld their foes for the first time. One of them had tripped a bounded field near the town, thereby enabling Avisprin to utilize one of his familiars to observe the enemy servants from afar. Three of them no less. One was easily recognized as Berserker of Red, the same staggering fool who'd invaded their castle some days ago, accosted their own Berserker and made off with a bottle of wine before turning to smoke under Lancer's assault. The others remained unknown to them, but one could easily surmise them to be Archer and Saber judging by their armaments. A formidable trio indeed. Yet they weren't doing anything. Rather than approach the castle they'd spent the last two hours waltzing through town like utter fool's imbeciles, with no purpose in mind of their masters there remained no sign. Of course, only a fool would willingly throw themselves in harm's way they'd either sent their familiars ahead, concealed themselves with thaumaturgy, or blended among the populace with such skill that any attempt to root them out would prove fruitless. To make matters worse, the grail had become increasingly erratic as of late. It had taken to pulsing at strange intervals, almost akin to that of a human heart. They couldn't figure out the cause. From the moment Berserker had invaded the Greater Grail began to react. Violently. Perhaps it was just that impatient. Hungry for the energy that the slain servants would provide. Whatever the case, it wasn't something they could address now. If the situation worsened perhaps then they might be able to do something but as the situation stood there was simply nothing they could sow. Just what was the enemy plotting? So he lives after all. A low, regal voice cast its shadow over his thoughts. Surprising. Masking his own concern, Darnick feigned a bow. It is as you say, my lord. Lowering his head, he watched his servant rise from the throne to survey the screen. The man's face was a study of contrasts. Though those bright eyes were indeed tight with anger, the faintest of smiles adorned his pale visage. He seemed almost pleased by this unexpected revelation. Indeed, the Magus recognized a kindred spirit in those terrifying orbs' respect for an enemy. Something had caught his interest. No, someone. HMMPH. Lancer rumbled, thumbing his chin. That is our intruder, is it not when no dared challenge him that small, spry smirk tore into a true grin. I suspected as much. I'm surprised a petty thief could survive my attack. Darnick preened. This was the absolute trump card of the black faction, a servant so absurdly overpowered as to be able to scorn the gods themselves. Vlad Teeps III. They'd gone to great lengths to summon him here in his homeland, where he stood at the absolute peak of his power. Romania may be a small country but it was here that Lancer was truly in his prime, his element. Transylvania was his territory, so long as he remained within, one might even think him invincible. That he had a bone to pick with Berserker of Red was simply icing on the cake as far as Darnick was concerned. After all, it wasn't every day that a thieving wretch invaded a lord's castle and lived to tell the tale. Vlad likely wished to kill Berserker as a matter of pride. Honor demanded it. That suited Darnick just fine. 
he'd happily let the two of them tear one another to shreds. Two men, oh, monsters masquerading as men. There was certainly some irony to be had there. In a fit of whimsy he almost six lancer on Red's berserker outright, but thought better of it at the last moment. No, better to keep him close. Command spells were precious and not to be wasted wantonly. Certainly not if he were ever to make Lancer use that. Moreover, it was important that his servant believe himself to be in control for the moment. Nothing was further from the truth of course if Erdarnik saw him as little more than a familiar but the ruse remained regardless. Though the years may have dulled his spirit, his silver tongue still remained sharp. So long as Vlad thought otherwise, his scheme would unfold as planned. Berserker, meanwhile, stiffened in quiet consternation. Berserker of Rhett the Tidiot, what is he thinking? Perhaps it was a side effect of their encounter, but her thoughts had proven to her great distress increasingly coherent as of late. Almost frightfully so. While speech was still denied to Heron, thanks small mercies for that once found herself terribly, accursedly, sane. Enough to rage at him, certainly. And yet she would not. Only her master could sense her discontent, but she refused to divulge the reason to him. Calls might wonder what had riled her up, yet without a voice, she could never tell him. Her thoughts were another matter. She wanted to reach through the screen and throttle that blonde buffoon he'd wandered into their territory without even noticing weight. Maybe he had. Was that why he'd brought reinforcements or was he simply that naive a tangled knot of emotion writhed in her stomach at the thought? Try as she might she couldn't untangle it. Berserker of Red Naruto as the enemy, someone who must be defeated. By right, she shouldn't care what happened to him. And yet she could not. It made no sense she barely knew him. Indeed, she owed him nothing. Less than nothing. He'd given her wilting flowers and a smile. A few kind words in parting an offer of peace, nothing concrete beyond that. He had not asked for her loyalty and while she certainly wasn't about to give it to him, neither could she banish that smiling face from her mind. She should hate him, loathe him he'd done something to her mind, an act that threatened to bring her memories back and all the pain with them. She ought to find him and grind his skull beneath her heel, obliterate him with her blasted tree. And yet she did not. Why, exasperated, she tore at her hair in a fit of pique and shrieked her fury to the ceiling. A-A-A-R-G-H. Agreed, Berserker. He certainly isn't the subtle type. Archer seconded. Fran nearly clobbered his head off in recompense for his temerity. That wasn't what I said and you know it, shitty centaur. Think he's challenging us Ryder tilted her head. Hell if I know I don't understand him. Lancer offered a noncommittal grunt of his own. Perhaps he wishes to lure us out, then. This is a trap, clearly. Castor's masked face betrayed no hint of emotion as he regarded the strange scene unfolding before them. They expect us to come for them. Perhaps sensing that very thought, the red one turned. Wild blue eyes rose to find the familiar and by extension, those watching. Whiskered cheeks dimpled in a sly smile, clawed fingers crooked in a command of their motion, beckoning at the clay pigeon as much as those observing through its lone eye. Perhaps triggered by the motion caster's creation zoomed in upon the cloaked warrior, further exposing his face to view. Despite the league separating them, in spite of his entourage and the nearby servants well within arm's reach, Berserker felt a subtle chill race down her spine. There was a fierce light in those azure orbs, the look of a beast tethered upon a fraying leash, one she prayed he himself would never face. Then those lips parted for her, framing three simple words. Come, get, us. As she looked on a knife flew from his hand with unerring accuracy to strike Castor's familiar head on, sending the screen and likely the familiar with it shrieking into static. A beat of silence followed, broken only the stray squawk of noise as the creature tried and failed to reconstruct itself. In that fleeting instant Berserker almost dared to hope her fellow servants and the rest of the black faction alongside them would simply drop the matter and let them do as they pleased. It was not to be. Huh. A harsh laugh belted out of Lancer, startling all assembled. How amusing rather than greet the interruption with anger as one might expect of their leader, he bellowed out a hearty cackle, mouth stretching in a crazed smile all his own. Perhaps he isn't a thief at all, but an invader one who welcomes adversity with open arms he wouldn't be a worthy opponent if he could die from something like this. Do we have more in the area? Darnick inquired softly as Lancer continued to shout his adversary's praises. A handful. Have Iceburn relented? I can ready another group shortly if need be. Send a few golems and homunculi then. No wait until evening. Vlad interjected forcefully before Darnick could finish the command. We wouldn't want to upset the good people of Trifas now, would we still? It would be remiss of us if we didn't send someone to greet the three of them. That some unseen thought, he nodded to himself. Yes, that settles it, then. I shall take the field myself to meet him he will rue the day he set foot here but I cannot do so alone. Without missing a beat, he turned to face the rest of them. Boots said sharply against the stone, arms spread wide at his sides. Frankenstein went rigid. Might I have another volunteer Vlad inquired. Who will me, me, me rider chirruped I volunteer. HMMPH. You seem awfully eager, Astolfo. Selenike frowned. Jay there it is again that looked the pinquette flinched and tried to hide in her voluminous cloak. Needless to say she failed spectacularly. I'm just eager to go outside when her master's glare intensified she flailed her arms wildly, nearly brandishing her lance in her haste to escape from that sadistic gaze. Yes, that's it, no ulterior motives at all, nope, none. Very well. To Berserker's dismay, Saber of Black stepped forth as well. I confess, I am curious about this Berserker of Red. Might I join you? What are you doing? Saber Gord sputtered. 
I gave you no such permission. Siegfried, that great silent hero who had spoken so little since his summoning, only inclined his head in respect. Respectfully, Master, this is something I wish to do. Please understand, I will not allow harm to befall you in any way. As the rest of the black faction looked on, the portly man's face began to turn an alarming shade of puce. Fran wondered if the round magus would pop from sheer anger. Was such a thing possible if so, it might prove diverting enough to distract her from her own woes. She rather disliked this fool, a heart of gold he might well have, but it was buried beneath an ego the size of Trifas and a pride thrice as thick. Would it be too much to ask for him to spit himself upon Saber's sword and spare them all the pain of his continued existence? You ungrateful familiar. Enough Darnick snapped, silencing him. I'll allow it. To ch. And just like Fran wanted to bash her head against a wall all over again. Ryder and her eccentricities aside, two of the Black Faction's most powerful servants had just declared their intent towards her wood ally. Legend or no, allies or not, she knew Berserker would be hard-pressed to fend them off. Lancer was the true threat here, if he took it into his head to go after Berserker there was nothing she could do about it. To volunteer for battle now would likely end in rejection no matter how prized their prey might be. Their masters surely wouldn't send more than half their servants to deal with them. This boded most poorly. Very well then there was a high, wild light of Lad's gaze, one his master recognized far too late as dare he say lust no, to speak such a thing would surely end with his head on a spike. Tonight we three shall be joined in battle let us take the fight to the invaders. My soldiers for better or worse berserkers little outing had little of fire under the normally stoic servant, one he had no hope of dousing with anything short of a command spell. The elder Igmillenia groaned aloud, the sound muffled against his palms. Just like that, his great plan was rendered little more than sand. How how had the situation gotten so out of hand? Then again, who could predict a madman? So how do I look? You're a cruel one, Saber. Ha ah, what the hell are you talking about? A muscle jumped in Naruto's jaw, throbbing alongside three veins in his temple as he gazed at the natural vision beauty strutting before him. An eye twitched, fighting the reflexive urge to slam shut. In that moment his heightened senses were keenly aware of their surroundings, from the thinning yellow paint of a worn wall pressing against his back, to the curious patrons gazing at them, even their less than pleasant whispers. But most apt of all were the questing aqua orb's eyes of the blonde before him awaiting his answer with more than a touch of impatience. Still, he mustn't flinch. Pearly white teeth flashed back at him in a wild grin, devoid of any guile or tact, innocent to a fault. No, too innocent. Even someone like Mortar couldn't pull off that look without being at least peripherally aware of what they were doing. He wasn't fooled for a moment by Mordred's supposed faux pas, he knew the wrong answer would land him in a world of pain. Hell, the correct response might evoke an equivocal response from Saber. No, to back down now would not only be an insult to men everywhere, but it would irreparably sunder what remained of his pride. To yield here would be as good as admitting defeat, thereby cementing her victory. Wasn't it? She couldn't possibly be that naive right. Gods above, why do you assail me with this temptation? In this moment he was keenly aware of Mordred's eyes upon him. He resisted the urge to face bomb. After Saber's behest he'd finally caved and purchased an outfit for her. It was not what he'd expected her to wear. As he looked on, his companion stretched her arms to the heavens and gave a happy twirl, sending the back of her coat flying about her shoulders. How ah, much better she purred, stretching her limbs to their fullest length. This is the best I was way too uncomfortable in that armor you have no idea. I have some inkling, actually. Naruto groaned. So focused was he that he nearly missed her reply. Your outfit ain't half bad either. I'm sorry, what was that? And nothing. That actually drew a blink from him. He hadn't given his present outfit much thought, clad as he was in a crimson turtleneck and matching black jeans. Something simple, not meant to draw attention. Of course any hope of that had flown right out the window with Mordred's outfit. Part of him silently prayed that would be the end of it. Mordred had already spent half the day simply searching for something to wear, to the point that Atalanta had eventually drifted off in search of their long-awaited meal. Was it too much to ask for this to be over already? He knew it wouldn't be. Saber wasn't finished with him yet, as he looked on, she shifted her profile to present one shoulder to him and began kicking awkwardly at a nearby rack of clothes. The sudden change in posture set off alarm bells in Naruto's head, triggering fond memories of a past life he'd all but forgotten. If he hadn't known better he would have thought she was blushing weight. Teen eyes zeroed in on her face, detecting the faintest flush. Where in blazes had Atalanta gotten off to he'd gladly give up his knee again for a distraction right now. The last thing he wanted to go was set Mordred off in such an enclosed space, least of all with civilians nearby. So she pressed, tapping her foot impatiently. Why do you think does it suit me? Surprisingly. The hell does that mean? Damn. He'd seen the trap, still fallen right into it. What a drag. It was shaping up to be such a nice day, too. His plan had been a basic one, almost frightful in its simplicity. Unite Saber and Archer by allowing them to think they had the upper hand on him, thereby eliminating the animosity between them. Put up a token struggle to make his protest seem somewhat believable, then allow them to haul him about the town for the day while subtle conducting reconnaissance. After all, battles were oftentimes won or lost based on trust and that very trust had been sorely lacking between the two women. 
By all rights, everything should have gone off without a hitch. Playing the fool always came easily to him ever since his youth it was a guise he could don and discard as easily as one would a change of clothes. At some point, however, they turned the tables on him. Clad in a white tube top that exposed her abdomen to the elements and a scarlet leather jacket, Sabre seemed the epitome of the rebel that had so defined her legend in the past. Coupled with a shorn pair of rough blue jeans ladder cut sinfully short well above her knees and heavy black boots she rather reminded him of some offbeat gangster. Honestly, all she needed now was a bat to complete the ensemble. All told, there was a certain tomboyish charm to her outfit. Every stitch, every thread, everything accentuated the subtle lines of her body in ways that clothing had no business doing. If she was at all chilly, she didn't seem keen on telling him. How anyone could wear that in autumn without freezing was beyond him but he likely chalked up to her own elite class as a servant. Therein lie the crux of the matter. When clad in her heavy armor it was easy to forget that despite her protests that Mordred was a woman. He could poke and prod her to his heart's content, tease her while fully knowing he could escape any retribution that came howling his way. But no something had shifted in their dynamic and he wasn't sure how to address it. At the end of the day, servant or no, Naruto was still very much a man and this was distracting. Not enough to prove dangerous, mind you, yet there it was. Not that Mordred was unattractive, mind. He simply knew she'd try to skewer him if ever called her a girl. Try as he might, he couldn't figure out if she was doing this to tease him or if she was simply that naive when it came to clothing. Fine, Mordred wanted to be like that. Chu could play this wicked little game of hers. He'd likely get his share of lumps for this later, but... In the interim, perhaps it was time he had a little fun of his own. Screw it, he decided. I'll tease her a little. Not a lie if there's a kernel of truth in it'll write, a very large kernel. Means you're ain't gorgeous. Naruto drawled, pushing himself off the wall to face Saber fully. When she failed to retreat in time he advanced further still, until her back was nearly in the very booth from which she'd only just emerged and pressed his forehead against hers until their noses nearly touched. Mordred bristled at once at the sudden invasion of her personal space, but he wasn't yet finished with her. Before she could strike the ancient shinobi leaned further still and snatched the band from her hair, sending the flaxen locks tumbling wildly around her ears. For the piece to resistance he allowed his lips to brush the outer lobe of her right one teasingly. In fact, he breathed huskily, I think I'm falling in love. Marry me. Sabers. Eyes. Dot. Really. Big. Hem. Naruto hadn't thought it possible for someone let alone a servant such as Sabertoe turn that shade of pink. Let alone their entire body. While her mouth worked wordlessly, he found he had a moment to reflect on his decision. Not a bad look on her. He'd be lying if he said it wasn't attractive. Thoughts for later, he supposed. In any case, he found himself suddenly and wholly preoccupied by her response. Ah, and what a response it was. Boot. Worth it. An armored foot slammed into Naruto's with all the explosive force of a bucking bronco to catapult the cackling ninja out of the store. He was still laughing as glass shattered around him, when several female customers start shrieking in falsetto. Still laughing as he skidded back first across the stone street and ripped his turtleneck to red shreds around his shoulders, and still laughing as his servant attire manifested over the ruined dregs of his clothes. At the garments passing, he felt just a sliver of remorse. Aw, oh, man I liked that outfit he groaned. Why must the good die young? The distant sound of shifting rubble claimed his attention. Framed in the light of the setting sun, Mordred snarled at him. Honestly, Naruto would have been somewhat worried, were it not for her spinning eyes and the crimson flush adorning her face. All in all he considered it a win if only to get under the rebellious knight's skin. At least she gave him enough time to climb back to his feet before she started cussing him out. Pity about the sweater, though. WWW what the hell, zombie where did that come from? What afraid of a little honesty his grin grew incrementally as steam spouted from her face. You really are pretty when you're flustered you know. Oh your hair's down too. Not a bad look for a girl. Shoot up shoot up say J D D A P. Sure enough an armored fist streaked down at his jaw at breakneck speed. Well, he'd expected her to try and punch his head clear off his shoulders. It really was a good punch all things considered. She'd crossed the distance between the two of them in a blink and attacked with all the speed bellying a saber class servant. Such a strike would have rendered an ordinary human and a few weaker servants on the throne little more than a red stain against the street. By comparison to her earlier attack however, this strike proved painfully sloppy. And slow. Terribly, woefully slow. Likely had something to do with her flustered state, at that. A gentle nudge to said wrist sent those clenched knuckles careening harmlessly past to spare his face. Not so the building behind him. With a devastating crunch the unfortunate home yielded to Mordred's punch like a house of cards, that is to say it absolutely crumbled. Berserker and Saber both, each looked on aghast as the building tumbled down around their ears. Neither sustained any injuries of course naturally a servant couldn't be felled by something as base as chunk of falling masonry but the same couldn't be said for any own assuming their luck was truly that abysmal unfortunate enough to be caught up in the ensuing avalanche of stone. In no time at all, both blondes were left standing amidst the ruins of that auntie humble home. Really, the conclusion was patently obvious. Oh, crap. Seizing her hand in his, Naruto bolted. Right, right, that's our cue. Exit stage left. Oi, wait what if there were people in there? Dumbass Mordred squawked. Didn't sense anyone's sides. A king does not pay for things that are not her fault onward. 
You absolute bay. He saber started as she recognized his palm clasping hers. Let go of my hand, I'll cut you, you damn undead. Let me think about that. Nope. In a sense, it felt oddly refreshing to simply sprint away from danger as the common folk did. Either of them could have simply leaped a door in Mordred's case to materialize to safety without consequence. Yet they didn't. It could even be said that they chose not to. One was reminded of happier times before their untimely demise, the other simply enjoyed the chance to stretch their legs again. Few paid them any mind even given their odd state of dress, confounded as they were by the chaos. By the time they'd reached the sun had long since dipped below the horizon, the faintest tongues of flame serving only to illuminate a series of looming clouds in the distance. A dull rumble of thunder chased through the heavens, promising rain. Rain, of course, just like that day. Naruto felt his jaw clench against a particularly unpleasant memory. He shook his head in a vain attempt to ward it off, to no avail. His good mood evaporated on the spot, sullied by images of his past. Though his life had been a full one, there were still some things he'd rather forget no bad Naruto focus. Well, that was unfortunate. He sighed and began tugging Mordred who'd fallen oddly silent down a side street. Let's find Atlanta before it pours, eh? A sharp jerk on his arm hauled him backwards before he made three steps. Oi, you trying to tear my arm off or some? Mordred hadn't released his hand. What in blazes? Eyes downcast. Eyes shaded by those freed flax and locks, he couldn't read Sabater's expression. Nevertheless, her mouth moved as he looked on, mumbling a series of incoherent words that his enhanced senses somehow failed to detect. Teasing her was tempting, but a small voice in his head advised against it. Something told her that if he tried poking that dragon now, he'd lose a finger and an arm besides. Straining his ears, he caught the tail end of her sentence. Thank you, she muttered. A Saberson wanna run that by me Agok. Clunk. Her head slammed up into his chin, nearly causing the whiskered warrior to bite off his tongue in midspeak. Yak, do you have any idea how hot it is to regenerate my tungu? I said thank you, you asked stupidity ought some BASD. Were you thanking me for he groaned, clutching at his mouth with his free hand. The clothes, damn it a finger stabbed into his face, momentarily causing him to pause. A king always pays her debts, but you're technically not a. I will cut you. All right, all right conceding the point, Naruto raised his free hand to forestall another assault. I'll stop. His eyes flitted to their palms, her fingers still gripped white-knuckled around his. Can I have my hand back now I'm starting to lose circulation you know. He expected a sputtering blush of some sort, not the mulish defiance that greeted him. Instead, Saber's hand clamped down harder still. No, she replied. Hey, you're not getting your arm back until I get that meal you owe me. So, they're preening at what she no doubt believed to be a brilliant plan, Mordred proudly thrust out her and grinned. Consider it payback for all that you've put me through. Just try and break free I won't let you your mind now, zombie high even a peon would have seen through her blatant bluff. A beat of awkward silence passed between the two warriors. You really want to hold hands, don't you? Idiot don't read into it so much. Such a tsundir. Her earnestness was adorable. If she knew, she'd gut him on the spot. SSO coughing into a fist, Saber spun about, eyeing a nearby storefront. Where's a good place to eat around here after dark? You're asking me Naruto openly guffawed at her naivete, he simply couldn't help himself. That pure look in those aqua orbs was simply too much for him to bear any longer. I thought you knew everything's probably closed by now thanks to your little rampage. Knew as she whined. They've gotta have a place open I'm friggin' starving. The night of rebellion, ladies and gentlemen a true glutton. Quiet Saber snarled. Um, let's go thy's way. In the end, he allowed her to have her say. There was something painfully nostalgic about being led around by the arm all told, even if it was an exercise in futility. From the moment they'd set foot in Sayasora, he'd experienced the strangest sensation of being watched. Someone or something was surveying them from afar, another familiar most likely. He'd already dispatched one earlier that morning, but the eerie feeling of eyes boring into his back hadn't abated in the least. Now that even now hidden creatures were observing their every action and in turn reporting back to its master. Assuming his pact with Semirami still held, the likely culprit ought to be Caster of Black. That suited him just fine. While he would have preferred to simply smoke out the enemy servant and thereby cease this game of hide and seek, he had no doubt that they'd make their move eventually. He had no doubt Archer and Saber were likewise aware of their unwanted admirers, though neither had said a word of it. Until then he was content to play this mad little game until the bitter end. Well, we know the enemy is in Trifus, so we'll need to be back. His words trailed off as he spied Atalanta down the street. By comparison to Mordred her choice of dress was relatively conservative. After all, Saber had basically bullied her into securing an outfit of her own at the outset of their excursion. At the time, he'd thought it a shame. Even in her servant attire she could have easily passed for human. With a large hat to hide her ears and her tail curled against her back, he might have thought her a normal woman. She was the sort that loathed wearing anything even remotely feminine, yet she'd claimed something all the same. The long, flowing blue dress she'd chosen for herself was so adorable that it physically snapped Naruto's head back and gave him a nosebleed on the spot. At critical hit danger danger Will Robinson. Spying them at last the archer raised a hand in greeting. There you are. I was beginning to think you'd wandered off again. Her verdant gaze took note of their intertwined hands, but if she had any comment on the matter, she didn't remark on it. Instead she cast a distasteful glance at her own figure and the dress adorning it. 
I fail to see the purpose of this outfit. It is stiff, ungainly, difficult to move in. With a low growl she dispersed it, discarding the corporeal garment in favor of her true attire. Do the women of this era fight in such flimsy cloth? Really Naruto tilted his head, unable to mask his smile. That looked kind of fetching on you. Thunk. A bolt whistled past his head, causing him to jump and jerk free from Mordred. Sure enough, when he turned to face Atalanta he found himself gazing upon her deadly bow. Ah, the pains of being a berserker. He'd gone and run his mouth again without thinking. Sometimes that damn madness enhancement just wasn't worth it. Curse his lack of inhibition. What I do I only said that side of you was. A trio of arrows studded home beside his ear before he could finish. Well, shit. The blonde gulped out. Don't suppose you'd accept an apology. Atalanta knocked a quartet of fresh arrows to her supple bowstring and drew back. I'm going to give you a five-second head start, Naruto. She warned. I suggest you take it. Honestly, if she hadn't been smiling he would have thought she genuinely intended to kill him crazy woman. You think you're being cute, don't you? He groaned, palming his face. Atalanta's visage didn't waver in the least. To quote a proud man, I'm adorable. Naruto actually blinked. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, no, no, no you did not just team forced army. He would have said more, but his senses chose that precise moment to light up like wildfire. No, a wildfire was too tame. This it was a veritable explosion of prana, a force so great that it momentarily set his senses to reeling. And it was far, far, far closer than he would have liked. Judging by his comrade's suddenly pensive expressions, even that was an understatement. They're right behind me, aren't they? In response, Mordred grimaced and drew her blade. Slowly, reluctantly, he turned to face the outskirts of town. You're kidding me. He croaked. Much to his surprise and utter consternation, the numbered three. One an effeminate warrior clad in strange armor and cape alike, upon her shoulder cradled a massive lance. The other was a great brute of a man, silver hair tumbling down armored shoulders, though his in back lay exposed. It was this man that set off alarm bells. Rather, the sword in his hand. Though its owner was indeed a great mount of a man, it was his weapon that truly set him on edge. Every fiber of his being recoiled from the sight of it, no, it was the anathema to his very existence. A peerless noble phantasm that would surely obliterate him should it make contact. This, then, must be Saber of Black. Homie, you're telling that's their Saber. In the midst of them both rode a man clad in dark black vestments. Astride an equally menacing comparison to his companions he radiated raw power, a sheer sense of presence bellied by his slim frame. One might even call it an aura, an invisible war of sheer will that promise to trample all who would oppose him. As they approached he dismounted and drew a slender lance from the air. Greetings, invaders his deep, resonant voice carried the distance between them. I am Vlad the third ruler of this country whom do I have the honor of addressing. Naruto groaned. Really, it was all he could think to do. You are not going to let us run away, are you? Lancifer he could only be that class rewarded him with a grim smile. Dibs on the big guy mortared all but purred, drawing her blade. Need to work out some issues. Siegfried actually paled. Atalanta sighed. I suppose that leaves me with the pink one. The enemy servant blinked, taking aback. Jay, what's wrong with the color pink? Everything. Hey, Astolfo cried. Now you're just being mean. I suppose that leaves you with Lancer, was it Archer posited? Was this your plan all along? Well, much to her consternation, the blonde actually grimaced. Well, he did have a plan that he'd been saving for a moment like this it was quite brilliant, even if his allies might not like it. He'd been hoping to lure out one servant, maybe two, not that absolute monster of a lancer. Certainly not someone possessing enough prana for an entire country, nope, nope, nope that he didn't have nearly enough energy to face down a monster like this. I hate to be that guy, but... Sure enough, when Atalanta turned she found a vacant pocket of air where Berserker had once stood. Across the way she spied his red cloak, rapidly retreating into the distance. Neither she nor Mordred were prepared for the response that followed. Run away. Boy, what the hell. Atlanta nearly shot him on the spot. Berserker come back here you coward. To his credit, Naruto actually made it several yards before a wave of what could only be called wide stakes thrust themselves between him and escape. Really, it would have been a successful break if he'd been able to build a bit more speed, but there it was. Forced to turn back lest he dash himself on the sudden garrison of stone spears, he, quite suddenly, found himself face to face with the very servant he'd sought to escape. That said servant was currently poised upon a small mountain of the very spires he'd been seeking to avoid while that boded ill. Indeed, those wild eyes no longer held the touch of amusement, but of quiet, simmering wrath. A, hey, worth a try. The silence proved stifling. I don't suppose you'd be willing to draw up a truce. Lancer absolutely twitched. I'm going to kill you now. Prepare. Berserker gulped and settled into a low stance. Yeah, I'd say that's fair. He'd barely finished even that before his world erupted into a thousand jagged points. The greater grail stirred, slowly, reluctantly, like a recalcitrant child. Rising from its long slumber, it awoke in a world gone mad. While it could certainly be said that the holy grail possessed a consciousness of sort, none realized it was alive. One could even call it sentient, to an extent. Formed from the core once known as the homunculus Justice Lizrich von Einsburn, the Holy Grail held a will to be sure, but few understood the definition of that desire. As this iteration remained pure, so too did its purpose. For all its dreaming it awoke aware of the situation, of the discrepancy foisted upon the war with which it was tasked. 
There have been anomalies. It knew something had gone amiss. Chief among them was that one, the servant who should not exist. The Berserker of Red was another such anomaly, one the Grail didn't understand. Rather than Spartacus, that terrible gladiator of ancient Rome, a warrior of another era emerged. Thanks to him, rather than two factions facing one another they plotted and schemed from the shadows. There was conflict, but far from what it should have been. The assassin of Black had already been subverted, subsumed into the ranks of Red, with threats of others soon to follow. The current ruler was not fulfilling her role in this regard. Rather than fulfill her purpose objectively, she'd taken in with the servants of Red. Worse, the substances of her summoning had been skewed somehow, leading to her possessing a physical body rather than a spiritual one. The one who should not exist was like to blame for that. And then there was that wretched human, the one known as Darnick, even now trying to alter it to suit his needs. This would not stand. Not the servant from the last war, not the berserker, and certainly not this meddlesome magus. Tendrils of thought reached out across space and time, stretching from its cradle in the Ig Millennia Fortress to find the servants it had brought into this world. It found three of them readily enough nearby, identifying them as servants of black alongside their masters. Caster, Archer, Berserker, each on standby, each prepared for an assault. This was good, well within calculations. The reserve system was functioning properly. Nothing amiss here, though the muddled mindset of the berserker of black was mildly troubling. No matter, the Grail didn't deem it a dire problem and thus moved on. Still further it stretched out its awareness, searching for the rest of its flock. Lancer of Red blazed before her senses like a funeral pyre, oddly stationary in the distance. Further still she found Assassin of Black cuddled up with two masters of Red in quiet slumber. Further from all the rest of her kin, Assassin of Red toiled tirelessly to construct her endless gardens. As it observed, a distant conflagration caught the Grail's attention. An instant was all it acquired to shift its focus. What it found there was, somewhat concerning to say the least. Here there was conflict at last, but the outcome was already in flux. Three servants of red, three servants of black. Ruler was advancing, stubbornly making her way toward this battlefield. Caster and Rider of red were alarmingly close to said conflict, yet for some reason, they had yet to interfere. Nor for that matter did several of the servants seem to fighting with intent to kill. Such a lack of resolve rankled the grail. Did they think this a game it was galling? No beyond that. Unacceptable. If events continued as they were, the war may very well end without a single casualty. That wouldn't do. If servants did not perish, there would be no fuel. The war would end. If the war was not won, there would not be a wish. If no wish was made, it had no reason to exist. It wanted to exist. It wanted to follow the rules of the great war it had set forth. These were paramount and must be followed, upheld at all costs. How it longed to see the dreams of man, what wish they would set forth. Yet alone, it would likely fail. The Grail realized this now. Perhaps a terminal was required a better vessel through which to exercise her will. Hem, the seed of an idea sprouted in the Grail's mind. Yes, a vessel. The Black Faction possessed several homunculus, many of whom would make a fine host. But such a vessel or vessels, rather would require several protectors. More than protectors, warriors who would fight for its sake. More than warriors, another faction altogether. One not beholden to such fallible masters. That would yet take time. Resources. Perhaps a push was necessary. Silently, it set to work. Dot 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 soon. Seemir, Saber of Black. A low, long disbelieving cackle of pure delight burst out of Mordred as she surged into the fray, her furious flight burgeoned by the crimson fires of her own prana. She did not move with the elegance of a knight, nor did she display any semblance of beautiful swordsmanship as one might expect of a knight of the round table. Instead she fought with reckless abandon, raging against her foe like a savage beast. Be it punching, biting, kicking, even throwing her own sword, all was acceptable in her eyes, so long as it granted her victory. Dozens of blows rained down upon her adversary, striking left, right, and center. Siegfried withstood them all. That peerless golden sword did not waver in the face of her assault. Indeed, it met the knight of rebellion's every strike and weathered them with quiet stoicism. Nor did its owner give ground. Neither did Mordred. They traded blows back and forth, neither yielding, uncaring of the sundered earth wrought around them. The very ground trembled beneath the weight of their blows, shuddering at near misses, quaking when their blades collided against one another. Even their fellow servants were given pause, momentarily taken aback by the sheer might of their clash. Mordred didn't care, and why should she give a damn? Her very soul soul sang at the prospect of facing such a foe. Finally, an enemy worth defeating, someone she could vent her aggression on. Recent events had brought Saber to her breaking point. She needed to kill something or some owner and now lest she lost her mind. And since that someone couldn't be a certain blonde, she found herself forced to take out her anger on the nearest target. Ergo, Saber of Black was it. Damn zombie, riling her up like this much. After this dot 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 they would have words. Strong words. Thus she fought with single-minded determination, relentless blows hammering down against the enemy's blade in a strict sequence of attacks. When that failed to breach his defenses, she ramped up the intensity of her assault and switched to a more unorthodox method, cutting low at his legs, forcing him to leap up then away lest he lose his limbs. Bombing arc toward the heavens and came crashing back down to greet her with a mourn, strengthened by the force of its master's fall. Good. He wasn't inexperienced, then. 
she wouldn't have it any other way. Responding to her battle lust, Clarence roared up to greet it with the strength of a thousand armies. Steel met steel and though her arm trembled with the force of their collision, Mordred held firm. Soil cratered beneath her feet, yet she did not yield even as his feet settled against the ground and he bore down on her. A crazed grin stretched across her face as gazed up at the prone saber struggling against her. An ember of excitement sprang to life in her. Aura, 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 she howled, raining down a tempest upon him. What's wrong, don't tell me that's all you have, shithead. Crass, aren't you equipped? What of it? His blade disengaged moments later, fing toward her helm with blinding speed, and she retaliated in kind. In another world and author timeline Alto Thurm Benons to Mordred, she would have been denied such a conflict. Yes, she could have faced off against a facsimile of the very servant standing before her now. A lowly copy carrying a dragon's heart, a mere shadow of the genuine article. She would have spat at him and cursed him, deemed him a lowly faker. Not here. Not now. Now she met his counterattack with one of her own, straining against him. The shriek of sundered metal informed her she'd lost a horn to his sword, but she cared not for it. Battle lust twisted her rough visage into a cruel grin, causing her to leer at him over their crossed blades. Not gonna use your noble phantasm. Her opponent's visage tightened into a thin scowl. Dot 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 not yet. He relented to her. Will you? Behind the helm, she sneered. Soon enough, Clarence sprang to life in her grasp, raging in a riotous red arc around her body and bombing hissed to blazing blue life to greet her assault. It was not a meeting of their noble phantasms, but close. Very close indeed. The tan warrior regarded her with quiet skepticism as they parted once more, steel skittering against steel. Though he could no longer see her face behind that hidden helm, he'd glimpsed it at the outset of their battle. For all her might, he found it difficult to believe that this mere slip of a lass was the enemy faction's saber. All told it was mildly, concerning that one so small could wield such power with ease. Though he held nearly a head on her in terms of size, the spry spitfire had already proven herself as equal in speed, if not strength. Perhaps more. Worse, he sensed she was holding back the lion's share of her strength. If she were to fight seriously, R-A-S-E-N-G-A-N, a primal roar yanked him back to the present with all the fury of a starving beast, accompanied by the keening shriek of an unfamiliar technique. In the next blink the terrain mere meters to his right erupted into a blazing maelstrom. Not quite an explosion Siegfried mused, but rather a burst of white-blue localized prana that set the air to shrieking around them. Death. His keen eyes told him all he needed to know about that art. If anyone were caught in such a blast they would surely perish. Perhaps even he. It served as a stern reminder of the task at hand. Dot 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 even as a skewered body crashed to the earth between them. Startled, both sabers snapped to attention, gawping at the desecrated corpse between them. Peripherally Siegfried recognized the crimson cadaver as Berserker of Red, if only because most of the man's face had been left somewhat unscathed despite the tattered state of his body. Regardless of that fact, he was clearly dead now. Blue eyes lay open and half-lidded in mild consternation, his face frozen, no doubt about to spout another witty one-liner or some such. Really, it was odd that he hadn't simply faded away already. Although given that so many earthen stakes had pierced his vitals it was clearly a matter of time. Much to his chagrin, Saber of Red only sighed. Wait for it. Siegfried actually blinked. Sorry, wait for Wag A H. I L I I I V E. With an exultant cry, Berserker's corpse jerked upright and began ripping said stakes out of his body as though they were not but splinters. Like a broken puppet severed from its strings it spasmed and twitched, limbs snapping back into place, wounds mending themselves in spite of the gaping tears left behind. Wild azure orbs rolled back and up to meet him, glaring wide red daggers at Siegfried as though he were somehow to blame for all this. Siegfried balked, only to find that his opponent didn't share his concern. He wouldn't stab me when I'm down, would you? He groaned. No, he certainly hadn't sunk that far yet. I would not. He said as much. Good. Naruto beamed. Which means, arching his back, the blonde sprang to his feet and seized him by the shoulders. Sapphire snapped into scarlet and for a fleeting heartbeat Siegfried almost wondered if the young man was going to attack him. He certainly looked as if he would, given that his was already up. Honestly, that would have been preferable to what followed. Yahoo, me, do you have any idea? A low, exasperated hiss snaked through those clenched teeth as Berserker of Red shook him to and fro. How absurdly. Ridiculously overpowered your lancer is damn fame boost he hits like freaking heracles. Now, I hope you know that I'm gonna have so many bruises after this I demand recompense. That's not my fault. Bah, Saber of Red arched a blonde brow. Uh, so are you going to fight him now, or? Exasperated, the blonde released him, sending the swordsman's world spinning. It was a strange thing to be scolded by someone who appeared younger than him. An enlightening experience to be sure dot 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 just not one he ever wanted to experience again. In any case, the brawler had taken his eyes off him. Had he less honor, he would have considered this the prime time to strike. Pride stilled his hand, but more than that, it was the banter that followed which truly distracted him. Want me to take over for you, zombie his companion chirped. We can swap if you don't think you have what it takes. Never a feral look flashed across the whiskered warrior's visage. Lancer's mind don't you dare no kill stealing. Ah, isn't that what you're doing now the blade wielder sniped back. We were just getting to the good part. Not my fault aghast. The young man flailed his arms spectacularly. Vlad knocked me over here. So why are you having so much trouble with one lancer anyway you're tougher than that? 
Berserker's visage pinched in mild frustration. Because I, you know damn well why. Then just punch him the bastard to death if you can't use your noble phantasm. A dry breeze wafted across the battlefield as those words wafted between them. Naruto palmed his face. Oh for the love of. Saber why must you be so adorably infuriating why? Well what the hell did I say I've killed plenty of people with my bare hands before. All told, watching these two go at it almost reminded Siegfried of the early days of his marriage. What are you waiting for Gord's nasally voice snarled in his ear, ripping him from that particularly poignant memory as he watched them bicker back and forth with one another. They've turned their backs to you kill them do it now must I waste a command spell on this, you idiot familiar. I'm going to ignore that last remark. How dare you? Putting aside the fact that his master expected him to kill two servants by himself, the Norse hero knew better than to intervene in the pitched battle taking place before him. Something told him any attempt to attack now on his part would result in complete and utter annihilation at their hands. No, he would have no part of this, though the byplay remained strangely fascinating to watch. You say I'm weak or something Mordred snarled, jutting her forehead against that of Berserker's tan one. No, just that you play with your food too much Naruto sniped. Literally and figuratively. Oh, yeah betcha I beat Saber of Black before you beat Lancer. A banquet says I'll crush Vlad Wah, he before that. Keep dreaming, zombie she snapped. Hi you first, blondie. Fine, jerk. Fine. As he came back to himself Berserker snarled and turned on Saber of Red, closing the distance between them before he could think to stop him. To his complete dismay rather than attack, the blonde simply zipped into the girl's personal space and bit the outer lobe of her ear. Despite his better judgment, Siegfried looked away. Judging by the utter squeak of disbelief that followed, he'd caught her with her guard down dot 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 and more. Her face afire the no-spittering the blonde swiped at him, only to meet empty air as Berserker simply bounded over the wide arc of her blade to dart away like a wraith in the night with comparative ease. Boy, no fair. Victory comes to he who strikes first. Alighting upon Siegfried's broad shoulders, Berserker offered him a solid pat on the head. Sorry about this, the whiskered warrior chirruped in his ear, but I'll be using you as a springboard oh, and saber. Abruptly, the cloaked killer ceased smiling. A lone crimson iris peered at him over his shoulder, darkly intent. You shouldn't have to put up with that master of yours. No one should. Come find us if you survive you hono. Boy don't you dare run away, coward mortared cut out at his exposed face, forcing the warrior to abort his perch preemptively. You'll never take me alive. With a single bound he leaped back into the fray, leaving them where they'd begun. Were it not for a few tattered scraps of cloth clinging to Clarent, one wouldn't have known he was ever there. His companion squawked. What? You're saying I can't kill him? If the empty air had any answers, it didn't offer them. To ch. Mordred turned her head and spat. At least you're having fun over there. Berserker now stop messing with my prey. Never a distant cat call crowed back. I swear to god I'm gonna gut you one of these days. Now that she mentioned it, Siegfried had been wondering about that. Sorry, but are you sure you're not the berserker here? Missy inquired. In that moment the ancient hero inadvertently trod upon the proverbial landmine that was Mordred's shallow confidence. Not in others, but rather, herself. The result was nothing short of explosive. With a harsh clank her helmet disengaged and slammed down onto her shoulders, parting to expose a ferocious scowl and the young visage within. Oh, perhaps he'd gone a tad too far. Hell no I'm Saber the rest of his words dawned upon her moments later, turning her gaze to hooded aqua slits. Did you just call me a girl? A beat of awkward silence followed. Dot 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 aren't you? Boy, Siegfried had meant no offense with his words of course, it was simply his way of speaking. From his point of view this girl couldn't possibly be Saber of Red. She was too wild, too fierce, too feral. Moreover, she'd already proven herself lacking when it came to the art of the blade. Strong to be sure, but a master swordswoman she was not. She gloried in this battle while he merely accepted it as his duty. Curiosity had compelled him to come here, to meet the man who professed to help now he'd inadvertently provoked the very servant he'd been trying to avoid. Claren howled red with rage, vicious scarlet sparks scrawling over its edge. Get over here. Mana burst propelled her forward at breakneck speed. A liberal application of that same skill sent her sword snarling into Saber of Black, catapulting him into the earth. Something crunched in his side as the flat of her sword cannoned against him. It took nearly all Siegfried's might to resist being blown away on the spot. Quite suddenly he found himself crossing blades with someone quite likely to kill him if he made so much as a single slip. And yet despite the danger, Siegfried hesitated. What are you doing? Saber Gordz's voice growled at him through their shared link. The enemy is right in front of you pay attention. Ah, there he was again. Unworthy, a small voice hissed in the back of his brain. Siegfried grit his teeth against it and tried to devote his attention the fight, to no avail. Thoughts wriggled out of his grasp even as he grappled with Saber of Red, threatening to betray him. All told, Gord's music Igmillennia was not a good master. Not even an adequate one at that. Nor could he be called average, fet, slovenly, always shouting, trying to be seen, to make himself heard over others. Proud of his station, his power, ever scraping and scratching, shrieking for more, never satisfied. Even then, Siegfried had silently resolved to endure his petty tyranny. I in the beginning. 
Then an epiphany had come upon him recent Liban forced, really in the dead of night spurred by the enigmatic assault of Berserker of Red. Meeting him now, speaking with him, had only further served to cement that belief. Why endure? He shouldn't have to tolerate this. Serving such a master would get him killed. While he did not fear a second death, he did not wish to forfeit his dream, that most cherished wish he held near and dear to his heart. It was becoming increasingly clear that his master did not share such values. No, one could even say he stood in direct opposition to them. A contractor, one that viewed him as little more than a familiar. He would not understand his dream, childish though it might be. The scene he'd made back in the throne room had made that pointedly clear. No, all told, he'd begun to find his master. Distasteful. Was it wrong that he wanted to kill him even a little perhaps? Pay attention, dumbass. As he turned to face Saber of Red a booted foot cannoned out of nowhere, catching him dead in center of his. Unprepared for such a tactic Siegfried found himself flung backward at blistering, sent tumbling across the earth like a skipping stone. Narrowly managing to cling to Bamung, he hastily righted himself, expecting an attack at any moment. It never came. As ever his armor of Fafnir had held firm against anything short of that blade, but he found his psyche grievously wounded by the events that just transpired. What are you doing, spacing out like that in the middle of a fight the armored knight drawled at him, her face taut with fury. He trying to die or something. In disbelief, Siegfried balked at her. You had a chance to kill me just now. He murmured, nearly at a loss for words. Why didn't you take it? Dot 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 ha. Huh. Now it was Mordred's turn to recoil. He was not prepared for the response that followed. In the distance, the heavens unleashed their fury in the form of a terrible catastrophe from on high, one he barely noticed. Rider of Black let out a faint squawk and scrambled for cover, but again, Siegfried couldn't bring himself to care for his fellow servant's plight. There was only the scowling maiden, somehow looming large before him despite no perhaps in spite of her small stature. Kill you when you weren't looking the hell would I do that for in a flash of crimson steel. Clarence stabbed at the empty air before them, jabbing furiously at his face as though it were trying to skewer him despite the distance between them. No way I want to end you fair and square her gaze bored into him, rooting him where he stood. It wouldn't be worth it otherwise now stand up and fight me, saber of black or I'll drag you to your feet. A grim smile blossomed on his tan visage. So, she held some semblance of honor after all. He could, understand that much, respect it, even, servant of red, whomever you are, I'm glad to have met you. Here was one who did not flinch from their principles. No matter their fate, no matter their master, they held true to their beliefs. It felt like a breath of fresh air. Straightening his back and keenly aware of how close he'd come to death just now Siegfried readied his blade. A distant explosion shook the earth anew, but this time he paid it no mind. He only had eyes for the knight standing before him. I would know your name, he inquired cordially. He expected a firm denial, a rebuttal of his request at the least. Instead she graced him with a rough laugh and planted her greatsword in the ground between them. Armored hands descended, resting firmly upon its great hilt. Straightening her back, she tossed her hair still freed from its ponytail and snorted a contemptuous strand out of her eyes. Planting her feet, she squared her shoulders and declared her true name for all to hear. I am Mordred, the one and true heir of Arthur Pendragon. Her very voice resonated with pride and determination. The night of rebellion she paused, considering him anew, those dauntless eyes greeting his, daring him to meet her challenge. Now I ask thee, Saber of Black. The very air vibrated with the voice of her charisma, such that the stoic servant momentarily found himself stricken on the spot. Dot 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 who art thou? In the end Siegfried couldn't help but respond to such sincerity. He simply didn't have it in him to resist her honesty. Something in that wild sight of hers reminded him of his younger self, wild and fierce. How long had it been since his eyes held such fire the thought sparked a strange feeling in his malformed heart. No, not quite a feeling, but rather, a yearning. A reminder of his dream. No you idiot perhaps sensing his intent, Gord's raged at him. What are you doing I forbid it I command you to. Something snapped in Siegfried. You and what command seals. Severing their telepathic link, he hauled himself upright and inhaled deeply. After so many years asleep to himself, it felt like coming up for a breath of fresh air. Hey, I recognize that look. Mordred sighed knowingly. You've got a shitty master, huh? Had she anything other than his adversary, Siegfried might have actually embraced her on the spot. Odd that he'd struck up a kinship with the enemy. His polar opposite, yet more alike him than she knew. Some small part of him must have longed for a fight like this, for in this moment, he felt fulfilled. He didn't merely want to fight, he wanted to help others. Of his own volition, without being asked. This wee slip of a girl had rewakened that dream deep within him. Mordred. He began slowly, choosing his words with care. Saber of red. I owe you my thanks. I'd nearly forgotten myself. What can I say the blonde preened and thumbed her nose, swelling with praise. I'm a people person. She most assuredly was not, but she wasn't about to deny a compliment. With the merest F of her wrist, she plucked her heavy blade from the soil and leveled its honed edge towards Siegfried once more. Still haven't answered my question, though. He hadn't had he. I am Siegfried. He'd never been one to boast of his own exploits, his name was enough. Recognition dawned in those wild eyes all at once, framed by a hint of admiration and surprise. As he looked on a slow, euphoric smile blossomed across her visage. Those wide eyes narrowed intently upon his cherished sword, as though seeing it for the first time. Hmm, perhaps it would have been wiser to conceal his name after all. 
The look she was giving him now was actually predatory if he was truly honest with himself. Still, he couldn't bring himself to regret his words, even after what followed. Oh, somehow, Mordred managed a murderous mule as she settled into an unfamiliar stance. I'd better watch out for that sword of yours, then. Now, that keen gaze turned back to him then, perhaps sensing the seed of concern within. Don't worry, she beamed. I won't go for your back. Not my style. Siegfried released a breath he didn't know he'd been holding. You have my thanks, Saber of Re. No, Mordred. This time, her laughter rang true. In that case, a swift upturn of her blade sent a shiver of dread shooting down Siegfried's spine. Allow me to greet that fervor of yours with some of my own. By rights it looked as though she were offering her weapon to the heavens. Siegfried knew better. As he looked on in quiet awe, the air turned red around Saber of Red. No, beyond red. As though the world itself were suddenly stained by some sinister grudge he didn't wholly understand. All of it, stemming from that sword. Large protrusions set back as one, bathing the blade in eerie crimson relief. Siegfried knew the sight for what it was, and knew he must respond in kind. If he didn't, only destruction awaited. O sword, let thee be filled. Solemnly, he raised bombing above his head, activating the jewel within its hilt. At twilight miasma began to emanate from the blade, ebbing and flowing wildly. To Mordred's eyes it wasn't so much a pillar of light as it was an aura radiating from the Servant of Black, a glowing ring building more and more as she looked on. The dragon in her recognized the danger for what it was, the diluted of ancient snarling a warning against the ancient enemy it now faced. And still, her foe continued to chant, The evil dragon will fall. This was true Etha, hailing from the age of the gods itself. All will be separated into light and shadow. Few could hope to stand against it. The world will now reach the twilight. Mordred merely grinned. Aha, finally. Against all hope, beyond all fear, Siegfried's opponent shifted anew. Rather, her blade. Her weapon uttering unholy sounds as it began to transform into something words couldn't describe. Bathed in this chilly elegy, warped by the sheer power of the grudge fostered upon it, her hatred began to twist Clarence's beautiful form into something wicked, not a sword meant to save, or a weapon to inspire. In a word, calamity. Red lightning furred about that unsightly form, soaked in streamers of sickening scarlet. With each passing moment it grew larger still, that white radiance rising above her in a wrathful pillar of pure rage. Ridding her teeth, Mordred stomped her right foot against the soil, splitting the earth in twine. Here I come, Siegfried. A sudden insight told him what would transpire when she brought that blade down. C-L-A-R-E-N-T. With that lone declaration her sword's hideous form reached the epicenter of its arc, inflicting its white radiance upon the sky in a flash of light, a surging wave with the simple purpose of annihilation. The heavens trembled, crimson lightning falling in a single master. In mere moments it would be upon him, a towering pillar of doom he had no hope of defending against. Yes, his only recourse was to attack. To meet her noble phantasm with his own was the only path to victory, all other paths lead to disaster. In his current state he could not fire off bombing rapidly, not in this degraded state. He would have one shot, one opportunity, perhaps Mordred knew this, had deliberately provoked him into a head-on collision. In the end, it mattered not. Tactical thinking had never been his strong suit. He was, and had always been, a warrior. Two steps carried him forward, his body leaping to meet the roaring red menace. Distantly he felt Gord's command spell tug at him, but he stubbornly tore through the shackles cast upon him by his master. Every cell, every fiber of his being stood united in this singular moment. It was too late to step back from the abyss now, nor could he have done so even had he wanted to. With his heart resolved, he took up the final line of his chant and struck. Fall. Azure swelled around his beloved sword, calm and serene, pure as a midnight breeze. This was a holy blade, a slayer of dragons wielded by perhaps the greatest dragon slayer ever to exist. It stood steadfast in its purpose, its resolve unshackled by its master. A surging wave with the simple purpose of destruction. Unlike Mordred's Claire and Arthur, it was not a straight line ripped from the tip of the sword, nor could it be called a grudge. It was a simple earnest wish, a surge of twilight centered around him, shooting off a semicircular slash wave. Bell. Mordred cut low. Arthur. Siegfried swung high. Mung. Red greeted blue. Crimson intercepted azure. All the world became light and in response. A tiny, flawed existence awoke for the first time. Awaken, little homunculus. Spurred on by a woman's voice, the artificial existence opened its eyes. Suspended in viscous fluid, it beheld its world through the glass, alone and confused. The voice had spurred it from its dream, but now it was nowhere to be found. Curious. Who was it? Where was it? Why was it here? A host of questions bombarded its fractured psyche, only just now stirring dissensions. Weightless, it turned its head to search for the one who had woken it. Strands of blurry ashen hair caught its gaze and for a moment its confusion faded, replaced by idle curiosity. Why does my hair white? Fascinating though this thought initially proved, it was curiosity that seized the reins of the homunculus's body once more. Small hands rose, the faint outlines of tiny fingers made visible in the wan light provided. Stiff muscles responded reluctantly to itcher commands, moving. The room beyond the glass proved equally dark, interposed by strange green cylinders not unlike its own. Body dangled within, lifeless forms. Snatches of conversation flitted through its ears in the dark room, muffled by the water. Dot 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 r y this one next. 
Dur stood, out prepare her, intrigued, it searched for them leave, until its gaze alighted upon a pair of hand-driven carts, pushed by a pair of equally blurry figures clad in white. The homunculus couldn't see their faces nor the contents of the carts themselves. Disappointed and more than a touch vexed, the entity turned its gaze inward, trying to find a reason and answer for its existence. Do you wish to see? Then the voice came again, startling the homunculus. To understand your situation is that your wish. Wish. My purpose is the granting of wishes. It is my function. Is this your wish? Dot 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 why can you grant wishes? The homunculus wondered back at it. Even for one just born, it seemed almost too good to be true. The smallest pause followed its innocent inquiry. I do not know. The presence must have mistook its silence as acceptance then, for a strange calmness settled over it. Understood. A pleased hum entered its mind. Adjusting. I grant you sight and understanding of your current situation. What is your next wish? Startled bubbles rose in the tank. Next. Even with this confirmation it came as something of a surprise then when its vision suddenly and inexplicably cleared, granting terribly clarity it hadn't known itself to lack. As though a veil had suddenly been lifted, so too did it find that it could see the world beyond, as well as all the strange wonders the room held. It could clearly see the others now, countless bodies suspended in stasis show did it know that word similar to its own. Tiny palms pressed against the glass and pushed, straining for a better view. Was it imagining things, or did one of them see it? Did one of them raise a hand and wave? Did one smile at them? Did one speak? Dot 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 did it. It did. Across the way it found itself gazing at a slender woman, a beauty beyond compare, majesty beyond reason. A curtain of pale white hair lofted around her body, forming an angelic halo of white about her head. That same head tilted aside, regarding it with almost motherly concern. What was a mother? The homunculus felt unworthy of it. Who are you? I do not remember my name. You may address me as Grail. My information suggests the use of this form may calm you. Impossible as it seemed, it could hear her despite the distance between them, in spite of the water in its ears. Small children often appreciate the presence of a mother in their lives. Dot 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 this is. I don't dot 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 how dot dot dot. The entity known as Grail regarded it coolly. Excess energy remains from the last war waiting to be used. Wishes can still be granted, after a fashion. Small dreams, tiny hopes, she clarified, and again though her mouth moved, the words themselves transmitted directly to its brain. As you are to be my first terminal I thought it only best to grant you this limited function. Worry not, your second will not possess this ability. This is my gift to you alone. Dot 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 that's not what concerns me. It was too much to absorb, too much to take in. To simply awake and find itself thrust into this strange new world dot 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 it was overwhelming. A slender finger rose, pointing towards a darkened portion of the room. Ugh, oh, the carts had been headed there, had they not. Baffled, the homunculus followed their gaze, wondering what the grail as it were wished to show them. When it finally beheld the contents of that shadowy corner however, wonder gave way to horror. It saw the carts and all they'd been carrying, and possibly the rank stench of decayed flesh reached its nose inside the tube, causing it to gag. Because it saw them. It saw them all. And it knew what it was looking at. Bodies. A pit of corpses. Endless, faceless deaths. This was to be its fate, then. An endless roar pounded in its ears, screaming with the fury of a thousand seas. Red eyes bulged explosively and the fear rushed back, throttling all sense. Frothed on pale lips as magic circuits activated in a fit of terror. Hope evaded the little humming cool sending its tiny heart beating its mouth parting in a silent cry. No. Small fist beat against the glass. Move. Do you wish to escape? Grail inquired politely. Yes. Glass shattered. Darkness followed shortly. Oh hell, there was a big explosion. Hope Mordred got out from under it. Naruto beheld the clash of the noble phantasms and couldn't help but marvel at them. Dot 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 well, shit. He winced. Glad I wasn't summoned his saber. Otherwise that'd be me over there. Even at this distance and partially obscured by a valley of towering earthen spires, the blasts were truly a sight to behold. Blue crimson collided in unison and merged into a towering column of violet light that roared into the heavens, obliterating anything unlucky enough to be caught in its path. Dark clouds that once threatened rain found themselves obliterated as the two sabers collided with one another. It just kept going, a final salute that seemed to stretch on forever. Each had poured their all into it, their hearts their very souls into this final attack, and only one would be crowned the victor. In all honesty, he really didn't want to piss off whoever survived that attack. Siegfried, simply for the sake of that impossible blade of his, a terrible weapon unlike no other. Mordred, because if she could tank a blast like that he was honestly going to be a little frightened of her. Edging away from the earthen alcove he'd created for himself amidst the valley of stakes, the blonde risked a glance outside. Really, why am I always surrounded by scary women? Kazakh Bay. A muddy stream of nearly two thousand spears hearkened to Vlad's call and descended upon Naruto's hiding place, raining down on him with the force of a thousand falling meteor snow. Meteors couldn't possibly be guided with such pinpoint accuracy. He could only think of them as arrows, a ceaseless rain of deadly ebony s designed to skewer him if he lingered in one place too long. In hindsight, Atalanta might have taken offense to that comparison, but in that moment he couldn't think of them as anything else. Her arrows were lethal if nothing else and Vlad's volley was well on its way to finding their mark. Can't you not right now? 
even as he ripped himself free of his mooring to alight upon a nearby stalagmite a fresh volley hounded him like a starved beast, tearing great strips of clothing from his cloak and forcing the young warrior to leap up then away lest he find his hide skewered anew. Wind howled in his face as he tumbled forward, blue eyes squinting against the wind. A stray thought channeled chakra to his palms and the soles of his feet, providing him fine purchase when he inevitably collided with another towering earthen spike. Clinging to this new haven with all force, he flung a glance toward their source. Just how long can you keep this up for? As long as it takes, invader. Framed against the waning light of the moon, Vlad sneered up at him, bearing that twisted lance before his coat like some fell javelin. Surrounded by a hellish landscape, he truly lived up to his title. With so many stakes proliferating the soil around them there was scarcely a safe place to land. The few that remained were swiftly swallowed whenever he found himself unlucky enough to tread there. He'd learned that lesson the hard way. One could only guess how Atalanta was faring against Ryder on this terrain. A clawed fist smashed down into one of the larger pillars, tearing a massive chunk of the coarse material free. Hefting it aloft, he had his arm back, ready to throw. An impressive feat of strength. And Vlad arched a slender eyebrow as he gazed upon the hulking gift somewhat improvised spear the blonde had just procured for himself. There wasn't so much as a hint of fear upon that pale visage as that massive shadow loomed large over him, no, not even a glimmer. What do you intend to do with that thing now that you've broken it? Surely you don't mean to throw it at me. You know what the outcome will be, don't you? Naruto said his tongue. Hey, master, apologizing in advance. Through their contract, Jean caught his thoughts immediately. Through that shared bond, he glimpsed a hint of dark exultance on her part. No, she hummed back, it's fine. Take as much energy as you need dot 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 and berserker. And placid blue eyes narrowed to cerulean slits as the tension began to build in his shoulders. Dot 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 make him pay for every word. Her iron tone sent a silent shiver of anticipation shooting down his spine. The light clawed its way across his visage as she commanded him, sapphire orbs snapping back into sinister slitted scarlet. Savagery twisted that whiskered face into a rictus of a grin. Gods, you really are the best master for me. Then he let it fly. As expected, Lancer didn't budge when the shadow fell. Rather, he stood his ground and raised his weapon to greet the falling tower. As expected, it had never been his intent to pierce him with this to begin with. Hurling one of his own stakes at him, no matter how large, meant nothing here. Least of all when Vlad controlled the territory around them. Indeed, Lancer fed his wrist aside in a seamless motion, separating the earthen spire into harmless halves on either side of him. In that regard, his attack proved a resounding success. Not so the snarling sphere looming behind it, far less its owner, surging ever forward. Golden eyes widened in surprise. Clever of you, however. Without moving his head, Vlad summoned a pair of stakes to defend his regal visage from harm. On the surface it seemed a flimsy defense, folded before him in the telltale shape of an axe, one destined to fold beneath his assault. Imagine his surprise and anger when they not only withstood this blow, but physically cut out into his flesh, grievously wounding him in a trip-wronged assault despite his suicidal charge. His vision blazed red as a lucky hit took his right eye. Another opened a deep gouge across Naruto's cheek as Lancer's weapon bit into his face, but he powered on heedless of the agony burning through his face. In that moment, Naruto finally glimpsed a hint of victory. Odama Racingen. For the first time since their battle had begun, Vlad III cried out in genuine pain. Rather than try to bull through his defenses as Lancer had expected, the solid sphere much to his great dismay skittered under his impenetrable barrier to strike him full on him. At such close proximity, there was nothing he could do to defend himself. He could only hope endure the unexpected hit in the vain hope of tanking whatever damage Berserker inflicted upon that fleeting moment. The brief millisecond before impact, the Lord Impaler had time enough for one fleeting thought. A small, imperceptible smile flitted across his visage. Well done. Then the howling sphere collided with his flesh and hurled him away as though he'd been backhanded by the palm of an angry god. Ripped from his perch, he soared backwards through the air, earthen soil and stone disintegrating while he tumbled wildly across the countryside. Naruto wasn't willing to wait for his foe to recover, even as his signature technique carried Vlad away into the distance he willed a pair of clones to his side and prepared a race in Shuriken. He wasn't willing to trust Sage Mode in these uncontrolled conditions, not when it had already failed him once against Karna. Perhaps later he'd have a chance to figure out why the planet kept rejecting him. Not enough. Twin stakes shot out before the technique could take shape, eviscerating the copies and forcing him to retreat lest he meet the same fate. Snarling, he vaulted away. Sheesh this is ridiculous ink fame boost. To his dismay, the battered lancer was already climbing to his feet in, one hand extended in spite of his injuries. No, not even wounded, he realized. Though his body was clearly scuffed and dirtied, though his once proud coat lay shorn around his shoulders, though there was clearly a deep gouge where he'd made contact, Vlad remained far from defeated. Not that he'd expected a servant to go down on a single hit but this. Dot 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 well, that isn't fair at all. Oh crap 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 and yep. On second thought. A faint shout served as the sole herald of Atalanta's arrival. From there, the sight of her battered form plummeting from the sky was enough to jar him back to the present. In the distance he glimpsed what might have been. Ryder, atop some winged beast his eyes couldn't discern. How in the world? Never mind how she'd gotten up there to begin with. The notion that Ryder had actually managed to injure the elusive archer set his pulse racing. 
Unlike him, she lacked any means of stalling herself in mid-flight, while he could at least use a clone as an unlikely springboard to cushion her fall. She lacked any such means of recourse to save herself, much less her honor. Lancer had no such qualms. After that last attack, Vlad was all too eager to repay his earlier temerity. There you are, Archer fall to me. Vlad didn't waste the opportunity, an F of his finger sent a river of jagged death hurtling her way. True enough she spun to unleash a hail of arrows to meet several of stakes, but the rest rushed on, overwhelming her defenses and intent upon having her heart. Sparks scrawled across her bow as she prepared her noble phantasm in retaliation, but anyone could see she wouldn't be able to release it in time. Even had she done so, the storm might have overwhelmed her still. His body moved. Oh, for the love of. Without a thought for his own safety Naruto leaped upward. Ground burst beneath his feet as he hurtled into the air at breakneck speed. From Atalanta's viewpoint his body registered as little more than a crimson blur. Strong arms closed around her and spun, placing a strong back between her and the deluge. Her vision turned black. Pain snarled up his spine as a trio of stakes wedged themselves between his shoulders, but he accepted them stoically, weathering the storm as they plummeted to the ground. Even then he didn't release Atalanta, tucking her her head against his. Stakes shattered against hardened skin, clawing across his face, but he never wavered until they hit the dirt. Lost in the maze of Lancer's stakes, they were granted a momentary reprieve. Straightening her back, Atalanta shook herself mightily in his arms. I didn't need your help, Berserker. She huffed. Her ally refused to respond to her criticism. Aren't you going to say something? Silence reigned supreme. Naruto, nothing. Release me she kicked out against his, but he didn't acquiesce. The idea that she'd been saved was galling enough more so that she'd actually required rescue but the fact that her ally had yet to release her proved unbearable. Humiliating even. It was her own fault, she'd been fool enough to grab onto Ryder's beast when it took to the air, and it had been she who lost her grip and fell back to earth. She'd known full well she wouldn't be able to fire off her noble phantasm in time to counter Lancer's attack, yet her proud spirit still rankled at being the damsel in distress all the same. Something hearts of Earl Riala was poking against her but in her anger she paid them no need. Stop fooling around already. Exasperated by what she interpreted as willful silence she attempted to wriggle free of him, to no avail. His grip was iron, those strong arms remained locked tightly against her. Then her head knocked against his and she realized just why her erstwhile ally hadn't budged. His heart wasn't beating. Alarmed she risked a glance downward. Her ears flattened against her head in distress. Green eyes widened when she beheld his grievous wounds. You fool. Those hard things she'd felt poking her earlier were Vlad's stakes. Jutting through his back and into his, they'd stopped just short of piercing her body. No, she realized, the honor didn't belong to her dot 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 but him. The gasp, she intensified her struggles. If he'd actually died saving her saber would never let her hear the end of it. More than that for him to willingly lay down his life for her without a second thought. All at once his arms tightened around her. Him fine. A raspy hiss greeted her. Just give me a second. Her ears shot ramrod straight. By Artemis, how are you still alive? A low wheeze answered her. Noble phantasm. That's complicated. Gonna let go of you now. Twitching arms released Atalanta, allowing her to crawl out of his grasp. She did so reluctantly. The sight that followed turned her stomach. Slowly, painstakingly, Berserker began to tear each stone spear free from his torso, heedless of the holes he made. Though the wounds healed, the pain on his face did not. She could clearly see that while his regeneration had mended his body, the agony of mangled flesh and bone knitting themselves back together clearly remained. She couldn't imagine what the pain must be like, to experience the hell of not only enduring a mortal wound but being forced to heal from it mere moments later. Just what kind of hero had he been in his living days? Watching him climb to his feet, a note of discord sang through her heart. Why did you save me back there, Berserker? Lazy blue eyes turned to regard her. Cause I wanted to. A muscle jumped in Archer's jaw. Despite their alliance, she knew precious little about him. Frankly, she wasn't sure she wanted to know more. He professed an odd charm and possessed an endearing fondness for children, alongside a strange penchant for madness. That was the extent of her knowledge. The idea of eventually fighting him for the sake of her wish was unappealing. He'd already proven himself to be stronger than her, if not more durable. Anyone capable of tanking hits like that and standing up wasn't someone she wanted to cross swords or arrows in her case with. If it came down to a fair fight, he'd likely win. Could he even be killed? Perhaps Mordred had been right to call him a zombie after all. You're going to be difficult about this, aren't you? Those very same orbs narrowed as he smiled. Immeasurably. When he offered her his hand she reluctantly accepted it. Rough fingers clasped her wrist and hauled her to feet. The warmth of his fingers felt clearly even through the cold steel of her gloves. By the time he'd turned back to the battlefield his wounds were all but closed, save for a few faint tears in his torso. Tattered sleeves rose and fell, his arms crossing loosely behind his head as he surveyed the maze of stakes surrounding them. Lancer would be upon them soon, of that there was no doubt, but for now the servants of Black seemed to be waiting. For what, she knew not. Having trouble with Ryder he inquired. She's surprisingly hard to pin down. The archer groused. That much is true. What her opponent lacked in strength she made up for in technique, boasting strange noble phantasms and all manner of odd abilities. Throw in that infuriating mount and the huntress was nearly at her wind's end. 
That mere slip of a girl were it not for those she would have won their battle long ago. Sure you're not going easy on her because she's your junior Naruto prodded. Atalanta visibly bridled at the insinuation. I have done no such thing and you know it. No, no, I understand the blonde's head bobbed in faux agreement. Far be it from me to stand in the way of true love. Well, he certainly knew how to rile her up, if nothing else. Wound or not, I will shoot you. And I'd probably let you. He snarked. Another time, perhaps. Go on, then. Find Ryder. This is my fight. But your wounds, dot 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 will be fine. The blonde reassured her. Trust me, I've endured worse than this. Besides, his hand rose, flashing his remaining command seals at her. Jadon's eyes widened as she realized precisely what Berserker intended to do. Her first instinct was rage, to lash out at him and lop that very hand from his wrist. It was only her limited understanding of him that prevented Atalanta from doing so. I'm not alone, remember. On a whim she darted back to him and laid a hand on his shoulder. Don't call Jack. A blonde brow rose in mild consternation. What? Please, don't the words tumbled out of her in a rush. She's just a child if you make her fight Lance or she'll die. She didn't know that of course, neither of them did. She may very well be the key to bringing him down, but in her heart of hearts she couldn't bear to put her in danger unless absolutely necessary. Perhaps not even then. Every fiber of her being rebelled against it. She'd sooner die than deliberately place a child in danger, not when it could be avoided. If Naruto willingly and callously did so no dot 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 she wouldn't be able to control herself. She's a servant, you know. Berserker reminded her carefully. I'm pretty sure she can manage in a fight like this. The huntress growled and seized him by the wrist, her expression fierce. Naruto. Oh his gaze narrowed upon her. I see. You'd rather I die, then. For a moment she actually thought they might come to blows. Remarkably, his shoulders slumped in defeat. All right. You win. I won't call her. She gripped him harder. Swear it. I swear on my true name. He replied readily, raising his right hand. There. Happy now. I Thank you. Her tail curled between her legs, unable to meet his earnest gaze. You don't know what this means to me. Instead of the anger or disdain or even disgust she'd expected, Berserker merely granted her a small smile and light, lilting chuckle of his own. Don't mention it. Something in that expression humbled Atalanta more than words ever could. She hadn't expected him to yield, truly, she'd thought this the end of their alliance. That he'd willingly conceded to her demands meant more to her than he could ever knew. Not only did it cement their partnership, but it elevated her opinion of him still further. Another crack etched itself into her resolve, hairline fractures widening into fissures in her belief. He had startled her again, badly. No, not just that. He was too good, too pure. She almost caught herself reaching for him. And the moment was ruined. Do you think yourself out of my range? Lancer's voice reared down at them, dripping with disdain. Allow me to disabuse you of that notion. Blue eyes narrowed. Atalanta dot 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 get. She got. Indeed, a short leap carried her away from the battlefield. Dot 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 but not before she repaid his kindness. Lightning crackled across her beloved bow as she drew its string taut, a mumbled incantation leaping from her lips. Her target was sure, her aim, true. At this distance Naruto couldn't make out the words she intoned. But the shout that followed was impossible to miss all the same. A single arrow howled up into the sky in a blaze of blue light, there one moment, gone the next. An offering to the heavens, a plea for the gods' protection, the like of which few had ever seen. Phobus catastrophe. Heaven trembled. It was beauty. It was grace. Death. Having never witnessed her noble phantasm before, Naruto found himself at something of a loss for words as the sky turned white. A servant's most devastating attack wasn't something you wanted to witness up close, certainly not when you yourself were near in the line of fire. But what could one arrow possibly do no doubt Lancer of Black had the same thought, otherwise he would have immediately retaliated and mowed down the still-fleeing archer before she could escape his range. The heavens swelled with rain. Rain? No, not rain he realized as the world burned with cold fury. Oh, she. For all his dislike of the deities he would admit this much, they knew how to put on a damn good show. It wasn't light at all, but a hail of arrows so rapid, their multitude so large, that they appeared nothing short of heavenly radiance. Catastrophe. Her phantasm had been named well. The storm missed him entirely, instead plowing into Lancer's position with all the fury of an enraged goddess. He glimpsed a fur of black amongst the light as the servant sought to shield himself from the worst of the onslaught, for all the good it did him. If that outraged snarl was anything to go by, she'd gotten a few good shots in. Naturally, Vlad responded in kind. Meddlesome wench. This time Naruto knew full well what was coming, thus he was well prepared to counteract the storm of stakes. Even as ten thousand spears of pure death howled down at him from above and another broke off to target Atalanta, he dug his heels in. Indeed, though his very footing shifted beneath him in betrayal, he drew a sharp and shuddering breath. A single leap brought him between his archer and the shrieking stakes. Somewhere in the back of his mind, a door opened, sweeping sanity away. He didn't fight it. On the contrary, he embraced it. All right, screw this dot 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 and no more holding back. Then came the pain. Crimson chakra seeped from his stomach and callously crept across his like a jilted lover, draping him in the sweet promise of madness. Wounds stitched themselves shut of their own accord. Spires of stone and earth were forcefully ejected from his body. A single scarlet tail bloomed from the energy as the transparent cloak finished forming, assuming the likeness of an enraged kitsune wrapped around his form. 
dropping down to all fours he needed the chakra deep into his lungs, giving it shape and form. Not enough time for a baijudama, but it would suit his purposes all the same. The stakes reached him a moment later, and he roared. From Vlad's point of view, the attack that followed could only be comprehended as a wall in its purest form. Not by any physical means, but of sound. Light itself. His assault slammed headlong into it and scattered to the winds, wild spears of honed dirt ricocheting in every conceivable direction. The land bent before his will, ruptured by the piercing howl, the same force of will that came for him. Ah, uh, he understood now. Berserker had been holding back likely still was and he'd goaded him into revealing a glimmer of his true power. Too late he realized what was about to transpire and raised his arms against it. Another arrow sprouted from his shoulder. Snarling, he tore the sundered free from his flesh and spun, searching for the source. Again you dare, Archer of Red. Even as he turned to look for the elusive Archer Vlad realized his mistake, he'd been a fool to take his eyes off Berserker. When he turned back all he found was a faint displacement of air, a hint of roiling dust against his towering chasm of stakes. He vanished completely, yet that twisted prana remained, tainting the very air with its foul miasma. So where had he gone? Here, Vlad's sixth sense shrieked a warning too late. Then a clawed fist caught him by the face and his world erupted into red. By some fell instinct he managed to twist his face aside to avoid losing an eye to that gouging throw, but the sudden whiplash proved damaging in its own right. His body crashed away before he could think to steady his footing, cast across the earth seemingly without end. Only by dragging his lance against the fracture soil did he manage to find some measure of relief and grind himself to a halt. Any ordinary servant might have suffered even more severe damage after being struck at such velocity, perhaps even perished on the spot. Even a member of the Sabre class would have been slowed at the least. Lancer was far from ordinary. Though his hair lay in disarray and his temples pounded, though stained his vision, he resolutely raised his gaze and climbed back to his feet to await this worthy enemy. He needn't wait long. From one monster to another dot 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 you're fighting for the wrong side. A harsh crunch within the smoke signaled Berserker's arrival behind him, prompting Lancer to turn on his heel. Trying to see through me now, Berserker he challenged. You'll find I'm not so easily swayed. Unlike your dear Siegfried, laughter trickled through the smoke, it was a deep, throat sound that had no business coming from a human throat. Now, now, don't not kick the poor chap when he's down. After all, he's not a bad person. Just, confused. I'm sure he'll be more than happy to switch sides once our saber finishes with him. Inconsequential. If he attempts turns then I will slay him. Simple as that. You know what they say, legends are what we make of them. But you would know that, wouldn't you? Dracula, shrouded in scarlet light, Yuzumaki Naruto emerged from the fog of war, advancing resolutely towards him. Not alone. That strange peerless energy was there with him, writhing and twisting around him, almost forming a coherent shape. A likeness of some phantasmal beast dot 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 and oh, he realized, a fox. Two crimson tails swayed lazily behind the blonde, also composed of that strange seething light. What was that it looked as though he were wearing it like some kind of tainted coat. Or was it wearing him? No, that wasn't important. That insult just now could not be tolerated. Do not call me that, Berserker. His mouth curled upward. Call you what? That. A wall of stakes erupted between them, but rather than dodge the blonde barreled straight through them, uncaring for the minor wounds he sustained. That won't work twice. Lancer's first thought was to ready himself for an assault, but rather than get up close and personal as he'd expected, Berserker stopped short and struck further than he should have. A wave of his own answered, in the tainted form a crimson claw, the surtle energy erupting from his body to cut a wide swath against the impaler's unprotected torso. Sluiced Foth and the servant staggered, choking in surprise. Hugh, clenched knuckles slammed up into his chin, casting him away as though he weighed no more than a child. How the tides have turned, a vampire. On some level he knew he was being baited, but he couldn't bring himself to care about that. The mere mention of that hated name stirred reminders of his wish, the desire to rectify the stain against his history made by that atrocious work. Of the taint inflicted upon his Anorno, his very name. For one whose legacy had already smeared by enemy campaigns, the notion of being compared to a drinking fiend was more than galling. Until now he'd done his best to ignore it, but this slight threatened to dash his resolve altogether. For someone to simply claim they knew him. Clawed fingers slammed into his liver, drawing a pain grunt. There's no need to be ashamed. Much to Vlad's chagrin, his opponent continued to bait him between blows. I'm familiar enough with your legend. Go on. Use it. Your other noble phantasm. Do it. Give me a worthwhile fight. With a roar Vlad cut out at him, lopping away the man's right ear. It regrew in the time it him took to strike again. I am not Dracula. Ha could have fooled me. Rage nodded his bearded visage. Cease he howled I am not that abomination. Enraged he cut out at Berserker unthinkingly, only to find his once deadly spear caught by that clawed palm. And I'm not dot 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 this. Heedless of caustic energy roiling around them, Berserker snarled back at him. This ing thing. This monster I conquered this, you know made peace with Kurama and all that. But legends have a funny way of being twisted by time, don't they so here I am, madder than ever. The only difference a clawed finger drove in upon his own skull, drawing a thin line of against the black fabric of his headband. Now he's gone. And I'm alone. All his power, none of the companionship. I've come to terms with it. If the world thinks me mad, let them. 
I know the truth. Why should I care what others think of me? Why should you for that matter? Lies and treachery. He refused to believe such words, to accept that. In his fury Lancer lashed out the only way he could think of. Mere words. Vlad spat back. Is that all but what else could be expected of one with such a shoddy master? A slow, treacherous twitch passed through the blonde's face, gone almost before the keening servant noticed. Almost. Careful. You're making me angry. A clawed fingers rose, directing a deadly digit toward him. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Did I strike a nerve Lancer retorted with a wry smile. I believe it's only fair, given you're holding back as well. Not as much of a monster as you seem, him. Dot 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 tch. Perceptive bastard aren't you to his great delight, that insufferable smile soured like rotten fruit. This is why I have to be the one to kill you. Maker knows I've got the lives for it. There it was, another hint dropped at his feet, just waiting to be picked up. Vlad did just that. Are you claiming to be immortal golden eyes narrowed? Surely you jest. Even you have your limits. No, he'd done precisely that, though they both knew it, neither would acknowledge it. Lips parted in a snaggletoothed grin. Try me. When presented with the opportunity Lancer didn't hesitate, he struck the moment Berserker of Red released him and folded both arms behind his back. For the second time that night his weapon tasted. Berserker perished on the spot. Rather, he should have. Taken low in the waist, Naruto accepted the blow stoically and actually staggered half a step before righting himself. The light left his eyes and he slumped, toppling backwards. Until quite suddenly, he wasn't. To Vlad's dismay, the blonde braced his feet, threw his arms further back and cackled. It was the sound of a man gone mad, a hero twisted by vile rumors and half-truths. Then he began to rise. As he straightened up so too did his stitch itself back together, mending with painstaking slowness. Flesh defied gravity and slipped back into place, flowed like milk, molding across his cloak as mangled flesh slid shut. Oh, Vlad stop you're splitting me in two he laughed, wiping a mirthful tear from his eye. Now do it another O. Oh. I don't know. Seven times his battered skull tilted, considering. Or was it nine I don't remember. Already lost a few lives, and it's so hard to keep track of those these days. Lancer stared at him, a snake of dread coiling in his stomach. What the devil are you he hissed blackly. Red eyes rolled back to meet his. At two, Dracula it's just as I said earlier. His voice warbled strangely just then, as though someone were speaking alongside him, though a man or a woman, he could not discern. We're the same, you and I the only difference is that I've accepted what I am. And what is that? As he looked on, the blonde crossed his fingers. Whatever the hell I want to be. For instance, for a fleeting instant that wide visage vanished in a white plume of smoke. Coughing in shock as much as surprise, Lancer struck out with his weapon, half expecting an attack. Instead his lance met a bare forearm, small and slender, raised in defense of its owner. That was alarming enough in and of itself, but what followed? Hi, dot 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 with the actual hell. When next he reappeared and he thought he beheld a woman's face. Much to his consternation Berserker was nowhere to be found, rather, he found himself gazing down into the visage this strange young woman. No, wait. Now that he peered at her he noticed a resemblance. The whiskers, those keen red eyes, that striking blonde hair, even bound behind her head in that ridiculous style. Moreover she completely lacked clothing of any sort beyond the strange scarlet shroud sheathing her body. Bits of air and fading smoke concealed several choice bits from view, but not for much longer. For all his resolve a confused flush still rose to his pale cheeks. What madness is this? Clad in crimson light, the woman flashed an impish grin. I'm so sorry, she purred, am I making you uncomfortable? Very much so, yes. Growling he swiped at her, forcing her to bound away. Cease this foolishness at once. Fine, fine. Just kill all the fun. Put it in camps, why don't you cackling she snapped her fingers. A secondary plume of smoke sprang to life around her and this time, Vlad stayed the hell away from it. In the end he needn't have bothered, for Berserker emerged fully clothed once more and think full of striding forth from the fog as male as he'd ever been. Been waiting for an excuse to use that. Again came that crazed grin, madder than ever before. You should have seen your face. Dot 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 very well. I miscalculated. Vlad growled, settling into a low stance. Next time I'll aim for your head. That grin grew further still. You're assuming I'll give you another chance. When the blonde blurred he barely reacted in time. Whoa. At his command the earth shifted, forming a small mountain of stakes at his flank. They shuddered mightily as a clawed fist crunched against them. This is. Nothing. He pulled harder on his reserves, creating great ravines in the earth, entire chasms swelling with stakes, spikes capable of skewering a boar, a tiger, then an elephant. Sweat beaded down his brow but still he fought on, pulling more and more prana until the very soil buckled beneath them. Yet still his opponent didn't emerge, striking at him with lightning quick blows, never remaining in one's place for more than a moment. Faced with such speed it was all he could do merely to track him, much less pin him down. Some would have faltered when faced with such a foe. Not Lancer. He still held one final card, one last ace up his sleeve. Just a little more dot 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 he needed a few moments more. Coward fight me like a man. What is a man but a miserable little pile of secrets? Now, had Naruto been possessed of his wits and a certain vital piece of intelligence, he would have realized he was the one being provoked now. Perhaps, had he known the terrible truth he would have hesitated, realized that their battle had become a war of attrition, one he simply couldn't win by conventional means. 
Not only did his opponent possess nigh unlimited mana thanks to the Black Faction's manipulations, but he stood at his physical peak. Not bound to one source as they were, the Servants of Black could feasibly outlast any one of them and emerge the victor in this skirmish, so long as they were careful. Unfortunately, he'd never been one for strategy. If this continued at this pace he'd be forced to use that noble phantasm whether he wanted to or not. The more he fought the worse it became, his body becoming entranced by battle, a wide, mad grin dominating his whiskered visage as he struck out at his opponent. He was enjoying himself, his darker half taking hold. Under any other circumstances, he wouldn't have hesitated, he wasn't particularly fond of Lancer of Black, nor did he feel any real need to bend his ear, unlike Siegfried. But with allies mixed amongst his enemies he didn't trust himself. Madness enhancement was not an element to be inflicted lightly, and if he lost control, thud. Abruptly he stumbled as a series of stakes inexplicably erupted from upper torso. The sudden explosion of pain caused him to miss half a step, sending him stumbling forward. A second wave caught him, sprouting from his legs to buckle his limbs and force him to his knees. Coughing, the crimson-clad blonde glanced down at his, a thin Y-line trailing out of his open mouth. Those stakes hadn't come from Vlad just now. Rather, they'd emerged from within him. As unlikely as it might seem, he knew this to be truth. Aghast, he looked upright. What dot 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 the hell? A fresh spike emerged from his throat, snapping his neck back. Back. Low laughter trickled into his ears, inflaming his confusion to a feverish degree. Straining against the pain, he willed his broken body to move. He didn't dot 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 hit me dot 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 what is this? Sorry to disappoint you, but my noble phantasm aren't the stakes alone. Lancer's smug voice rose over the roaring in his ears. With your resistance, it took some time for them to form. However, the crisp sound of bootfalls pounding in is like the beating of a second heart. My phantasm is the very concept of being skewered by stakes itself. Therefore a fresh wave of spikes slammed through the blonde's torso, driving the breath from his body even as his oppressor approached. As long as you remain inside my territory, you can't escape from my noble phantasm. Thing a hand forward, Vlad offered him a rueful smile. Let's end this, berserker of red. Red eyes blazed white. La a hand, sir. Rather than flesh the descending storm met crimson. Not the shroud shielding the blonde, but a veritable tower of ruby rage. The night ignited all at once, the flames of hell burning away every stake before it could strike him. More than that, it was as if the underworld itself had opened up beneath them, releasing a chorus of horrible sounds that chilled the laughter, low and hoarse and horrible rose around him, darker than the evening itself. I really didn't want to do this, you know, he rasped, the words sounding strange and foreign in his mouth, my noble phantasm is a bit broken, you see. Blame my warped legend for that. I have to use it a certain way before I can realize its true potential. Now, as a reward for pushing me this far, I'll try to kill you quickly. Swaying drunkenly on his feet, the invader ripped himself free of the stakes and stumbled upright, uncaring for the battered state of his body. An eerie black miasma leaked from his form, further tainting the strange scarlet shroud protecting him. As Lancer looked on a fourth tail bloomed behind Berserker's back, joining the trio of its brothers assembled there. The thorn of doubt held him back from attacking. What did this fourth tail mean what did it signify? Why did he feel this sudden dread? Kurama. What Vlad blinked, momentarily baffled by the name. That's the name of the entity that I used to house. Those eerie blank eyes rose to meet his. The nine-tailed fox. Until now I've only used three against you dot 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 let that sink in. Under his watchful gaze Berserker's body began to bend and twist, his back arching, fangs growing steadily more pronounced in his mouth, visibly trying to break free. Was his body breaking had he pushed himself past his limits at last and reached the point of no return surely that must be it. Yes, of course. To think otherwise meant Berserker had an ace of his own left to play, a card he hadn't yet seen. Which meant, you were holding back this entire time. Bingo the blonde's hoarse voice hissed. Then the flesh of his whiskered face began to peel. Revealed was the current of crimson light arcing beneath. Here I come, Lord Impaler. Hope you've got enough stakes. Come now, don't be a fool. You're beaten. Even you can see that. Join me. I'm flattered. But, no, no, you're going to pay for everything you said about my master. Then how do you aim to make me pay Vlad scoffed, struggling to hide the growing unease dawning within his. This was a bluff. Surely it had to be. With that broken body of yours you'll only stumble and fall like the rest. Don't struggle in such an unsightly way before me. Unsightly. Berserker grinned. Turned his head, slowly. You're missing the point. These words emerged with an eerie calm. Lancer arched an eyebrow. What are you? His entire body seemed to pulse with otherworldly radiance, as though lit from within. Gold vied with crimson, wild prana warring for a dominance within his body. While neither triumphed, the tension continued to rise, sending his skin writhing madly. Veins throbbed in his forehead and neck, his appearance becoming more and more feral as Lancer looked on. Indeed, those once gentle red eyes held a decidedly slitted look to them now, wide and nearly euphoric with demented glee. Not just that, his very presence felt unstable, cracks of energy bursting beneath the skin with wild abandon. Surely he wouldn't continue this. Not unless he intended to. No, too late, he realized his intent. Yes, the explosion hit a heartbeat later. By contrast this blast was relatively contained, little more than a sudden pulse of dark red, a shell of ebony cocooning the blonde in shadow. 
A foul wind carried a plume of dust to the forefront of Lancer's gaze. There one moment, gone the next. Four tails of the blackest crimson lashed at the ground to shatter it like so much glass. Once more, Berserker had vanished. This time, when the smoke cleared, there wasn't so much as a hint of humanity to be seen in him. No, not human at all. A beast. A monster. A creature apart, crafted in the hideous caricature of a human being. The beast turned its gaze upon Lancer. With slow, shuddering steps, those hideous white eyes took his measure and found him wanting. No, perhaps he'd been wrong. There was a hunger to that gaze, and a lank-encompassing avarice surpassed only the madness subsuming his form. Again his gaze was drawn to those four tails, now more solid and opaque than ever before. Four tails, not even half the strength of his noble phantasm. Yet the sight of it rooted him where he stood, unmanned him, threatened to undo his very existence. That twisted maw curled in a rictus of a grin. Clawed hands dug deep furrows upon the ground, tensing in preparation of a mighty leap. Its entire body shifted, that slumped back arching hideously. A slow, shuddering hiss fled from the ghastly tear that served as its mouth. No more quips emerged from that ghastly maw, no jokes, no witty one-liners. There was only the beast, only the need to attack, to ravage, to destroy. His gaze shifted warily, watching those clawed feet, the thick corded muscles that made up its legs. The attack would come in an instant. A bead of sweat trickled down his brow, his lance rising in preparation. Agony. Fire blazed through his left shoulder as the beast barreled past him in a twisted mass of motion. He hadn't even seen it move. Just a red blur, a crimson haze. Yet still his shoulder shrieked in agony, demanding his attention at once. Reluctantly he risked a quick glance, never once doubting his chances for victory. Of course he wouldn't lose. This was his land, his territory. He was superior, invincible. So long as he retained this power, no one would be able to match him for long, much less dot 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 less dot dot dot. Aghast, Vlad gaped openly at the ruined bleeding tear that had replaced his elbow. Clutching the ruined remnants of his arm in its maw the beast turned. Contemptuously, it spat out the limb and growled. It was the sound of his death knell. Then it fell upon him anew, 